Anytime you want to come up there, Adrian, feel free. The, the music just keeps playing until I open the microphone. So, if you're ready, we can pop up. I'm trying to see where Carlo is. Hey, Zink, how are you? Um, Good. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I was just kind of um, just sort of organizing my uh, notes on this one, just uh, actually going back back to it so um but yeah I'm, I'm good now i'm good now I'm, I'm actually kind of excited to um get into this one uh and uh I'm trying to see i thought i downloaded a book version of this I mean, not Google Books, Apple Books, which I'm not super fond of, but... Right, right. Mm, There's a bit of a buzz on your, um... On your end. It's like a low-frequency hum. Is it good now? Uh, no, no, it's still there. It's still there. Hey, let me see. Yeah, it's it's still there. How about now? Perfect. I don't yeah. know why that's happening. It's it's because I'm charging it, but I don't know if it's just the cord. Usually, I am charging it when I'm using this. Let me try it in another outlet. It might be the outlet. Okay. Right. Well, well, no, it's it's perfect now. There's there's. What about now? I mean, it's there, but it's like very much pushed to the background. Um, it's it's essentially not there. Like. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It might be the charge on this or something. I could Right. I could try to switch it to something else. Yeah, it it's not as obnoxious now. It's um it's very much in the background. It's like uh I mean it doesn't bother me that much. I'm used to like tape hiss and like you know, pops and cracks and static in vinyl, so it's just in the beginning there it was like very much in the foreground right yeah it might just be like the charge cable well because i had it plugged into an outlet maybe there's something extra going on, on that outlet it's hard to tell sometimes yeah it's, i mean it's much better now so yeah it's it's still there, but it's much better. Um, any word from Carlo? I I noticed he saw that message in the uh, DMs group. So, Sorry, I was playing with the, the, the chords there for a second. Um, no, I haven't heard from him. I don't know if he ever confirmed. He never objected to the time, but I don't know if he ever confirmed it. Otherwise. Well, well, I mean, he saw, like, I just saw his, um, you know, avatar beneath my message where I said, you know, I'm I'm ready to go. I'm. You know, it didn't take me as long as I expected. 
I mean, he, he has seen the message, so um, I, I, I don't know. I guess we'll give it a few more minutes uh, and see if he responds. Maybe he, because yeah, I don't. Right. So how's everything going? Otherwise, um, I mean, not too bad, not too bad. Um, you've been reading anything else? Or... Uh, you know what? I actually haven't. I've been like pretty busy with just like other stuff going on. Um, so I like, I kind of took the opportunity like within your like move period to just like get into other things. Like I've organized my spreadsheets for tax and stuff like this. And like, you know, I mean, my tax basically starts, I start organizing like sometimes end of November. Right. But, you know, I just sort of left it, um through december just because yeah i think we were still doing the book clubs then um and there was like just other spaces that was distracting me so um so i, I just kind of took that opportunity to like just get all of that stuff sorted out uh, and uh same here i mean i haven't been listening to a whole bunch of other books uh just getting ramped into my job and whatnot. So mostly, because like I said, it's it's using some some a slightly different stack than I've used before. So just like having to ramp into those things. So have you uh, have you become proficient in Go yet, or proficient enough? I think. I mean, you know, like at this point, I can easily navigate it and um, read it and everything else. Now, as far as like greater design patterns go that's that's you know that's where you know the art of any language comes but uh um, yeah 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 as far as the kind of you know run of the mill sort of stuff yeah i'm pretty proficient i mean usually like not not to like be arrogant about it, but usually once you've learned enough languages right computer programming language well it's kind of like people who learn you know human languages right once you learn one you kind of figure out how to learn other ones and this one yeah i mean it's it's a little bit of everything, right? Because each language that you kind of go through, right? Like they're trying to solve a problem that somebody else had with another language, but then didn't like the way they solved it for another language and so on and so forth. So go, you can kind of see the des the, the language design patterns there. Isn't it similar to like um, C and C++? I know Brian Kernahan, who was like... Um, part of like the design of uh, the C language with Dennis Ritchie. I know that he had a hand in Go. So almost every language falls into one of two buckets, C-like and non-C-like, right? So it, it pretty much comes down to, does it have curly braces and, and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Um, Cause there's a lot like, I mean, I'm, I'm sure in finance you've done Python, Python, of course, you know, has significant white space you don't use curly braces but you have to tap things in ruby yeah. ruby kind of uses a mix of the two and then of course there's the languages that predate c but uh so i mean c so a lot of languages kind of are um c c derived right so yeah go is definitely c derived um but of course you know it's it's taking into account things that have developed in other languages over that time because i mean essentially Oh, I mean, every language you can think of as C derived. So C, C++, Objective C, you know, JavaScript, Java, um, uh, C Sharp. Um, it, it's basically the, the Algol 60 and Algol 68 languages, right? I mean, that's that's pretty much, that that, that was like the precursor to like yeah. C and stuff like that, yeah. I mean, the main, the main thing you have to understand about C is that up until then, you had all the languages that were doing something theoretical, right? So, I mean, you know, Fortran and Lisp and all those ones weren't, you know, they were being used for research purposes, but they weren't really writing practical applications with them, right? And then on the other side, you had COBOL, which COBOL was created because all of the computer science people were like, well, we don't care what industry does. So industry went out and they did what they best could and they created COBOL. 
but C was essentially designed by people who were writing a lot of software for practical application in assembly and just, you know, we're deciding like, oh, I wish, I wish I didn't have to write so much, you know, redundant crap, right? So C was born of, you know, truly practical, I guess, purposes. And so that's how you, and so that's why everything comes out of C because essentially C is just a layer. Oh, it's not designed for like theoretical or whatever. It's designed with what people were actually doing and simplifying what people were actually doing in assembly. And then, but having to over, yeah, you know, yeah. do it over and over and over again, and non-portable, right? Because essentially, if you write good C code, you can just compile it for different architectures, right? More or less, yeah. I mean, there might be a few libraries. So, I mean, C, I actually have quite a bit of um, experience with. C plus plus is a bit of a puzzle to me. Um, I think we talked about this previously. Yeah, well, there's, there's just so yeah. many features, right? Like, I mean. Yeah, it's it, but that bogs me down. Um, C yes. with classes, that's what his old name was, and that's essentially what it is. Yeah, but then yeah. Objective C, well, that's the thing. Like, I've uh, I don't know if I've ever written to like beyond just like the basic, like, hello world. Like, I've never really written much C directly, right? Of course, Objective C is really just a library over the top of C, right? Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm familiar with that, so yeah, same, same. But yeah, no, yeah. Go is good. Like in some ways, like I think the biggest thing with Go is there is no classes, right? So I mean, they 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 kind of go class like well, not quite classes, right? There, you 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 have like yeah packages, and so you can add methods to things, but not in a kind of class sort of way. It's kind of strange in that way. So it's it's like is it sort of like prototyping, like uh, like JavaScript in a sense, or like um. It's, it's, uh, I can't, I can't think of the exact term. What you, what it is, is that you can extend classes, right? So what you do is you essentially create like a, an interface for something. Um, I don't know if it's, does it have encapsulation? No, not quite. So what it is essentially is you have, you have, you can create methods on things and within those methods you can use the pair the the so i mean yeah it's it's strange the way it kind of handles encapsulation you have structs and stuff like that right okay yeah yeah i mean that's very c right i mean yeah that's the thing i, I think it's it's trying to be you know, it's trying to not be C++ in object, right? It's, I think it's trying right. to get away the, because of course, of course, one of, like, I, I, I've worked heavily with Java, and then Java, everything is an object, right? You can't go objectless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one really tries to avoid the object and the statefulness of the object, but at the same time, you know, keeping all that surface, right? Yeah, without the, but then at the same time, still have things like interfaces and generics and, uh, methods and 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 stuff like that, right? But it also has um, pointers, but without pointer arithmetic, right? So it's it's right. it's trying to, I guess. Well, I mean, they all try to do it. It's 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 just another language trying to fix C, but in a different way, right? So so I mean, do, do you prefer this? Like, are, are you? Is it elegant, in your opinion? <laughs> I think so. I mean, the main thing I haven't played with too much is the, um, the, um, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the concurrency, right? Because concurrency is built into the language, right? It's not a library. It was built in and designed for concurrency. And so that's right. where I haven't played with it too much. And so we'll see kind of as I dig in there, how, how elegant that is. Um, Does it have operator overloading like C++? Uh, I, I I know it doesn't have method overloading, um, so I'm not sure if it has operator overloading. Let, let's just, let me just check that out right now, because there was one thing where, like, when it comes to interfaces, it detects if it has that interface. So maybe it, uh, like, let me see, um, operator. So let's see, can you... Operators as functions, operators as methods. Does it have? It's 
special inf. Yes, and it doesn't have operator overloading. It's probably a good thing. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's no, always I mean, a puzzle for me, right? Like, a... <laughs> it, well, that's the thing. I guess it's because it's misleading, right? It's like, you know, when you plus something, it's like, okay, is is that because this thing is just an integer or a string that you're concatenating, or is it because it has some overload on it that's making that plus behave in a special way? So yeah, for the most part, it looks like you just do. Um, if you had something, you would just put a you would just put a method on it called add. Right. Interesting. Um, yeah, I might, I might check it out further. Um, it, it sounds interesting. Um, yeah, I, I might check it out. Like I bought a book on Python, but I just haven't got to it yet. JavaScript is something that I really want to learn because like it can directly um, like a lot of things in my business, which I haven't been paying attention to too much uh, in like web development, like I really need to have strong JavaScript and I don't. So, I mean, that's something that I've just been putting on the back burner. Um, yeah, I just haven't got to it. I mean, like I said, I'm doing more finance bro stuff these days. So, you know, it's, it just is pushed to the background. Yeah, there's different levels with the JavaScript thing. Because, of course, if you're writing a lot of software, you want to use TypeScript, really, right? Because it allows you to maintain it easier because JavaScript's a bit of a mess. But um, JavaScript yeah. itself, like, it's it's the, the biggest thing with JavaScript is that it's very much like all these languages, right? There's not a whole lot to it that's maybe a whole, although maybe, because now, of course, it has the asynchronous stuff and the promises built in. But um for and the most global part global namespace right like i mean well that's that is, that's oh, the, that's man. the main reason you use typescript to kind of prevent yourself from abusing that right so you know cuz it used to be that you had var 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 and you could yeah you could you could um what was it called variable hoisting right you could declare that var anywhere yeah. but these days usually let and let and const right let and const yeah, yeah and that that keeps it out of the global namespace and so you usually want to avoid that var um, but that's the problem is that, yeah, JavaScript, they are improving it, but it, like, it's got a lot of, um, it's got a lot of baggage, right? There's the whole thing with type checking, yeah. right? So like null is an object. I don't even dive into that. And the difference yeah, between yeah, two yeah. sort of reference like errors, right? Like the global reference error versus a, you know, undefined, like, well, that's the thing. The, if, if a variable just doesn't exist in the namespace versus if, if it's actually set to undefined and, like usually that was a lot of the stuff when I would actually interview people for JavaScript, I would grill them on that stuff to make sure they've kind of understood the kind of quirks in there. But then even I forget them sometimes. Like it's just. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if I was doing something serious with it, which I haven't done yet, I'd probably like write like a little unit test for that kind of stuff just to see. Well, that's the, that's the main um, point know. about types is that the types kinds of allows you to get away from that. Um, some of those quirks of Java, right? I mean, TypeScript, right? right? And that's the main point, right? Because that's what I, I see a lot of people, their unit tests written in JavaScript. It's like, well, if you just did all this with TypeScript, you wouldn't need to be checking that stuff. Sometimes you have to, because you do have to be careful because with TypeScript, you can tell it, okay, you, you can assume that this will exist in the global namespace, you know what I mean? And that's where you can get into the danger zone. But uh, yeah, TypeScript yeah. kind of solves a lot of that. It kind of gets you out of the global name, uh, yeah, namespace. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, um, so I guess it would be about eight years ago I tried to really take it seriously. And then, you know, it just, like what I had written turned out into a huge mess because of that global namespace. And like, it's like, so wow, was they that, really was are that... giving... Was that ES6? Uh, I, I don't I don't remember. Yeah, no, 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 no. I think it would have been before that, actually. Well, that's so the thing. More like More than eight years, yeah. Yeah, well, that's the thing is that ES6 or ES5. Yeah, he's, I forget exactly what it was, but like ES, well, because like it, it's confusing because I think ES6 is the same as ES2016, 2015. So like you always have to like subtract one from the other to know which one, but um. Yeah, like, the, yeah, I think it was because I'm checking right now which one introduced what. Because, yeah, so ES6. 
ES6 is when, like, and that was about 2015, which was about actually the time I started getting into it. Because before that, like, one of the biggest things that kind of really solved a lot of crap with JavaScript was introducing promises, right? Because um, before that, you had, like, callbacks within callbacks, and it was just a mess, right? Completely unreadable crap. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what the promises is. Like, that's... Um... That, that, that that's going over my head to be honest with you yeah well it's essentially it's it, these days you don't even have to deal with it directly well you, you you deal with the type of it but a promise is essentially that you're going to get a type back in that thing when it's done and then you're going to unwrap it right so it's not something that's ready yet but then you you pretty much you create a function i mean essentially what it used to be is you used to have like functions that took functions as a method right functions that took functions as a as a as a parameter right right and so that once it finished one function it would then call that other function and then whatever it returns from that is then what you would use so so does that resolve at runtime or is it um like is it is like just in time or like well, that's the thing. It's a, it's a promise. So it resolves at some point. So there's different ways to kind of wait for it to resolve. And then once it resolves, then you can do something with it. So it's, 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 it's a way of, it's one of the ways of kind of dealing with concurrency, right? It's, it's not parallel, but it, it cause what it is, is that um, you have the, uh, the, the event loop. And so it'll go down one function and wait for something else to resolve and, and all that stuff, right? So it's it's a way right. of dealing. It's it's it's. I mean, obviously, it's necessary to deal with it with when you're dealing with networking, right? Because it's like, okay, well, I'll wait for this to happen, but don't freeze the rest of the program, right? And have you ever have you done anything with like Node.js, like the the backend JavaScript? Because like, I I really have not done anything with that. Node.js, you will, uh, yeah, I've, I've dealt with Node.js as, as on the back end, but of course, what Node.js did was it essentially allowed you to use JS outside the browser, right? So yeah, yeah. Node.js is essentially what you're doing, right? So like, like I talked about it, I can't remember if you heard it, but like I talked about there was a while back where I figured out how to dump out all the, um, the um, subtitles out of a space while it was still going. I right. did that. I did that in JavaScript, but of course, I was running it from the command line. So that's the thing: is that Node.js essentially was is a runtime that allows you to run JavaScript outside of the browser. So whether it's all on the command line or yeah, like well, I mean, if it's on the command line, then that's what allows you to run it as a server, right? So yeah, I mean, that's what Node.js is: is essentially JavaScript outside of the browser. So yeah, if, if, but uh, even yeah. so, even if you're not running it as a server, but if you're running command line applications in JavaScript, you need, because Node.js then gives you all of the um, the libraries to deal with the operating system, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, for, for me on like server side, it's, I, I know this is like old school, but it's like still PHP, right? I mean, I, it's just much easier to, to um, do a whole lot of things with that than like, you know, a lot of these other like, like I kind of looked into Node uh, to do that type of stuff, but like, I mean, I just find PHP. Well, that's essentially easier. what what the job I'm at is that it was the, the the portion I'm working on is essentially a rewrite of what they had in PHP, right? So they'd written it, you know, right. 15 years ago in PHP, and now they're trying to rewrite it in Go. Is is there advantages to that? Like, I mean. Yeah, well, that's the thing, right? Go has the built-in concert concurrency, and it's compiled, right? And I think it also works better with my. And the other thing too these days is microservice architectures, right? Uh, PHP sort of requires things to be in the monolith, right? Right, right. So yeah, yeah I mean that's it, that... it, it, PHP is definitely aging. I agree. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's, yeah, that's essentially what Go was designed to replace was, at the time, that I think Go came out 2009 or something like that, I remember, right? Um, it was there to kind of replace all of these things that had been written, you know, these web services that, yeah, just didn't really kind of take it, and to, and to take advantage of of um, concurrency, right? Because that, that's really been the big thing in the last few years, right? Like, you know, is uh, multi-core processors and so... PHP. I don't even know if PHP. I'm sure there's something out there maybe to deal with 
multi-threading, but I'm sure it's awful. Um, yeah. So I, that's what I, none of the... I don't know. I, I mean, I, I assume someone has written something, but uh, I, I actually don't know. Like I said, I haven't really been focused on this stuff for, you know, quite a while now, so... Yeah, so I mean that's that's the main thing. So like Go and and microservice architecture is is kind of the big thing now, right? Um, and yeah, that's what Go was, right? Like I said, Go designed concurrency as a as a first class citizen, right? It's built into the language. It's not a library of the language, and the language was designed around it, and some other things like that. And and of course, the other thing, the main thing with Go versus PHP and um, JavaScript and and Python and, and Ruby is that it's strongly typed. I think maybe Ruby strongly typed. I can't remember if Python is, but JavaScript and PHP are not, right? You can assign something and it, at some point it's going to hold a number and some point it's going to hold a string, right? In PHP. Yeah. So I, I, I think mean, Twitter was, wasn't Twitter first written in Ruby on Rails and then they migrated it to Scala? Yeah, p possibly, possibly. A lot, like, that's the thing when you're coming when you're coming out of the 2000s there, right, there was a lot of, you know, C Sharp and Java were two of the big ones there, but then people kind of getting sick of those, so they started playing with some of these more scripted ones, and of course PHP had been around for a while at that point, but then people, for whatever reason, yeah, then they started trying Ruby on Rails, you know, uh, Python with, what is it, Django, um, and then, of course, a few years later came JavaScript and, and, and with, with Node and whatnot, right? And then a million different frameworks for there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Big time. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, for me, one of these days, I'm going to break out all the, uh, like, books on vanilla JavaScript that, I, that I've that i bought over the years and just get get to them. But, like, yeah. I, I sort of debate if you should learn, like, I'm, and, and the problem is, I, if, if that book was written more than five years ago, it's kind of out of date already. Cause at well, this point, I, mean, I, I have John Resig's um, secret of the JavaScript ninja. Uh, I think the second edition. So I have that. Like one. I said, I mean, cause uh, the big thing is, is that um, there's been a lot of additions to it. Like, cause each year they come out with a new ECMA script. And like, if I was to go and actually look, like see what the different, cause yeah, like, let's see. With um, when did they when did they add async? Because async is really ever you know. So async was actually added in ECMAScript 2016 or ES7, right? You always have to like minus one from the other because the new one comes out each year, and then like, uh, and then yeah, ECMAScript 2017 added a lot more. And then they added more around it because that's the big thing is it's all that asynchronous. So a lot of that, they, they and they even added the um, the the, the promise dot prototype dot finally to to that stuff. So that's the problem is that really. Right. Oh, and then actually one of the big things they finally added to JavaScript was what they call the um, the. Um, Safe Navigator is it the safe? Safe. Oh, what is it? Yeah. So, um, optional chaining. So nice to call it the safe. So what it used to be is that like you would you, usually in Java, well, in a lot of languages, right? You usually like well, but especially in JavaScript, right? So like you're trying to check if an object has something. So you're checking its type, and then you're like, you know, if person dot a and person dot a dot b and person dot a dot b dot c right so now what there is is you can just put person question mark dot a question mark dot b question mark dot c right so you can do all of that and just access it and if one of those comes back undefined because if you tried to access you know a b c d and right one of those of course you dotted into it it would just it would just throw a runtime error and then everything would collapse, right? So you'd had to guard all that stuff. Instead, you know, one of those, if any of those is null, then it will return a null and then you'll be fine with it. So that was really a big, a big addition. That only was actually added to the language as of, um, yeah, 2021 ECMAScript. So like there's been some, right. yeah, some big changes. And, I, and, and that was the big thing, like, because like, a lot of languages had built that in in a while, and I guess it was one that they dragged their heels on. 
because funny enough like that was yeah like more than anything that was the biggest thing that was missing from javascript is kind of a modern language a lot of modern languages have that this kind of optional unwrapping right right so i mean so so does a does a does a car still come back like um does it does it still make the assumption like let's say you put a number as a car like does it still um return as the number or like have they changed that i don't want to judge because like i mean with javascript it's you can assign anything right so yeah. like if, if you're using TypeScript, usually it will enforce the typing, but with JavaScript, of course, you have to check the uh, constructor on the prototype to get the type of it, right? Right, 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 right. Okay, and then yeah, yeah. you can see, so like, yeah, there's, there's still a lot of that type checking, right? And like, that's what TypeScript gets you away from is having to kind of do, right? You can assume a certain amount of types when it returns certain things. So it just does it for you. It, inf it doesn't do it for you, but it enforces it at, because it doesn't compile, it transpiles to JavaScript, right? And so what it does is it makes sure that when you're calling certain methods that you're enforcing the types on there. It's like, okay, only, you know, given my current usage here, only cars can get into here, right? Nothing right, else okay. can get into here. But of course, you can always kind of abuse it and still like say like, oh, type any, right? Like any, 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 you'll see it everywhere. Um, right. So it requires a certain amount of discipline. So it, like, yeah, it allows you to check your usage but it doesn't actually enforce it um, at runtime. Right, right. So it's, it's really more just about making sure that you're like, yeah, that you're not abusing it, but at runtime, you can still abuse it. Right. It's, but like I said, so it's, it's mostly about writing maintainable code, right? So yeah, if I'm whipping off a little script of things, right, then then yeah, it's not as important. But like, yeah, if I'm trying to like write something big and I'm, I'm using something somewhere else and I'm not sure I'm the exact type and it's like, oh yeah, no, I have to unwrap that thing. It's still in a map or something like that. Then you have to, then it's useful for that. Right. But whereas like, yeah, go, go, it's it's all typed, right? So like it'll it'll fail to build if you try to abuse it. There's of course certain types yeah, yeah. of runtime errors, but and 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 what's the garbage collector like? Is it uh, you, you know is it is it decent? Like do you trust it or? I guess we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I haven't I haven't dealt like I said I haven't dealt with it too much there because of course that's where the concurrency comes in, but um, it seems like it's efficient, right? Because of the way that you can pa pass things around as pointers rather than. Um, as values and stuff like that. Right. Techn technically, you can do that on JavaScript too, but it's it's kind of quirky how it is. Whereas this one's a bit much more explicit about when you're passing something as a pointer, versus when you're passing it as a uh, value or a copied value or whatever, right? So we'll, we'll right, see. Right. Like, like I said, I haven't played too much with the Go routine, the, the the Go routine stuff. I'm sure I will at some point, um, because to a large extent, a lot of these are are being a lot. Because pretty much I had a bunch of training stuff, and so like yeah, so far like I, 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 I did I, I worked on one issue ticket where I was just adding a method to something, and of course it didn't require any sort of multi-threading. I have to check because like I said, the, the because they're microservices, the entire point of a microservice is that they spin up, they spin down, right? But um, right. So I mean, I I messaged Carlo. Um, he hasn't sent anything back yet. Um, I know that he's seen the messages uh, on the DM group. So um, I, I don't know. Has he, has he said anything to you or? No, I haven't seen. I mean, maybe for now we can probably like, I guess, scrap this and then I'll have to like, let me see what I see here. Yeah. I guess we can try for it again another time. Because, I mean, he has seen these messages. Should we just, like, I don't know, wait another 10 minutes and maybe... Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can give it a few more minutes either way. See if he pops in. But, yeah, no, I mean, so far, like, yeah, go. I'm, I'm liking it. Right, right. And, and uh, 
how's the rest of uh, Idaho going? Is it um, yeah? Have you have you had a chance to go by any uh, gun shops or anything like that? Not yet, not yet. But uh, probably, I'm supposed to get paid Friday, so maybe I'll maybe I'll go on a spree. Right. Cause it's not like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm down for money, but yeah, I just want to make sure I got that cash flow in there, and then I can start to be, uh, be much more, you know, flippant. Right, right. And and like, what are the people like at your work? Are they cool? Or like, yeah, they're good. They're good. The people who come in, right? Like a lot of people, I guess, are still working remotely. Although that's maybe supposed to change, but uh. Yeah, so for so I mean for the most part, yeah, everybody's nice and whatnot. I mean, I mean, do you really think that this remote work is going to change that much? Because, I mean, I, I was in Toronto on Friday, and uh, like in the finance district, and you know, I was I was actually quite taken back. I was kind of shocked. I mean, I haven't been there places for like are doing years. mixed. So right. will will it be every day? Will it be Monday through Friday like it was or whatever? Like that's that's kind of the big question is, yeah, like, you know, still having – well, because some places are just playing along the, the lines of the, 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 the four-day, 10-hour workday, right? Whereas other places it's like, oh, yeah, five days, but, you know, so many from home and stuff like that. So right. I think it's something that a lot of places are kind of toying about with. Well, I mean, I'm I'm saying like in downtown Toronto, it's not what it was like 13 years ago. Yeah, know? well, no, that, I, mean, I saw the same thing. Who was it? It it's was busy, but not like it was. You know, like COVID has really messed it all up big time. Like, I mean, there's tons of office space for lease signs. You know, like a lot of retail space for lease. Like, you know, businesses that went under and that just never come back. Like. It was actually quite surprising, actually. And, I mean, that was a thriving, thriving area down there. Like, I mean, I'm I'm saying, like, 13 years ago. It's probably been about that long since I've been down there in, like, the business day. And, uh, wow, you know, like, it, it, it's it's quite surprising. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if it's going to ever recover. And and I, I think it has to do with the fact, like, what you're just talking about, people working remotely. It's, I don't think they want to go back to, you know, throwing on a shirt and tie and like, you know, heading down to the office, right? Like, I mean, you see office people, but like, you know, it's not like it was, right? Well, that's the thing. A lot of the people who do come in regularly are, well, I, th I think it's because some of them are actually interns, but even a lot of the younger developers are the ones who are in there regularly, right? And, and and I'm talking like in their 20s, and for them it's probably it's probably almost novel because for them, of course, they've been sort of um, yeah they they didn't get that you know sort of I get yeah for them like you know having you know all this like remote school and remote everything else right the ability to kind of be in the office and hang out right kind of seems appealing I suppose right at that age right right yeah. Whereas for a lot of the people who are like working from home, like, yeah, like if they're older, especially if they got kids and a wife, right? It's like, yeah, they, they clock in, they do their thing, hopefully, right? Like, I'm not saying not all, but some, but, uh, <laughs> but of course, yeah, they're, they're just like, they're, they're very sort of like detached, right? Cause then they're going to, you know, go and do something with the wife and kids later in the day. And so, right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I was actually pretty surprised at Toronto. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, um, it's, it's pretty interesting. It's like, it, it just has not recovered uh, from COVID and like, you know, the people down there, like I get the sense that it's like, it, and I, I think I mentioned this in the DM group. It's like that meme of that dog and he's sitting at his like kitchen table, you know, he's having a cup of coffee and like, his entire house is on fire around him and he's like oh you know this is fine it's like that's how i kind of see torontonians it's like the ones that actually remain there because like during covid there was like 
a huge exodus of people that were like 28 to like 37 and they all like came like out to like the suburbs like the gta suburbs yeah so i put up in the the city eliza schaefer like a couple days ago he posted it wasn't a video he recorded somebody else recorded but he posted up there and i guess it's like a guy i didn't listen to i was i watched the whole thing but i didn't listen to it all but i think it's like he's like showing like how like yeah like when he left the office right like three years ago the calendar's still up and just like everybody had left their stuff there because it's supposed to as we all know it's supposed to be for two weeks and so for some reason he was having to like clean out all the office or something maybe the startup went under and he was whatever but uh yeah, like, that's what you're saying. Like, he's, like, showing, like, these places down in San Francisco, right, where, like, you know, all the startups were and everything, and they're just empty, empty, empty now, right? Yeah, that that's pretty crazy. Um, and, I mean, that would not have been like that, you know, three years ago, right? Um, yeah, it's, I, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I think to some extent, like with those big, big cities like Toronto, like in some ways, like, uh, I don't know, like, because like, yeah, like people like, you know, they had to be there because that's where everything was going on. And so that's what was exciting about it. But now that nobody's down there, it's not exciting anymore. And that value is kind of left us, you know, but it's just stressful. And it's just, you know, too big and stuff like that. So yeah, I don't know what it will take. Like now, is it happening as much in mid-sized city like you know smaller cities like this one right now of course yeah there's a lot of people who still want to seem to work from home um claiming traffic and stuff like that and everything else but uh well but the, the interesting thing is like there's still so much construction going on they're building more and more of those like glass condominium buildings down there okay but nobody can actually get it can afford them uh, most of them are bought by foreign buyers. Um, if you do manage to rent one, it's going to be like, you know, three grand a month, uh, maybe more. Um, I I mean, I just don't see like a, essentially like, I mean, I don't want to see a recession come and like a big crash, but like that might actually be what is necessary to sort of reset the system so that we can have price discovery on like the on the real estate that's down there right so i mean yeah well i mean yeah. it's sort of inevitable because i mean the, the the price right now is just it's just far far too high and and i mean the, the the thing is though what i can't understand is like a lot of these construction projects are still going on it it's not like they've been paused they're still building and I'm just thinking to myself, like, who is going to buy these? Like, I mean, I, I think they have, like, Toronto implemented as of this year, the empty homes uh, or, like, apartment tax. So it's like you pay your normal property tax if you own the home. But, like, they're also going to tack on an additional tax if you just leave that vacant. And the idea is that, you know, it's it's meant to force your hand to either rent it or like live in it or have some rent to the government yeah, that's what I mean, we're going to see it being it's uh, going to be renting to the government for refugees because the government's probably still subsidizing which is why they're being built and so there's no reason to not build them because the government subsidy requires them to build it and then yeah once that time comes then of course yeah they'll they'll probably you know rent it to refugees or something rented to the government or maybe they'll be used for you know uh like the covid hotels or whatever else you you mean like like have it nationalized in a sense like like you see that happening more in in everything but name right right right, right. Yeah, yeah 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 i i guess that yeah it wouldn't be popular politically right to have a nationalized uh housing right so not immediately, but um, long term, like, yeah, how do they structure it? And of course, it's it's backdoor socialism all the time. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's interesting. I saw something about Idaho. I think they made it illegal to, like, actually administer the COVID vaccine. It was, it was, I think it was like... added to an omnibus bill. So, yeah, I saw that, too. It was a couple of days ago. They added it to some one of these omnibus bills. Um, I'm not sure about Idaho, but I'm guessing it works the same way as Utah because it's a smaller state and for better or for worse, um, 
what you'll find in smaller states is that the the legislature only runs like two months of a year, right? So usually, I know in Utah, it's January, February, maybe early March that they run for, and then the other ten months they're not working, right? So it's literally a part time job. So I'm I'm thinking Idaho probably runs the same way, right? And that they don't run year round. So probably right now they're probably pushing through a lot of bills, and and then it goes through a whole sort of mess like that so I'm, I'm guessing it was just an omnibus bill and then yeah we'll see if it makes it into the main bill or whatnot there but i'm because I'm, right. I'm pretty certain I, certainly 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 quebec and ontario and bc but i think even the smaller provinces right like you know saskatchewan and and whatnot uh which only has a million people, right? Whereas Idaho, I think, has two million people. I think even Saskatchewan, like I think, I think being an uh, MPP, you know, is a uh, is you know full time job there, and that's of course really the problem in anything. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because then they feel compelled. It's like, well, I'm getting paid. We better pass bills and everything, right? Like th this is the biggest problem with with the leftists, and even to a certain extent, sometimes the uh, supposed right wing mind strip. It's Right. It's like, oh, you know, well, I'm, I'm getting paid to do something, so I, I should probably pass more bills. Right. Like to, to sort of justify the fact that they're there. Like, <laughs> exactly. Like, I mean, well, this is the problem. Right. Is that like, you know, you should only, you know, they're, they're trying to fix something that's not broken or yet. Yeah, then they, they pick up little pet projects and stuff. So, like, this is why, like, yeah, like I said, like smaller states. And by that, I mean, by population, obviously not by area, smaller states you know, will tend to actually have this, this very much part time and you don't get paid a whole lot. Like, Oh, who, who knows what it even is now? Like it was, it was something very crappy, like essentially like a couple hundred dollars or something a day to, to, to be right. a Utah legislator. Right. So like you're, you're purely, de now, of course, some people complain like, Oh, well this discourages, you know, so-and-so, but of course, usually what it meant was that a lot of people, and that's why they did it in February, January. Right. Because of course, you know, going back, you know, a long time, right? Like usually, you know, for most, you know, for farmers and stuff like that, there's not a whole lot going on this time of year. Right. So, so yeah. It, so I, I'm, I'm just curious, like, so Boise, is it like, like, I don't expect it to be like a big city, but like, I mean, so what is like, um, like the lifestyle and like, the vibe of it like i i just have no uh... so this is this is so i mean th this is all very very tentative right my, my perception of it and based on just my perception of other things right so like i said so yeah it's 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 the capital city right so th this is always the thing about canada right is that like a, a city with four hundred thousand people up there is going to have more infrastructure than a comparable city like that in the states just because it need you know what i mean because there's no, we're, like that's a big enough city up there to have that, right? So like right. a capital a capital of 400,000 people versus a non-capital of 400,000 people, you're going to find a lot more in them. So of course, Boise, based on my perception of things, of course, I've, I've gone on like the Boise Reddit, it's it's probably going to be a lot bluer than a lot of the rest of the, and, and I'm, I'm talking American blue here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. right, right. Um, it's going to be a lot bluer. Than, than the rest of it, right? Because this is where you're, you're, you're having a consolidation of like, you know, the people who kind of, you know, like the college graduates and the leftists and stuff like that. And so, right. It's, but for the most part, it's, 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 it's a, it's a tidy enough, it, like, yeah, I haven't seen any homeless people down here. And it's, um, it's not really so Boise kind of is at the kind of northern, northeastern point of what they call Treasure Valley, which kind of extends southwest and south and west from here almost to the oregon border border or maybe even past it a little bit uh right. for about like 100 or 200 miles so it's it's there's a there's a lot of room to kind of spread out there right it's it's very much kind of like the um like the gta area right you got the you got the lake on the side of you there but there is enough room for people to just kind of start spreading out right so the yeah. downtown itself proper is kind of nudged between the, the river it's a small river the Boise River and and the foothills there um, but then everything kind of extends south and west from there right so um, so you, so Boise extends over the river and past that and then you have Meridian and then you have so this kind of suburban structure right um, 
I'm not sure how it works in Toronto. Is it, like Mississauga is a separate city with a separate mayor, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so it's, it's um, kind of like, yeah. yeah. And so, so Boise so I mean, itself, yeah, is not like a huge city, right? It doesn't cover a large geographical area, I think. Um, it, it, and like the Mormonism aside, like how does it compare to Salt Lake City, Utah? So the Mormon, the Mormon belt of Idaho is actually more in the southeast, right? Um, the rest of Idaho, it's a, it's a bit more mixed, right? So the Mormons are probably a small but significant minority here. Like I think if you were to cut up like Idaho, it's probably like it's like twenty five percent Mormon, twenty five percent Catholic, twenty five percent Protestant, and twenty five percent unaffiliated, which includes kind of like atheists or you know just not. So it's it's kind of a, a four way cut there, and actually the thing you'll find is that those those unaffiliated probably kind of align more with me in the sense that they're unaffiliated but not leftist, right? Because actually, right, like right. I said, I was I was on I was on the Boise Reddit there, and somebody was on there like, oh, can anybody find, tell me where a good liberal church is, right? Because I mean, actually, sometimes what you'll find is the most obnoxious people are actually the uh, the uh, the rainbow Christians, I guess you could call them there, right? Right. Those are <laughs> no, no, but I mean, I mean, like, like the Mormonism aside, which is why you sort of chose um, Idaho. Like, I'm, I'm just curious, how does the city itself, like the infrastructure and like the people, and like, how does it compare to Salt Lake City? Well, so that's the thing. So Salt Lake suffers because I, I maybe mean, so many people move there for a number of reasons, but yeah, so it's it's extremely kind of overcrowded and has been for for a bit. But and it's it's crowded because it has mountains running down each side. So there's very much a sort of corridor there, and this is what also causes the inversion situation, which gives it the worst air quality there in winter than the rest. Because yeah, the, the hot air doesn't rise, and so the just kind of the the pollution. So it's extremely overcrowded there in Salt Lake too, um, somewhat related to the because a lot of Mormons are drawn there, and and you know it's 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 sort of an artificial city like that. So. Boise hasn't gotten that a whole lot yet. Um, they are getting more of an influx of people from the, the you know, Seattle, Portland, California, you know, and stuff like that. But it, usually right. so far, it seems like it's less of the leftists moving in and more people like me, right, who are trying to escape leftism yeah. so far. <laughs> um, and like I said, like, well, this is what I keep saying is Boise always, it's like, it's like Salt Lake was 30 years ago, right? Like it's always 30 right. years. So like, it's weird because yeah, like, you know, people I talk to who are roughly my age, right, are only, say, a generation removed from, like, you know, farmers and stuff like that, right? So it's it's, it's kind of like, yeah, I mean, you know, it's as far as, like, the, the sort of development goes, right, it's, it's kind of the way that things in a lot of places were, say, 30, 40, 50 years ago. I mean, it's probably maybe maybe Toronto, like, 80, 60 years, who knows exactly, but, um, or maybe right. not Toronto ever had that, but... um. But yeah, so it's it's still fairly, but like, yeah, like, so actually right now, I guess the big thing kind of trending out there, right? And I think we've all seen the memes, right? It's it's kind of in the the, the vein there of the uh, diagonal thing. But um, greater Idaho, right, is, is, is the joke kind of going around right now, right? It's, it's all the people from eastern Washington and eastern Oregon wanting to join Idaho, right? And then, of course, you know, like some, some, some leftist from my camera for his organ or I or Washington um uh keep wanting to say MP representative there was like okay fine we'll take we'll we'll swap you but we get Boise or something like that so but like like I said so Boise of course being a city it's it's kind of teetering there but yeah hopefully hopefully it doesn't teeter too much um it's kind of obnoxious Boise proper I was slightly irritated um yeah I guess like five six years ago they outlawed smoking in bars in the city so yeah, you had to drive out to like Meridian, I guess. So 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 like in Meridian, you can still smoke like right inside. Yeah, yeah. in the bar. Wow, and and restaurants too, or or no? Probably, I think by state law, it's it's up to the um, the business's um, choice, right? So if the business wants to allow, like, and I think I think it goes for any business, right? Even if you're working, like, you know, like you know an h&r block right you can right like, like i assume where you're working now they don't allow it right well yeah no probably not 
I haven't I haven't asked specifically, but uh, no, I assume not. Right, right, yeah. Well, no, no, like I said, because by Boise City Ordinance, I don't think, yeah, you can smoke inside. Right. So, yeah, that's sort of the main. So, but otherwise, like, things are working out there. You, you're preferring it to Montreal at this point? Yeah, yeah, well, like I said, I mean, I guess to some extent, like I said, I was getting homesick, not specifically for Salt Lake, you know what I mean, because that has its own problems, right. but for, for you know, the kind of semi-urban Mountain West, right? And it, it, technically speaking, if you squint, um, if I was drunk, like, it'd be hard for me to not know that, you know, this was not, you know, Boise, you know, that, that this wasn't the Salt Lake Valley, right? Right, okay, yeah. You, you had a lot of the same businesses. You even have Zion's Bank, which is, um, of course, a, a, a big Mormon bank. Um, they, they have offices up here, right? It extends up here. So, so the, again, it's, it's familiar in that way. And, yeah, it's also just like, yeah, well, I, I mean, I, this, I mean, things are just going so over time. Like, because I, 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 like, yeah. it was the same for me. Like, like <laughs> when, when people would come into the rooms, like the Americans, they'd be like, oh, well, what you Canadians need is guns. It's like, I know, I don't need it. But, like, I mean. But it's just other things. So I don't want to like rub it in. But like, like I said, like things are just going so retarded up there, right? Bill C yeah, C eleven, yeah. right? No, no plastic. Oh god! Like I said, like it's it's the part I haven't brought up. So like I, I keep talking about this grocery store that's super cheap that I go to. They have gigantic, like like gigantic and and not like the over kind of built like plastic bags that we were using a few years ago. Like these very much built like disposable, but it's still like firm, right? So it's it's like it's like the yeah. big grocery bags that you probably got like you know 10 15 years ago right like so it's, right it's great like that like i mean i use them you, you, you mean like plastic bags yeah yeah just like the white plastic bags right like yeah, yeah without having to be like the ones that you pay five cents for it like so like yeah like I'll, I'll get these ones and I'll, I'll i'll double bag them but they're just like nice and big and bountiful and everything else and so yeah what, what, just... you, you know it's kind of interesting like so up here like so Longos, they were, um, they, they're selling you for 35 cents, these other plastic bags that are like a bit more robust. So they're reusable bags, right? So the idea is that, you know, you're going to like bring these bags back and forth and stuff like that. It's, it's meant to be a reusable bag, but I, I've, I've already seen some lying on the ground. And I was thinking to myself, like at 35 cents, this is going to become the new plastic bag, which is actually harder. Like, I mean, it's, it's much more robust than the old standard plastic bags. So, I mean, you're going to get people that just walk into the grocery store, buy those bags and, and don't bring them back to the grocery store. Each time that they come, they'll just buy a new set of bags. And like at 35 cents, they'll probably just discard them. Right. So, I mean, they think that they're solving a problem by banning the other plastic bags, which they were charging you five cents for. But I mean, these more robust ones that are reusable, they're going to become the new plastic bag. Right. So, I mean, I, I just don't see that they've solved anything with this. Right. Like, I, and I mean, I've seen so many people, myself included that like I'll walk into the store okay, like I'm starting to get better at remembering to bring the bags back in because they just don't have plastic bags anymore. They don't even have paper as an option to like take your stuff out of the store. It's these 35 cent bags or nothing, right? You just have to like gather up your crap and like, you know, hope you can like manage it between your arms and like leave the store. But I mean, they're not going to solve anything with these bags, right? It's it's going to become the new recycling environmental challenge with more robust bags. I mean, it's, it's just totally stupid, right? Yeah, I don't know. Like, like it's funny because, like, when I first moved to Canada, I'd sort of re recycle. Well, because, like, yeah, like, when I lived in the suburbs, sometimes we recycle stuff. Other times we wouldn't. Whatever. I wasn't overly concerned about it. And then I was living in a building before I moved to Canada where it just had a garbage chute. And then once I moved to right. Canada, of course, I buy a lot of soda in the cans and all that. And uh, it was actually like a, a rather politically correct new fee. But he like shamed me for like, oh, because I, you know, just throw out my cans. 
in, in the trash. So I, I started sort of recycling. But then, of course, Montreal, they went from two days of trash to like one day of trash and one day of recycling. So then I yeah. started recycling more. And of course, I do sort of feel bad about not recycling cans because, of course, aluminum, it's a basic, right? That's what they're all, all looking for, right? A lot of the other stuff that you supposedly think you're recycling just gets trashed, right? It gets yeah, tossed exactly. out. They don't want it. Aluminum yeah. is actually recyclable, but most things aren't at that level, right? So, but I, now I'm in a building and, yeah, it's got a garbage chute. And if I want to recycle my cans, I got to take the elevator down and walk them out to the back and dump them into the thing. So I'm just throwing them out now. I'm yeah, I, walk them down. I don't blame you. <laughs> Well, it's just like a walk of shame, right? Because I'm, I'm walking through the lobby like my sack of cans, like some sort of hobo. It's like, yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. Into the trash they go. Yeah, exactly. How's it going, Kate? Well, not too bad. I just, this discussion about uh, <clears throat> shopping bags, I, I had to, uh, what well, was a meme that was going around, but it certainly resonated with me. I don't know how old everyone in the room is, but I remember as a kid, I, <clears throat> you know, my brother and I would occasionally be tasked with walking down to the grocery store to pick up a couple of groceries and they were always in a paper bag and it was it was a bit of a walk for us but I mean we were young and mom wanted us out of her hair so um you know we'd do the walk down and the, the painful part was to walk back in these paper bags right trying to keep these groceries in these paper bags especially heavier items right they were just horrendous but um then they replaced the paper bags with plastic bags because we had to save the trees right we were killing off our forests, so we had to switch to, to plastic bags now we got to switch back to paper bags in many cases, many grocery stores, uh, especially in the prairies, they've all gone back to paper bags uh, to save the environment. Right? So we're, we, we've come full circle, boys. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I, like, I mean, I remember in the 80s, they used to ask you if you want paper or plastic, right? You, you actually got a choice. Yeah, no, exactly. Well, and, and yeah, so like they have they have. When I go to this Winco place, yeah, they have both the paper and the plastic there. Now, I sort of debate because, like, yeah, I guess paper is better if it's something you're going to be carrying from the bottom, right? But, of course, you know, I'm I'm trekking these home. Not too much. It's like a 10-minute walk, so it's not a big deal. But, yeah, like I had to double bag some things. So, of course, I, I can't, you know, walk that home in a paper bag, right? Right, so right. I, I went with the plastic. And, like I said, I double bagged, too. And they didn't, they didn't charge me for the bags. Like I said, they're not like – yeah, they're not like – as like like i said it's, it's it's a high quality plastic bag that you would have seen 10 15 years ago right not the right like like a more like modern one like a whole foods paper bit like i mean that's quite a robust bag right? oh, no, well I'm, I'm yeah i'm talking about the plastic ones right? oh plastic so like, right right like there's like, like they, there was like the really like flimsy ones like usually they were actually brown because they were you know like recycled or something but i'm talking about like the, the high quality like white plastic bag you used to get like right and these are like the big ones too right like so like you know you can get a you could probably fit a decent size like turkey or something in there so like right right yeah so yeah that's what hey, and and what about straws like are they still on the plastic straws everywhere there like, yeah, yeah, yeah no exactly well, that's the thing. Before before we, we were supposed to start the book club, I actually went out, walked down to, to uh, I keep wanting to say Depener, uh, convenience. Well, no, 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 because, of course, in the States, when they want to be fancy about their convenience stores, they call them bodegas, right? Because that's, right, that's right. a Spanish word for a Depener. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I walked down to one of those. Well, because that's the difference is that I usually, like, even though in French, like, the word for Depener included even, like, you know, a petrol Canada or whatever, right? Like, I usually reserved step and newer for like yeah like the little mom and pop shop which actually funny enough were usually like asian or indian run right but um but yeah so i walked down to one of, to that and i grabbed my soda and then i walked back so i have a uh i don't know how big this is i want to say it's a 40 44 ounce or somewhere in there of, of diet do right right and and isn't the dew like much the plastic straw isn't it much more like caffeine in the in the mountain dew down there like i'm not sure i'd have to check and, and confirm that Although it's still diet dew, like, because actually, because like, it was always very spotty when I was in Montreal. Like, sometimes they'd have diet dew, sometimes they wouldn't. And of course, since COVID, like, I haven't seen it anywhere. But, um, but like, in the last few months that I was up there, they did come out with Mountain Dew Zero. I think they're doing it because a lot of markets now are passing, like, you know, anti sugar laws, right? Like, so, like, I think, I think, right. I think in Nova Scotia, they passed one like that, right? Where, like, yeah, you, there's a tax on sugary soda. So you're probably going to see a lot more of the zero zero uh flavors up there but yeah here it's still diet dew but a lot of things are switching over to that so right right 
Well, I mean, I, I just, uh, I just, I just, just to come back to the book club. So I just um, sent a message to the, um, the, the book club DMs group. And I mean, C- Carlo has seen it, so I don't know. He's- I'm guessing he's probably just busy. Like, yeah. Right, right. And just not sure, like, when he'll be away. It's fine. We, we can try and, who knows, maybe we can start doing it midweek. Well, the one thing I was pointing out, right now I'm not going to do it. And probably not for the next few weeks, but at some point, like I said, they are supposed to, it is supposed to be flexible Mondays and Fridays for, for my job there. Right. Right. Like work from home. Right. Oh, that's um, awesome. but of course I don't want to work from home right now because, um, I have no chairs. I, I don't have a chair in my apartment. You, you don't even have one chair. Like, like you don't have like a no, shop or I, I something have... where you can, uh, I probably could. Right. It's something I need to check out. I need to see if they have a DI around here. What a DI is, is that's the Mormon Church owned um, thrift stop, right? Short for Deseret Industries. And I'm not going to get into the whole word, what Deseret means, right. but that's their their fancy word for their new Zion. But um, Mormons, yeah, Mormons would always exclusively donate to DI. And since it's, since it's essentially, um, what would you call it? Um, not subsidized, right? It's essentially subsidized by the Mormon Church. So unlike the uh, the um, uh, what is it the uh, the uh, Salvation Army, which people tell me is like overpriced, right? Di actually can get some really uh, interesting shit for really cheap there. Um, right. So I should go and check out a Di. Although I'm wondering how much people are. D- you know, the last time I went to a Di was before Facebook Marketplace. Right. So right, we'll right. see. Yeah, I, I could. Well, I mean, the main problem, of course, I need to. Uh, well, that's the thing. Probably one of these days, I will probably work from home on a Monday because I got to go and get my license again and, and all that junk. So, and... so any luck uh, lo- locating um, the uh, what was it the the Ford? Um, what was it the Bronco or something? Yeah, you were so, looking so for? it's but funny what? enough. It's funny enough. Like, um, I was looking at like like articles, and actually, it was talking like it was an article. I think on like. Wall Street Journal or something that was talking about like, yeah, like, well, prices are kind of up and down, up and down. So the problem is, is if you look at like where the economies have shrunk, right? So the Mountain West, the economy never really shrunk as much. And in some ways, that's because for better, or for worse, Mormons are way into to um, what would you call it? Um, prepping and stuff like that. But the other reason, too, is that Mormons, you know, with with their huge families are less likely to kind of like jump jobs and stuff like that. And so the economies out here always tend to be much more stable because of that. Um, and so like, it, it sounded like I was reading an article off because the Boise Reddit tends to be much more leftist. The Idaho, I mean, in the Reddit these days, there's no real, the, but usually that's what you'll find is that if you go province or statewide Reddit, that's a little, they were talking about how like, yeah, the prices are kind of going down on used cars, but they might go back up. Cause of course prices, because of the whole chip shortage, right? used cars went way, way up and shit like that, right? Um, especially c- cars that weren't as heavily, you know, involved with chips because I think people started to become paranoid about the chip. Because like I said, I very much want that pre-95 Bronco, or not Bronco, Ranger. So right. it looks like, like, yeah, like if, if I want, a, you know, a barely functioning beater, like under 1500, if I want something that's mostly up to date, uh, probably 45 to 6500. Um, so, and the problem too is, like I said, with places out here, right? People, you know, it's the sunk cost fallacy. So, you know, because they bought in the last few years and it was going for sixty five hundred dollars, they still want to get sixty five hundred dollars out of it and stuff like that. So, sometimes it takes a little bit longer for, yeah, market to shift. So, we'll see. We'll see if I can find something. Not so. So you 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 are like adamant. You do not want a new car. Is that? Uh... It's just the novelty of it. I mean, for the most part, I just wanted something cheap. And that was like sort of the shock is like, yeah, like how much do I have to pay for something? Right. Because like, I remember like 10 years ago, like, yeah, you could get something like that for under 2000. But of course, so I mean, that's more than anything. It's right. Like, I, I just didn't want to pay for something, you know, that much. Right. 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 Um, yeah. And I mean like they really seem to be trying to push everybody to electric right i mean this is the move that they're trying to make um i i i don't know i don't think it's gonna like i mean the the shift would happen naturally it's just like you know i was thinking about the other day it's like 
why are you pushing so much for everybody to go electric? It's like, you know, just let the market decide whether it wants it. If it truly is better, people will move to it, right? If it's not, I mean, you know, you'd still need the petroleum based cars there to function. Like, I mean, I live in the suburbs, right, of the GTA. So, it's the infrastructure, right? Because if they don't push everybody to do it, then nobody's going to build these power recharge stations. And so these power recharge stations are only being built under the impression that the government will push everybody to these stations, right? But, but I mean, Tesla's already put them in all over North America, right? So they're, they're supercharging stations. But not really all over. There's, there's, there's some around, right? But to really make them effective, right, they need to be all over, which, of course, then defeats the point, right? Because then... Yeah, it's so, so I mean in in my town here they are the power stations are all over like it's at the grocery stores um Tim Hortons has them like they are just about everywhere I would say Home Depot has them in the parking lot um the mall has them so and I think some of them you actually have to pay, like, to to use. I know a lot of them are free. Um, but, I mean, overwhelmingly, people are still on combustion engine, petroleum-based cars, right? I mean, this is not changing as quickly. And, I mean, by them just forcing it more and more, I, I just don't see that happening, right? I mean... I, I I just feel like they need to back off on this issue, right? Yeah, no. Go ahead, Tracy. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, I um <clears throat> wanted to mention about Adrian. You were talking about the free the, the free charging stations. Uh, it made me think of an article that was on Twitter about um, somewhere in the states. And uh, a company was putting in free charging stations at, at their business, um, at their office business in the parking lot. So their employees could get uh, free charging stations. And the employees that had gas powered said, then you're paying for my gas as well, too. Because if you're going to pay for their free, you know, free charging to get to work, you can pay for my gas to get to work. So then they had to change that pretty damn quickly. But um, and, and um, I, I totally agreed with that. Um, but do you guys not um, think you, I don't know who else here is in, in Canada. Um, Adrian, I apologize. I can't remember where you're from. Yeah, I'm, I'm in um, Canada. I'm in, I'm in the GTA. Okay. So, like, I just don't, like, out here in Alberta, I mean, it, it gets pretty effing cold, right? So, I just don't think, there's parts of North America that it would work to have straight um, electric vehicles. But in Canada, I'm sorry, it just it just won't work. Even when it gets down to minus 20, 25, um, out here in Alberta, there's a 48 to 72 hour for AMA, because even the the cars, the newer cars now that are gas powered, that have all these computer shit in them, they don't start in minus 20, 25. So, how are they going to? I, I just don't see it working. And and the government isn't even subsidizing or doing any sort of um, incentives for these power companies to expand the grid. So I, I I see it as just a big scam. It's a it's an agenda for the liberals, um, but they don't. I don't think they're even serious about it. They um, they they truly don't believe. I I don't believe that electric cars are are the answer because you're not getting to the root of the problem, which is places like China and India, which has the true um, problem with pollution and all the rest of that. And, all, like where, where you have more Canada, we don't have enough people here for it to to even be an issue, as far as I'm concerned. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I, I don't. I just don't believe it'll work here in Canada. I agree with Zinc that let the market decide, and um, the few people that do have electric cars, there, and the and the 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 battery itself to to keep that going and replace that. I don't know how long of life these batteries are. I think it's um, t- yeah, 10, ten years at yeah, best. Yeah. At best. Yeah. At best. If you're lucky if you don't get a lemon, right? Because we I mean, even with gas powered vehicles, we can we can get a lemon as well. I was just gonna let you know, Zinc, I have a ninety one Jeep and um I love her. She's um 
she's the only one in the neighborhood when it is minus 37 she doesn't have block heater and she starts up but that's because she has a primitive computer she's you know it, it, she doesn't have she's like a mash vehicle honestly in 91 they didn't even have cup holders i'm like did we not have drive through um you know restaurants in 91 i mean it's it's not it's not 1970s right they didn't even have cup holders back then i mean it's so well, do you remember it was that thing that you would tuck down the window well right like yeah you would shove down the window well that's because like yeah like i remember like seeing those like early 90s to start having like the little cup holders but they were small right like you could fit like a solo cup in there but if you wanted to put your big gulp in, you had to shove the thing down the window well yes yeah, but, yeah no, no, it's it's the bench seating really more than anything else. That's what I love about the because like, like 94, 95 is when they started getting the, the bucket or race car seating, right? Like the, yeah. the cockpit things like but it's the bench. It's essentially I, I want a couch inside a car, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for being a 91, she actually she has electric. She has electric seats. She has power seats, but she doesn't have power windows, which is fine by me. And she does have air conditioning, but it's still that old. And I can never remember. Is it F something air conditioning before they switched it over? Oh, oh free on. The... Yeah. Yeah. And she still, she still blows out a little bit of air conditioning, but I just roll down the windows. I mean, it's just, I like the, the breeze now, coming now, through. Tracy, anyways, but... Does it at least have power um, mirrors? Nope. No power mirrors Ooh, either. That's nope. a deal breaker for me. <laughs> yeah. And and it's amazing that it's a ninety one and it's gone through so many people and still doesn't even have um tinted windows. And I keep saying every spring I'm tinting my windows this year. I never get around to it, but yeah. Um the window but the, the side mirrors, I mean I'm the only driver. So I yeah, I agree with you. It could, you know, the but it does have it has a little um, notches that you can add all you could add on all that stuff. But at not at a ninety one, I'm not going to bother putting too much into her. But um, I would just suggest to you that um, stay as old as you can. That's in good shape because I can still fix her no matter what breaks down on her. I can still fix her. Um, I have deep friends that you know you just go to Napa and get parts and and and. Or to the the pick and pull, you know, and people stay away from me with their Audis and and their Infinities because I have a steel bumper front and back, and um, I'm thinking, yeah, it'll, it'll cost me, you know, fifty bucks at pick and pull for a new bumper. It's going to cost you a couple grand if you hit me, right? So, oh yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> That's if you can't just hammer it out too. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, so there's she she does look rough, but you know, she she starts. She's reliable that way. So I just like and the heater, uh, I mean it it'll melt you. And they they and they made those old. It's an AMC, you know, Jeep. So they they made them for you to abuse the hell out of them and still keep going. And and she does. She's proved her worth many oh, times. Oh, it's, so. it's it's AMC. Um, it's it's not even like Chrysler yet. It's like pretty yeah. wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she's still running. Although she is on. I, since I had her, I had to get a, a new engine. Um, but she was on her own and the speedometer, the odometer doesn't work. She stopped at 341,000. So who knows how many miles she has on her and she keeps going. So I'm, my suggestion is to, as much as those bells and whistles are fun to have. And, and some days it's like, yeah, I wish I had heated seats. Um, I still wouldn't trade her in because I mean, in the, the train that we live in, I'm in Edmonton, you guys know, I think that gets so cold. Um, they don't plow the, the side streets. If I get stuck, it's like drop her into four by four and I'm good to go. You know, like, I mean, but she's a bitch on gas. That's the only thing is like, you're such a pig on gas. Her name is Betty. Sometimes she's Betty the beast. And, but you know, she is a beast on gas. So that's the only, that's the only downfall. But um, I would say stay with something older that has less computer in it. Because those computers, that was, that was the worst thing they could have ever done, was put computers in cars. I mean, I know they were doing it to get rid of the back backyard mechanics, and but um, <clears throat> does anybody really go to the uh, dealership mechanics anyways? They're still way overpriced. I mean, they, they rape you. And you don't even buy you dinner first. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Well, that's the thing, like... <laughs> I mean, there's very, very basic computers in those, and that's why you get the digital. But, I mean, we're talking about, like, 
glorified calculators, right? So, because some people, some people like want like the totally non-computer, right? Like pre nineteen seventy, right? It's like, yeah, it's a bit too much for me, right? Like, you don't, you don't need the computers in these later cars to run them, right? Like, yeah, like if if you get an EMP, right, you can, you can you can jerry rig them right the computers yeah. are there for convenience not necessity unlike the new cards where yeah yeah but yeah exactly. i mean for, for me more than anything yeah like the last car i had down in utah this was 10 years ago it was a 93 ford escort or maybe it was mercury i can't remember if it was a ford or a mercury but uh it was the escort essentially right and yeah it still had it had the adjustable seat but it was still the bench seats right so like Technically, oh, yeah. if you pulled them, if you aligned the front, the front two seats, right, you could fit, fit the person there in the middle in the bitch seat. But, uh, you know, you you could like actually roll. So it was like sitting on a sofa. Right. <laughs> and that's what you're looking for now. I, yeah, well, I mean, that's that's always been my thing is I, I, I like I like those kind of old bench seats because like, I mean, even at home, like people are like, like, I, I still like, you know, like I, I have like a futon type sofa. Um, that's one reason I'm, I'm a, a console gamer and not a PC ga- gamer, right? I, I like I like to sink into my seat there. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, I had I actually moved myself. I'm living with a friend who has a dog with three puppies, and um, so I didn't realize my speaker was on. I wasn't saying hey at you. He was about to go pee <laughs> right there in the middle. They're only a couple months old, but. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I just, I just remember like those old, tr- right? Especially like the old trucks, right? Where it's just like one big bench seat, right? right? Yeah, I like those too, for sure. Yep. So, um, one more question. Um, I'm getting caught up here. So, Boise versus Montreal. So, are you? Are you, I thought you were in Boise. Are you not happy? Or are you still uncertain? Or you're, you're on the? Oh same? no, no, no. I mean, I just had to change the title to something. And that was what our conversation had become, right? Because we. Uh, so we, uh, Carlo wasn't able to make it to the book club today. So I'm just like, well, we'll, we'll change it. And so that, that was just what the conversation was about. Okay. Well, I also want to thank you guys for not kicking me out of your book club because I haven't joined any of the, I am still reading 1984 and I'm, I'm only like on the second chapter. I ended up, you know, packing up, moving, trying to find a place, all that stuff. But I mean, I still you know, love my book, but, um, and well, I mean, 1984, no, I mean, yeah, somebody said that okay maybe because you guys are so knowledgeable um somebody said to me that 1984 uh or george orwell was a mason and he was he was giving us a heads up of what was to come Um, i don't know if i believe that but um the book is like are they following after the book or is the book actually you know giving us a heads up of what was actually to come yeah i don't i don't know if he was a mason because of course mason right like if you know anything about the masons it's you know you can just be a local mason right i mean essentially every farmer in america and canada you know 80 years ago was a mason right my grandpa who was a farmer in, in utah and colorado he was a mason right but of course was he in the higher up things and so i mean it's it's a vague thing like that as far as as far as like yeah is it part of the plan i think it's 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 you can see the course that humanity's on, right? And I think that's what he was speaking at against is kind of the course that, you know, people were on. Um, Cause actually George Orwell himself was actually a reformed socialist, right? He had fought um, for the, with the socialists in the Spanish, in the Spanish civil war there. And of course he had become disillusioned with what happened in Russia and all these other socialist states. So I think had, had he lived longer, he was, he was becoming increasingly more sort of um, jingoistic and patriotic and, and, and right wing. But so really what you have is kind of a guy who's, who's kind of dealing with what, you know, he saw actually happened in socialism. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what, like, so then do you think that they are, they're following because the things that are happening are so I, when I read, I think of, Oh my God, this is so similar to what's happening right now. But then I also think of the show. Did you guys watch person of interest? I love that show, but you can't find it anywhere. It's like they've scrubbed it off of the internet and everything else. But um, person of interest, I, I, I think of person of interest all the time when I'm reading this um, just because it's like, Maybe the guy who made Person of Interest was inspired by 1984. I don't know, but um, 
I mean, it, it's not exactly the same. I did, have you seen Person Was of that interest? with Jim Caviezel? Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, I've seen the show. Yeah, it it is quite good. And there's like this intelligent AI computer that um, yeah. helps them to like um, solve crimes and stuff like that. But then there was like another one like that was like competing game. against it or something. Yeah, it was um, the, the computer helped them find people who were in danger to help people. But as the show went on, the computer got smarter. The computer actually started to think for itself and started to turn on them, actually. And um, and in, in the end, I think that it was the computer actually got them um, told the, the authorities or let the authorities know, led them to where they were at. Like the computer started to think for itself and turned on them. Um, but it was an excellent series. I mean, I'm not. I'm not even. There's so much more to it. I'm not. You know. Um, I guess the thing I will say is, I mean, the, the concept of utopia and dystopia is pretty much the foundation of science fiction, right? Arguably, yeah. one of the first science fiction stories was um, uh, Sir, uh, what's his name? Something more. The guy that King Henry VIII had executed there. He wrote the book Utopia, right? Of course, Utopia was a play on words because he was super Christian, um, being no place, right? So essentially that it's impossible to have utopia on earth, right? It can only be had in heaven and all that. Um, and so th this is, and, and, and you, even going back to the 19th century, you can see these various, some people are writing about utopias and they genuinely believe it's possible. Other people write about them as an impossibility or they write about a dystopia, which Sir Thomas More, that's what it was. They write about the impossibility. So like you can find like, um, there was one that was popular with the Nazis called Vril, the coming race. Um, and it was about like a subterranean utop utopia type thing like that. And um, other things like that were, of course, like um, this is something also that um, what's his name? Um, oh, the guy who wrote the, 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 you know, journey to the center of the earth and the Jules, time Jules machine. Verne. Right? It was yeah. that no, 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 not, not, no, no. I, Oh, Wells. Wells. Sorry, Wells. Yeah, Wells. yeah, Wells. So, like, I mean, the, the the entire notion of utopia is always kind of science fictiony, right? Because it, it inherently it implies that, like, yeah, you somehow find a way to make human beings not human. So it's always inherently science fiction. Um, so, like, and and of course, this is always the point with some of this stuff. Like, are are they telling us it in advance, or are they building on you know these kinds of ideas that people have? Or, or, or are they misleading us into thinking, right? Like, this is my biggest issue with the AI thing, right? I mean, anybody who's heard me talk about the AI thing, people have been fed so much science fiction of this, of like, oh, guys, the robots are going to take over and everything, that they have an unrealistic expectation around the AI. Um, and so in some ways, they, like, have they have they purposely fed, or, or no, even with the pandemic stuff, right? All these pandemic TV shows, and I've watched many of them, right? The, including the zombie ones, right? That people are like, oh, no, guys, some pandemic really can whip around the world and wipe us out, right? I mean, the reason we haven't had a black death in, three, you know, in centuries is because we flush our toilets and don't crap into the middle of the street anymore, except in San Francisco, of course, and maybe soon to be Toronto. Um, but that's essentially right. But they have it in people's idea, you know, in their minds that, yeah, you can actually create this kind of deadly virus and release it and then wipe out the, the, the planet. But we've never actually seen a virus like that, right? The Black Death happened because people really were walking in their own feces, right? How's it going, Carlo? Hi, Carlo. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so, sorry I missed uh, the space. I, I don't know. My Twitter just, just crapped out of me. I think it's just my data because I checked this morning and nothing. And uh, I checked another four and nothing. And then all of a sudden, like, all of the messages just, you know, like, like kind of blasted in. I'm like, wait, what? Uh, yeah. Well, if you all want, we, we can restart it. We can we can actually do it now. It's up to you. Uh, yeah, sure. We can, we can go. Okay. Uh, so let me, let I mean, me retitle uh, it then. Did you, guys, did you guys revise the, the book, though? Because, I mean, I... I had read it like before, right? Before we, before uh, the book club. And then like, you know, I, I, I kind of revised it a bit for like the day we're supposed to do it. And then we never did it. So it's been a long time. So I, I you know, I read it last. So I don't know. Did you guys check like revise it or like we read it? I, like... I haven't, I was trying to revise part of it the other night just cause yeah, I was busy with some stuff, but yeah, I mean like, well, I mean, I've gone through it twice too as well. So I mean, we can kind of just kind of I, I, I'll, yeah. I'm going to see if I can find 
the, the digital copy of it. I'm pretty sure I downloaded a digital copy. And then we can kind of move through it that way, for, maybe. For me, it's still fresh in my head um, because I loved it, right? So, I mean, I did research, you know, on it on the net afterwards. So, and I and I have my notes too. So, um, yeah, I, I don't need much revision. Um, okay. Uh, I'll wait. Do I have my notes? I'm not sure. Um... Yeah, we can go. I mean, I read it a couple of times too. So I, I mean, probably as as we talk, like I'll, I'll warm up and I'll remember. Just give me a second. I'm 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 updating the streams because I'd changed the title on it. So mm -mm -mm. yeah, let's see. That should be all of them. Save it. Twitch real Did quick here. Have read the book? I mean, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll talk. I mean, it's a, it'll, it'll probably be, I mean, you could stay up, but yeah, I mean, we're just going to talk about the book. It's the second part of, a, of two books. Technically the third part, really the second part of another one. It kind of, it's, it's, it's kind of about like a kind of dystopian future, but like way, like almost where like the future's become almost fantasy. Like it's, it's, it's part of a, a genre they're called the dying earth. Okay. Sounds interesting. If I get too lost in it, then I'll probably, you know, go. But I'm interested to find out. Because, I mean, if I haven't read it and it sounds interesting, then it's just one to add to my list, right? Exactly. Well, like I said, like, so like this one, like Jack Vance. Uh, yeah, he wrote a lot of science fiction and fantasy there. So the, the book called... Kugel the sky it's 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 sometimes called Kugel or Kugel the sky break spatter light Kugel's saga was the name that was originally done by the publisher but Kugel the sky break spatter light was the preferred name of Jack Vance for it but the because he because of course yeah this was still back in the day when yeah the, the publishers would kind of manipulate it I don't think I've ever talked to you, Carlos. Hi. Oh, hi, uh, Tracy. It's Carlos. Um, you know, we follow each other, and we're in the, the gr group, the book club. I've seen you in spaces before, but I don't think I've ever actually said hi. So I have talked to Adrian before. And what is with GTA? What is going on with the GTA, Adrian? Uh, that's, a, that's a damn good question, Tracy. What is going I mean, I mean, Toronto is, uh, I, I don't know, I was just very surprised. Like, I haven't been downtown Toronto in, like, 13 years. And, I mean, I know the area well. And it's just very yeah. different. Um, it's, actually, no. Like, is it 13 years? Let me think. Yeah. Maybe, like, 2015 was the last time I was there. So, not 13 years, but. I mean, it was changing then already <laughs> with, like, the wokeness, but it was still busy. Now there's just, like, there's there's just so many, um, you know, vacancies in terms of, like, retail space and, um, you know, um, office space. And it, it's just not busy downtown. Like, like, that Bay Street area, the financial district... I mean that it used to be bustling. I mean it's still busy, but it's it's just not the same, right? It's. Uh, it, I, Are they trying to implement that um, fifteen-minute city thing? Because Edmonton is all over it, and it just actually angers me quite a bit. So, uh, but everything Edmonton Council does angers me. So. <laughs> so, so I mean, the fifteen-minute city in Toronto, like most people that live downtown Toronto. They already live the 15 minute city, right? Uh, most of them don't have cars. Mm -hmm. You know, there are, there are bikes right. on the street. Actually, that's a new addition that I noticed too. By the city hall, they have these bikes that you can like pay for. You just unlock it um, with like a, yeah, yeah, yeah with like a presto pass type of thing. And that's another thing. It's yeah. like everything is. So I'll be back in a minute, then we can yeah. get started. No, no worries. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so like this this whole presto pass and like 
you basically have this one electronic pass. I, I was thinking about it. People are complaining about digital ID. That essentially is digital ID right there for your public transportation. I mean, these, these Presto yeah. Pass, I think you can even do it like right from your phone through near field communication, like, and you just load up money. I don't have it. Luckily, the Go Train, you can still buy tickets, but you can't buy tickets from the ticket counter, despite the fact that there's a woman actually sitting there doing nothing. Oh my God. They, they used to sell you tickets, <laughs> but now they're like, no, 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 you've yeah. got to go down into the tunnel and you have to buy it from like the vending machine, your paper ticket, or like, you know, you have to load up your Presto from this like machine. But so I said to her, like, so I can't buy tickets here at the counter. She's like, no, no, you have to go to the machine. She's like, I'm only here for info. So I said, so if you're sitting here and you're giving info, why couldn't you just sell a ticket? She's like, nope, sir, that's not the way it is. It's like, it's gone all, um, it's gone all electronic, like all self-serve. Because initially I went in to ask for, they used to print out these little cards, like, a schedule uh, for the like Lakeshore West go train line. Uh, and like, they used to have paper schedules. She's like, no, we don't have it. It's all online. We, we don't print that stuff out anymore. Like, you know, it's, it's just completely done. So yeah, yeah that's bad. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. The, the, so the downtown core is really, I, I would say those people have been living in the 15 minute city uh, for years, pretty much. And and that's the whole thing, though. Like, this dumbass liberal government is catering to those people in the major centers. Yeah. And they think that they can apply that same type of stuff to the rest of the country. It's not going to work. Like, it, it, I don't think yeah, it, it's... Yeah, no, I, I was just very surprised by Toronto... Um, yeah, I, I, I don't really well, like the way it's gone. They were mentioning the ring road, and in Edmonton, they finished the ring road just in time for COVID to hit. And um, so these, these ring roads are, are a major factor, and I don't know what other cities, there was another city talking about a ring road. I'm sorry, Zinc, I know you want to get on with your book club, but um, in Edmonton here, every, every uh, highway that comes into the city, that ring road intersects. So if they want to lock you into the city, they that ring road is essentially does it. And, sorry, sorry uh, ring road. What, what what's that? Is that like a roundabout type of thing, yeah. or is that? Yeah, it's it's called the Hende. Um, it's our uh, the Hende. Hende. It's it's. Um, um, I'll have to go, guys. Sorry, somebody's at the door, and I don't really want to get out. Right. Oh, no, no worries, Tracy. Perfect. Have have a good one, Tracy. Thanks. Bye. So yeah, so I have the book open here to kind of yeah, kind of remember the uh, the order of this. Uh, are you good to go there, Carlo? Or? I remember, I remember the order though. I mean, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, he 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 gets uh, he gets sent all over like back again to you know in in yeah in exactly the same spot and uh, wait, is it the same spot or like around the same it's, area? It's like no, no, it's exactly like it's, ten it's nearly, feet away. He yeah, sees yeah. the other broken. Yeah, he sees the other broken cage, the one he was originally sent in. Oh yeah, yeah, it's true. It's right there. Yeah, because that, that's <laughs> that's how the last one ends, right? Is that he's like, yeah. and, and like so. I mean, we can actually start there because like when he wrote these, right? So like I think Kugel was written something like fifteen years after he wrote the Dying Earth, right? And then this one was written like 15, 20 years after. Now, I think he had written some like kind of side stories and then he mashed them up into this one. I can't remember. But um, so essentially, you know, you didn't get the full book until like 15 years later. So I think in some ways, I think like when he originally ended the previous Kugel, it was obviously like a joke and like maybe he didn't even intend to write the sequel. Right. But then, you know, so Kugel, you know, essentially the character sat there for 15 years. Right. But then, um, of course, yeah, that's where it picks up, right? Is it pretty much the exact same place, but he decides to not go the other, the same direction, right? Since obviously he had uh, made made some enemies along that way, so he tries to take another path home. So I mean, it, and I think yeah. it's, I think I think technically it's the path he originally wanted to take, 
but Firks had a you know disagreed about what was yeah, the most direct yeah, path that, there. That's what happened. It's like Firks just just like uh, send him the like the I mean. Uh, Ferg sent him to, uh, you know, like the most expedient way, but like, uh, yeah, he wanted to go like north. So, yeah. So, I mean, I remember um, he was like, there were these effigies that were floating around and he finds that house where Master Twango is, um, who... Oh, you mean Flutic? Flutic? Flutic. Was it Flutic? Yeah, Flutic. Yeah, Flutic. Right. The mansion, yeah, right? yeah. So, so, yeah. and wait, was Weemish the one that was that was working there for Flutic? Yeah, 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 he was the original, like, and and a uh, Gark and Gook and so, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous. Wait, so what? What do you guys think? Like at, at the beginning, though, at the very beginning, like uh, Weemish is like, no, no, get out of here. Like he 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 turns him down. Like he has to kind of haggle a bit to 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 be uh to be hired. You guys remember this? Like Kugel goes, you know, like he's like, okay, it's it's getting late, it's getting dark, I need to find shelter. And he goes to to the mansion and he he talks to Wimish and Wimish is like, no, dude, like get out of here, like just go to the the inner blue lamps, like we don't have anything for you here. And he has to kind of com- convince Wimish uh, um, about working there. So what do you guys think that is? Like that Wimish kind of, you know, like after he goes in, like he he's kind of welcoming to him, but before he's very really, like. You know, kind of annoyed that to see Google there. Um, I, 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 I like. I don't think he knows who Google is. It's, what, what I found interesting about that is that, um, you know, uh, what was his name, Flutic? He is actually selling those shells to, um, Eu Canoe, in um, oh, what's the name of the place? Um. Master Twango? Uh, yeah. Saskervoy. 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 Yeah, he, he's actually selling those to Eu Canoe. It's like, from that, from that point on, I realized, like, this is going to be a more beneficial journey for Kugel, you know, more or less, right? Like, he's going to face challenges, but this time things are going to go his way much more. I, I don't know if you guys got that impression. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, that's the way it goes. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think where to start with this one. So this one, like, yeah, it's like, because, like, this one, I'd, I'd say, has kind of much more kind of, like, discrete stops along the way, right? Like, it kind of moves through those things. Because, yeah, you, you obviously have, like, the, um, what happens there at, at um, what you call it, the, um, at um, Flutic, right? Because he pretty much that's where he gets the sky sky break spatter light, and I realized well, when I originally had scheduled this room, I called it the skylight spatter break or whatever, right? But a uh, skylight spatter break, right? Because of course, essentially that's what he holds on to throughout the journey, and of course, you know that's what he. Uh... Yeah, I mean, you, you can tell you know how like the, the first what you said, saying that the first one was kind of a joke. Like we, we get the idea, the first one's like a vi- kind of vignettes, but this one, it's you know, it's we we can see he he planned this out right, writing this because it's it's structured and it has like this element that kind of you know like arcs through, through all of the uh, the vignettes, the uh, the sky break right, like it's kind of like a you know like a kind of big big uh, uh, big block for like uh, kind of writing this story over. So that to me just just kind of signaled me like okay, like this guy really planned this one out like instead of like, and it feels that way too, right? Because I mean a lot of things like. Uh, kind of motifs or like you know like kind of like like arc over the, uh, the all the shorts well that's the thing so as, as a whole carlo would you say this one's better than the first one or um i find this one what i said like it's better structure and like yeah. it has it has like a what i said like a lot of things that like you know are, are, are like you know they, they keep consistent and like they keep uh, being brought back uh, and all these motifs all these kind of gimmicky things so in that sense, uh, I don't know. I, I, I find the first one like more, uh, I guess, because of novelty too. Uh, but the first one is more, and, and this one, like, I mean, like we know he's more experienced. Like, I mean, uh, I don't know. They're, they're, they're both they're both different. Uh, uh, this one definitely more more consistent and like it feels like, you know, better planned out. 
the first one I find it a bit funnier though, like what happens to him. Um, but this one too has his moments. Uh, I think they're both good. So, so in in this one, I noticed that Kugel, he seems like he wants to uh, just do more work. Like he, he's willing to do like more manual labor this time around to make his way. Um, like, I mean, he will still enjoy the fruits of his labor or like if something happens to him by chance, you know, he's going to live it up, which is also sort of, you know, what gets him into trouble a lot along the way. It's like, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I, I actually preferred this one. I, I feel like Kugel, like I, I'm more sympathetic to the character throughout this one. Uh, I, I don't know when Zink described Liane the Wayfarer, uh, I I feel like his description of Liane applies more to Kugel, but specifically in this part of the book, the sky break spatter light. Um, you know, I, I, I just, I get the sense that I mean, I'm just much more sympathetic to uh, Kugel and like this journey, right? Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, that's the like that. That was my question, right? And like, I realized when I was trying to just the question is, yeah, like, who was Kugel before we first saw him, right? Who was who would Liane have been had he been given more time, right? That is to say that, you know, it's 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 very you know it kind of makes you wonder about you know, how much of life is just luck of the draw, right? To allow you to be this or that, but I mean. I, there's so I guess we'll go in the order of it, but I because of course this was even the question I asked Carlo last time, which one was the one with the parts with the worms? Because it, it's hard for me to say which one I like more, but the whole wormager yeah, part great. of this one is to me like one of the most brilliant things I agreed. ever read. Agreed, agreed, um, agreed. Like that alone, I think is what kind of puts this one ahead. Yeah, because just just that whole course. But yeah, so I mean to start with like Flutic there though. Um, once again, this goes more with the narration, the actual book. I, I, I noticed that there for the, uh, what was it, the guy who ran Flutic? Um, Mr. Twango? It? Twango. Twang, yeah, Master Twango. If you notice, the, the narrator gave him just the slightest bit of a Scottish accent, right? Or maybe at least it was a Scottish cadence, right? And, of course, uh, Twango is, is, of course, the most, you know, Scrooge, you know, type, like, character, right? Extremely, um, how would you say, my like not miserly i'm trying to think right but he, everything has a cost right with 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 master twango right so like i i noticed that he gave him a very almost very slight scottish accent there which i found slightly funny so but, i um, read it i i never got that um that part of it oh uh, yeah, yeah no if you, if you listen to it like he does he does give twango there kind of that slight scottish accent um but uh, I also I also like a lot that like we we kind of see more of the uh, like the the economy of this world right because I mean like it opens with a with a whole that archaeological operation basically <laughs> I was like oh wow they're, they're so organized right and like you know it's a lot of talk about trade routes and like you know like that they have this this kind of like like we go into the, the trade routes of the of the world which I was like oh that's that's so neat <laughs> I mean like it's all tongue in cheek right and it's, it's so it's so ridiculous it's to the situation but had that kind of world building in there kind of more bottom up than than the usual top down world building I was like uh yeah like I was really into that whenever the first time it, it, yeah I know good so I mean uh just to touch on this because since we're at this part so I mean what what did you guys think of of Kugel when you know he's ordering all of the food and he's talking to Weemish and Gark and Gookin are there. Obviously, he doesn't know that he has to pay that off through work or like you know other means. But and then when he finds out, he's sort of like he just doesn't care. He's like whatever, you know. It's like buying on credit and then like well whatever, you know. It's like you buy on credit and like they cancel your your card or like you know you're gonna default on it. So most people like you know, they just rack up as much debt in things as they can because, like, they know that they're going to default on that credit card debt. So, like, you know, may as well go no, but the I think way, that, right? I think, <laughs> I think at that point he had found the, uh, the stash, uh, like, we mentioned stash of scales 
and that's what he you know he's just like whatever you know like well well, well, no no it was it was just before that wasn't it like like um when when he he first well i mean once again like the the, pretty much like you, you you know there's always a catch right like yeah he walks in there there's this big banquet and yet everybody is like extremely like you know like yeah. you know like weemish is like oh no i just i'm just not super hungry right and so he's like then he's like ordering all this food and stuff and like it's like oh well you know well i'll be the master and i'll change all this stuff and then like it's it's always just like one up and then you're ahead and behind because then he has the stash but then it ends up that the gardener ends up taking his stash later on so then he ends up only slightly ahead but just a few scales and and of course the sky breaks better light there when he leaves right so every, every everybody's always constantly you know, kind of screwing each other over. Like, that's throughout... I mean, it's kind of like the cycle of everything that happens. It's like, everything always is, like, too good to be true, and then somebody one-ups each other, and then you think he's ahead, and then suddenly, you know, there's a hole in his pocket type thing, right? Like, it's it's very... It's In some ways, like I said, it's, it's a very predictable cycle throughout the book, but, of course, it's always... He always finds a way to make it amusing, right? And that's, of course, just the cycle that goes on and on throughout the Kugels, right? Like, he's almost ahead, and he's not, and... So I mean, and I think I think I think this one more than any other part, right? He really teases that 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 sort of aspect out, right? Like it's it's rather obvious that there's a catch, right? Why is nobody else eating this this lavish banquet that's put out, right? So I mean, I mean, there there was a part there where he had hidden, he had buried the skybreak spatter light, um, and then and then they say, you know, oh, it remained back at the garden in Flutic. But it doesn't really say when he went to actually retrieve it. It's like that he I, just... think, I think he goes back yeah. one night to dig it up. Yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, after, I thought it was it's, uh, after he. Uh... And that's when he sees Garkin and Gukin and and um, Twango like in the boat, like diving for it. Right, since he's lost all of his workers, right. Yeah, exactly. But like, like he Trung was working, like Trung was in the muck with them. That's when he sees him. Yeah. No, he he goes back after they they the living day in blue lamps. When he goes to um to a uh, or whatever, like he goes back to he yeah he goes back to to Florida to get it. Actually, I missed it. I missed the first time that I read it, and I, when I read it the first time, I was like, okay, this is when he goes back. Like it's it's not long. It's like two lines or something with it. Well, that's like, I think I don't know if I remembered it either, but I, cause like I did remember though the part, yeah, with 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 Twango in the boat with them, right? That kind of full circle type. So, thing. so wait, so so this is this is what it says here. So it says, Kugel retreated to the dark blue miter bush. He dug down and, using a folded cloth to protect his hand, retrieved the pectoral skybreak spatter light. Then it says Kugel went to take a final survey of the pond. The tub was full. Gark and Gook and two small figures, caked with slime, sat on either end of the skull, um, while Twango heaved at the overhead rope. Kugel watched a moment, then turned and went his way back to Saskarvoy. But then later on, it says the most precious scale in the next chapter, like close to the beginning, it says the most precious scale of all, the pectoral skybreak spatterlight remained hidden back in the garden at Flutic, but Kugel hoped to retain this scale, if only because it was coveted by Iuknu, the laughing magician. So, I mean, in in the one part, it says that he goes to get it, but then right at the beginning of the next chapter, it says that it remained back at the garden at, at Flutic. Like, that... Was it I, like I, a I, I, I feel like that was, a, that was a mistake in the text. So... So that comes like a little bit down uh, chapter two, the Inn of Blue Lamps. And then if you just look at chapter one, um, that's where at, at the end of, of the chapter there, that's where it says Kugel retreated into the dark blue mutter bush. He dug down and using a folded cloth to protect his hand, retrieved the picture. Where, where is that in the second page? Cause I, I don't okay, see so it. go. Um, so uh there's chapter two, the inn of blue lamps. So then just kind of scan up and it's the second last paragraph. It says Kugel retreated to the dark blue miter bush. He dug down and using a folded cloth to protect his hand, retrieved the pectoral skybreak spatter light. 
but but then in in the chapter two or the second part, the Inn of Blue Lamps. If you go about two paragraphs down, it says the most precious skill of all, the pectoral skybreak spatterlight, remained hidden in the back garden at Flutic. Yeah, I, I I feel like that it might just be an oversight on Jack Vance's part that he just made a mistake. So I just kind of like I highlighted it and then I moved on because. I just assume that he's had retrieved this and now he's on his way, right? It might have it might have just kind of been a repeat because actually, if you continue down, then he sees it, and then I'm not sure. I'd have to re- review it. I mean, I just thought that it was an oversight on Jack Vance's part. Like, he, he just missed it, and then um, I just went on as if Kugel has retrieved it, and now he's man- gone on his merry way, right? So, No, I think what he's saying is that he had only a handful of ordinaries. So what he's saying here is that he didn't have, right, he has the ordinaries and the sky breaks better, like, because he'd hidden it. Whereas he'd hoped to have the bigger, oh, okay. the bigger hall. All right, right, right. So that's what he's saying here is that yeah, he didn't have the big hall. Right, he only retained this one because he had hidden it separately. Right. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So yeah, that's all that's going on all there. Right, yeah. yeah. But yeah, and then of course, I mean, kind of what happens in Saskavoy. I mean, there's kind of the amusing thing, right, of like what he does there, and then of course, with um, what's 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 his his um. The guy who's who he's competing with with for the supercargo, right? They do the whole thing at the bar. And then of course, you know, he thinks he wins it, but it turns out that the guy that he kept messing with was the the partner of the uh the uh sold ink guy, and so he ends up not getting the Boonderwall, right? Boonderwall. He uh he they have their little sort of um various competitions, right? That's you know I I find it really funny like the part with the beard like like that I don't know how it's phrased I think it's like you know it's like oh yeah like uh, I saw this this rogue grinning like a wolf you know <laughs> like uh, that part just made me laugh a lot because like the, the lights are off right but they kind of flicker and like Google has his face on the uh, like right you know like on the guy's face and like he gets a little flicker of like Google kind of grinning there cutting the beard like that's a funny image to me. So, yeah, no, exactly. So, sorry, Zinc, were you referring to um, Drofo, the the chief Wormbinger of the Gallant? Well, not yet, not yet. Like I said, the part no, that comes no, before I, that, when, when he's trying, yeah, Bunderval is the guy who's supposed to be the supercargo, but then him, you know, um, oh, right, Kugel okay. wants to be the, su- the supercargo instead, right? So they decide to kind of like have like, various little context contests there, right? The whole time Boondervald knowing that he's getting Kugel to harass this guy who's the other partner of the shipping company there. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the, that whole part there was, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty interesting. Um, <laughs> well, especially the part, I think, of the urinal. That's the best part, I think, of that. All that right? When they're, like, <laughs> trying not to look... Well, and, and and of course they piss the guy off, right? Like as he's trying to like see who ends up peeing first and all that, right? But yeah, so I mean, like it, it was amusing. But no, no, like so yeah, like once we're on the ship though, and the whole na- nature of the wormager, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And of course, Kugel has no idea what the wormager is and all that. But it's who is it? What's what's the name of the master wormager there, right? Uh, yeah, it is. Um, it is. Isn't what? it? Uh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, B- Bunder Bunderval. Oh no, 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 no the master oh, no, worm. Um, sorry, it's um, wait, isn't it Drofo? Yeah, it's Drofo. Drofo. Yeah, yeah, Master yeah. Drofo. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually there was there was one part there that, so I mean, Kugel learned quickly, um, and then, you know, the other competing worminger. Um, Solnik. Yeah, when when Kugel like, you know, Kugel is doing the right thing. They, actually, there was a part that stuck out. I actually let me just find it here. Um, so hang on, let me just. Uh, 
Yeah, okay. So it says here, uh, it, it's when they're talking, when Drofo is talking to Captain uh, Bont, and he's like, yeah, uh, we shall waste the wind. Oh, yeah. At this time, neither enjoys a rating of excellent when he's asking about the Wormingers, Kugel and Lankweiler, uh, said Drofo. Uh, Lankweiler is obtuse and somewhat sluggish. Kugel lacks experience and wastes energy preening in front of the girls. He works to an absolute minimum and detests water with the fervor of hydrophobic cat. His worms appear sound. Uh, Drofo gave his head a disparaging shake. Kugel does the right things for the wrong reasons. Uh, through sloth, he neither overfeeds nor overbaits. His worms suffer little bloat. He despises the work of dealing with Timp and, and Gange uh, so fiercely that he obliterates its first appearance. Like, that, kind of, that part kind of pissed me off. It's like, you know, Kugel is doing the right thing. His worms are thriving. Like, I mean, why does he have to, why does he well, have so to, like, it, this, work, right? I mean, like... Th- this goes that, into that... the whole, why, like I said, like, the whole notion of the Wormager and Drofo. Like, what's funny about that character to me, and like I said, this is why this is the most brilliant part, right? Like, the whole way he gets, like, every time somebody asks him a question, that he gets, like, like this weird wistfulness and how everything centers around the life yeah, of the Wormager, yeah, yeah. right? Like, this sort of, like, weird, like, like, yeah, like, Oh, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, I've tried to figure... Like, it's like, yeah, the guy who, like, becomes, like, wistful and philosophical about, like, his his shitty job, right? Yeah, well, like, yeah, 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 and, yeah. And you see this, you see this, like, the, this pretension, like, where people do a job, and it's like, well, I know so much about this stuff because of my job, right? And it's not actually related to their job, but, like, somehow their job has set them up to, like, view the world in a certain way, right? And, like, it's just, it's, it's, it's hilarious to me, and I'm trying to... But, yeah, but essentially, like, this idea that, like... He, he doesn't have the heart of a wormager, right? Like, you have to be this, like, sort of, like, wistful, like, you know, uh, like, it's like, yeah, like, he, he, he hates the work, and so therefore he does it, you know, excellently well, right? Not because he genuinely loves the worm, right? That's the problem, right? He's not, he's, he's too efficient of it, right? He doesn't really love it, though, right? This is actually, like, something you'll see, like, in a lot of, like, professions like I, I think in every profession right like for some people it's like oh yeah he's good at it, but does he really love it does he does he eat breathe it does he breathe it right like I'm yeah sure I, you but i mean this, this is my it's point like, this is why this part pissed me off like i just fucking hate people like that okay like listen if, if he's doing the right things for the wrong reasons but he's doing the job well who gives a shit you know what i mean he's doing the job well so like why complain about it? You know what I mean? It it I, it, I, it, it, it just bothers me to the nth degree, joke, right? Like I mean, that's a, that's a joke though. It's it's gonna putting up a person with that in, in a kind of caricature, right? Where like there are people like that though. Where like they're kind of you know just just kind of over romantic about about stuff like that, or like they they project like the kind of failure and like okay, they just glorify like that a job. Like I had, I, I mean, sure you guys had it too, right? And a job where like someone's like, oh, okay, you know, like. You know, you, you, you have to, you have to be committed all the way. And like, you know, it's like, no, it's just a job, like whatever. But like, it, I think it's just making fun of that. Um, I, it didn't make me angry. I was just, I just sort of people like that in my life. So I was, I was, I was like, oh, cool. Like, you know, he, he, gets, well, like he I said, like, it, it's just funny. Cause like, I've met these, like, and it just like so over rips on them. Right. Like, it, yeah, it just yeah. like, <laughs> it makes them look like fools. Right. It's like, yeah, like he doesn't love the worm, right? Like, oh, he doesn't love, you know, like whatever. He doesn't eat, breathe, and sleep it, right? Like, that's what you always see, like eat, breathe, sleep, eat, breathe, sleep, uh, whatever their fucking profession is, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like sometimes your profession, like, and especially especially as time goes on, right? Sometimes you're really into it. Sometimes you're not into it, right? Like, I mean, when we were talking about, right, like, I guess it's because you see this with like, you know, especially in something like coding and stuff like that, right? Like. You know, people are like, it's like, oh, well, he does a good job, but does he really love it? Does he keep up on all the latest things and, you know, whatever, right? Like, yeah, I I mean, I, I guess I get the joke, but it's like, to me, this is like part of the problem. It's right. It's like, you know, it, it kind of reminded me of this one thing. I, I think I read it on like Reddit. There was like an AMA with John McAfee. And he said, you know, he said he was he was good enough at like programming, but 
you know, ultimately, like, his real skill was seeing the people that were actually much better than him. And he'd just tell them what he wants and get out of their way and leave them alone and just let him do it. Right. And he said that was like, that was ultimately his main skill. He would just, he could identify that they were good and then stay out of the way. Right. Whereas like, you know, this character here, um, Drofo, you know, it's just like, he's getting the job done. Just, just leave his ass alone. And like, you know, it's working out. Why call well, it? It's also a made right? up like, thing like, that you see. It's these supposed intangibles about why you don't fit in on a job. Right. So like, and it happens in all industries to a certain extent too. Right. I mean, to some extent when, you know, when people come in and say like, you know, like, Oh, why are young kids not wanting to get into trades? It's like, if you've ever seen tradesmen in the way they treat like the new guy, they treat him like total shit, right? I mean, even worse than we do in white collars. Oh, well, you got to earn your stripes. Not really. I mean, there's no reason to be that rude to people. Oh, but somebody did it to me. And it's like, yeah, they got to like make sure you fit in with them and stuff like that. Right. When it's rather unnecessary, but I've even seen it for the white collar, like my, uh, my uncle who I largely suspect died of the jab, but, um, he was talking about, like, he worked for Desjardins and their insurance side, and a lot of his, his um, you know, uh, what do you call it, subordinates were women. And he was telling me one time about, like, oh, I feel sorry for this young guy. He's, like, in his 20s. Because all the women come and say, oh, yeah, no, he does a good job. He's just not really fitting in with the team. Because, of course, he's not sitting there talking about whatever it was, you know, you know sex in the city or whatever, um, and, and, and whatnot, stuff like that, right? He's like, I just feel sorry for him because, like, yeah, he's just being pushed out on this stuff. Because, yeah, a bunch of these old biddies just, you know, just push, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, you don't really mesh with the team. You don't mesh with the team. And that's another kind of bullshitty one. And, and of course, there is some truth, but that, that's usually somebody who's being obtuse. It's just like, yeah, they don't want to hang out. And so it's all these, like, sort of weird things that, you know, they, they just don't like them as a person. So they'll, they'll make up and somehow where this intangible is a core aspect of, of being into this stuff, right? Like if you're not doing this stuff like that they're doing on the weekends, then, then you're obviously not in the know of these things. Right. Or so, like I said, it's just that satire of this sort of pretensions of, you know, of whatever. And then just like the way, yeah, that he gets all philosophical. Cause that's what you see a lot of these times. It's like, because I'm, you know, X, Y, Z, that teaches me this intangible thing. And of course you can, you can relate anything to anything else, right? Like you can relate what you've learned from your job to a wider sphere or vice versa, right? Something you've just learned from life to your job. But some people think it's like a one-to-one, right? So like this whole, like, you know, like when he's telling them, like, you know, you know, like about being, you know, whatever. And of course, like the, the, then you have the, uh, like I said, it's a word I'd only ever heard in Canada, but like the keener, right? So the other, the other wormager there, he's like, oh, well, we should listen to Master Drofo as he, you know, tells us his, 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 you know, secrets and stuff like that, right? And all that. So like, yeah, it's, it's just like, I guess, yeah, pretensions of, 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 yeah, like careers and expertise and all that crap, right? But, well, you know, it's funny. It's like, you, you know how in like some jobs they'll say like, oh, you know, we're all a big family and like, a lot of the people take it to heart. Like ultimately what the management is doing there is like trying to get you do to do something for free. Right. It's like, if you say, you know, we're a big family year and this and that, and like, it's, it's a big community. We're like brothers and sisters, yada, yada, yada. Like they're not doing that for any other reason than to try and get you to do something for free. Right. It's like, Oh, well, can you stay and do this? Like, can you stay and do that? It's like, I mean, that is the entire, like, psychology behind that, right? But, like, I'm saying that's the biggest problem. It's, like, some people don't want the community. They're not there to make friends. They're there to fucking work, okay? And, like, as long as they're doing the job, just leave them alone, you know? It it works out better for everybody. But, like, it's like you're saying, Zinc, it's like, you know when they start bringing these like levying these intangibles on you because like you just don't fit in or because they don't like you as a person it, it's not about being liked as a person everybody's there to do the job right like i mean you know just if if they don't have like a personal life outside of the work i mean that's their problem it's nobody else's right i mean yeah i did this this whole part it just bothers me like 
you know, if he's if he's doing the job, just leave him alone, right? Yeah, no, I mean, well, I mean, there is another side to that, and it's some people who are really, really mediocre at their job, and they just, like, they try to do the bare minimum. It's like, yeah, they're fulfilling it, but, like, they're not, like... So it is It is a bit difficult in that way, but, like... Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely with this. And, of course, what we actually see is that he's like, oh, yeah, he does it, for, but it's, of course, because he wants to hire a relative, right? So it's, it's, it's just nepotism, and it's just because, yeah, he's decided he doesn't like him because the guy isn't the son of a wormager and a wormager... And that the fact that Kugel's so effective at it, even though he's new at it, right, I, I think is also what bothers him. Because that's actually what you often see with these guys is that they, um, and this goes back in the whole apprentice thing, right? The very no notion of apprentice is that you work for a guy and then he teaches you the stuff, but he never wants you to teach it fast enough. It's like, do you really need to be an apprentice for seven years? Or is it just that that's how long they drag it out because, you know, they don't want you to, you know, surpass them and stuff like that so that's the other side of it right is that they're they're slow to give you in, in information and and what uh no so so lead, leading into the the next part that fuscule who is supposed to be kugel's intended replacement and kugel over years that oh yeah yeah Oh, I, I, I love this part, by the and, way. And Kugel and like, plays you know, them off against was, uh, each other. <laughs> I love this part. I, I was talking about it last time we, we talked about the first one, how, like, uh, Vance is so good at, like, you know, kind of creating this this kind of, you know, like, ethnicities, right? In, like, in, in just so little space, though, you know? Like, we have, like, a super short, you know, like, like chapter, right? And, like, he he, he bring, brings these little places to life with, like, kind of their own culture, like, you know, like, their own like like customs and like you know like even like you know you have this imagery but it's it's very peculiar to to that right and like in this place the, the, the women are, are like super horny <laughs> and they're and they're like super aggressive about it and like so men have to wear masks like you know and i was reading this i'm like oh my god this is like this is like a couple of pages you know it's like a 15 pages and you get so much world building like so effective like i yeah i i find it amazing and uh, you know, it, it he does this a lot in in this in Kugel, where like you you travel from town to town and like everything's so different. Like you know, like it's so tangible, and it's so like you know, it's just it's just so like like you know, like ex he expands so much in in so little space. So like I just I just find that amazing. Well, that one in particular, I th he's clearly making a satire of well, essentially Muslim cultures, right? This is the excuse you hear in Muslim cultures, right? Oh, like oh, the women want to wear the masks. It's like yeah. Because they've been raised since the time they were like three years old that if they don't wear the headscarf that they're asking to get raped, right? Like that's literally, and that's what happens to them, right? And I, and I talk to a lot of, you know, ex-Muslim women about this on spaces and stuff like that. And yeah, like that's built into them. So like, I think that's what he's satirizing here, right? Is that whole notion of, yeah. of the overly aggressive men. Yeah, and yeah. Like that. You know, I, I got that. It's it. it, it it, it, it's funny you mentioned that like I, I actually did not um, initially make that connection to like Muslim women there immediately like it's just kind of dawned on me now that you said it um, you know it, it, it kind of reminds me of something that I've referenced often in the past um, you know in my old high school I remember there were Muslim girls that were supposed to wear the headscarf and like all of that but they would actually like come to school, you know, change out of that stuff into like normal jeans and like a top and like stuff like that to fit in with everybody else in the, in like the school, you know, and then change back out of it into like the headscarf and like all that type of stuff for the benefit of their parents when they go home. And like that, I actually think is something that is encouraging because like they were just doing it for their parents' benefit. Ultimately, they wanted to become more Canadian, um, which is a great thing, right? I mean, um, but the thing is, wh what I'm noticing now is they're not doing that anymore, right? It's it's almost like, um, and the only reason that I can think about it is that there are just more and more Muslims coming to the country. So there's... I'm pretty sure it's because yeah, one of the girls is narking 
Oh, you think it, you think that's it? Why well, I, I think it's that they just have it's another... that it might even be that the liberal teachers are in on it too. It's like, oh well, if your parent wants that, like it's it's weird, right? The t- the teachers will lie. Like that's what's weird about all this stuff, right? Is that the same teachers trying to push this gender crap at the same time push the Muslim crap, right? Even though, of course, the Muslims are out there hanging people and for being gay. But it, right. it's, it's all because of their perception of who's oppressed, right? So I wouldn't be surprised if it, the same teacher who's telling kids like, oh, yeah, if you want to be gender different in my room, in, in my class, I'll hide it from your parents. But then the one person comes in with a head, you know, that they should, they should they know are Muslim and they're not wearing the headscarf. I wouldn't be yeah, surprised it, if they narc it, on them to their also, parents. Like that's how it's also this it stupid narrative, like, you know, anti-white, anti-Canadian, anti-American, right? Like before, you know, like you, you came here, like my family came here and like, you wanted to to be part of like you know like you would you would leave your country behind whatever, but now now they changed the message right. It's like okay no that's bad like if you now just yeah. want now like aspiring to 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 have different values is wrong right like you you just you just want to be a white person or something right that's a stupid message that they have now this narrative so I think that's part of it too. But like before it was just natural right for you to to want to like uh, you know like embody the, the the country you you moved to right. But now it's like no no no, no that's wrong like you you're just being racist or whatever. So, but well, what I was going to say was like, I think I think what was different then was like, you know, the Muslim girls they really were the minority, right? So like, when you're the minority, you, you were going to try harder to actually fit in with everybody else, especially at like the teenage years, right? Like you want to fit in, but now it's like because there's so many of them here. Like I mean, I've passed by that same high school. And, like, there are, you know, many headscarves and, like, you know, I would say that there's probably, like, more Muslim and, like, brown and, like, Chinese kids than there are white or even black, really. Like, I mean, to be perfectly honest with you right now. So it's, like, there's no real, like, um, you know, desire to go against that to fit in because at this point they're sort of, like, the majority and not the minority does that make sense like well this was something that me and d were talking about a while back about the schools and all that it used to be aspirational right usually the 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 popular kids in the school right were the ones who were the best at something right they were you know the most academically or athletically best right and so for better or for worse right those were the kids at the top and and everything else but people aspire to do that now with all of this 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 oppression and, and wokeism right the teachers now reinforce that it's actually you know that everybody should walk on eggshells around the, the losers right the disabled kids and all that stuff and of course you should see you know people with actual problems like you shouldn't pick on them but it, it's gone fully the other way where now people want to act disabled one because it takes no effort and two you get more oppression points and so you get more attention right so before you these kids used to aspire to something higher, but now it's a race to the bottom, right? You want to be the biggest loser and everything else like that, right? So right. you want to be more, you know, you, you so you want to be more, yeah, like oppressed and everything else, right? So the headscarf gives you a personality without actually having to be good at anything, right? You don't have to, you know, do your makeup in the morning and look good and, you know, excel at, at athletics or sports anymore, right? Now you can just wear your 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 head diaper and and you know be you know have a chip on your shoulder every time you inter- encounter yeah, anybody exactly. right exactly exactly uh, i i mean i i i don't think that they were doing it to like you know aspire to like what the cool kids were doing i think they were just doing it to fit in and i mean this is the 90s right like like mid to late 90s so well that that's what i'm saying that you used to fit in by aspire right it, it, it's always to fit in right? right but now the whole fit in is is a race to the bottom the fit in before used to be a race to the top right yeah, like yeah, you yeah, want yeah. to look attractive you want to be exceptional at something now you want to be you know more of a an, an of, of an oppressed loser right so now it's a race to the bottom right 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 but what well, well, I, I i think it's just numbers right like there's just much more of them now and uh, the, the standard I, is, I, 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 you know, Adrian, Adrian, yeah. Adrian, like my high school was, was pretty mixed. You know, we have like, like what you're describing, like we had it back then when I was in high school. And it, it wasn't the case though. Like, I mean, it, we, we had the same thing going on where like, you know, like, like, especially like, you know, like I just remember people coming from, let's say from India, right? Like, uh, 
like some of the guys just just like they kind of they they they, they kind of more like like popular guys who just do, like took off their turban and like got like fancy haircuts and like you know kind of dyed their hair and it, I, I think it's just it's more what 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 think it's, it's alluding to or like now it's just it's this victim mentality and like the fact that you like your your personality can be weak right like it, you don't have to have a strong personality so it's easy to like you know like just kind of mask it through like like whatever that like default thing is like okay well like I can just default to to being this right and like it's it's just easy to play the victim that way and what I'm telling you by experience like my high school high school was so mixed and still though I mean we had and like even some of the girls and like but I just remember mostly the, the guys who came from India like they just they would just you know like take take off their turbans and all that and like in a, in, a, in a year time like they would be like you know, like super, you know, like kind of, you know, like North American. And it was like, oh, wow. Like even if they would kind of change their accent and all this. And like, yeah, my high school, like there was very few white people. Uh, I don't think it's it's a matter of number. It, it, um, of numbers. It's more of this stupid woke, you know, like corrosive uh, philosophy going on. Right. It, it, well, I mean, I mean, I'm saying my high school was like, I, w- I would say it was like, probably like 60 percent white kids like a small percentage of black indian well it even comes down to to be quite honest it's it's even who describes themselves as white right right right? so if you go back 30 years ago right like a lot of arabs indians uh persian uh you know iranians um even you know latins a lot of them were very specific it's like yeah i'm latin or i'm indian but i'm white indian right and now these people you know either jo- jokingly or seriously like it's like i'm brown right it's like eh, yeah you know yeah, yeah. 40 years ago you would have been calling yourself white right let's like and and you're still like i mean yeah you're not as white as as some scotsman maybe but like you know like this 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 whole idea of what is white anymore right like a white latino versus a brown latino right like it's it's more people like i said i mean there's plenty of people from india like uh what is it uh well, I mean, that's the thing. I've met pr- plenty of Indians who are like white, white, white. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, like, for sure. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, these days, like, it's like, the, 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 like e- even the non-woke ones, like, just as a joke, will call themselves brown. It's like, yeah, oh, you're not really brown. Well, I mean, I mean, their mentality is not brown, right? Especially, like, first-generation immigrants are, like, generally, like, I mean, it used to be, I, I don't know if it's still the case now because of, like, you know, the, all this, like, you need to be proud of your roots and stuff like that. But, like, most of them had the mentality of the white kids, like Canadian kids, right? So I mean, you know, like I just like I, I don't think, I, I don't know when that was associated with being white because like I mean, let's say in my school, like we just had a like, kind of Canadian mentality and like it didn't matter like our skin color. It was more like the kind of culture you consume, like your worldview, you know, like your kind of Yeah, like, I agree. Your values, like you know, like how much we're attached to like let's say here, right? To like me like I I, I kind of grew up in Montreal and I, I love my city and I you know like I, I knew all the hip parts and like you know like I knew like the the authors from Montreal even really young right? like I was really tied to the culture right and like versus let's say like my sister right like w- w- same family right but she couldn't give a single fuck about like Montreal and like you know like she was more she did more Latino since the beginning right and like we didn't listen to the same music we didn't you know like like we didn't uh, you know like had the same kind of you know like like uh, role models when it came to like you know like uh, pop culture and all that so right there you know like in, my, in having me a twin sister right but you could say oh well like I was wider than, than she was and I think it's it's more that like the way you connect to like you know like your culture and like the way you consume like the kind of culture you consume right so and and that the, the mentality that they, 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 they kind of walk it it's kind of like you know like in it's like oh no no like you can be attached to like you know like your culture like the things that 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 made your country your country that's racist that's wrong right so it's that whole thing yeah i i mean i remember in the 90s there was like a whole bunch of like the white dudes that were really into hip hop you know and they were like in a sense they kind of like you know thought they were black like to a certain degree yeah, but, like, but like I saw, wiggers. I, I, yeah, yeah, wait, yeah, wiggers. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like I mean, you know, then then I actually saw this one. Like, I think it was Karis one. He was like talking at like University of North Carolina or something, and he said something. He was like, he's like, you know what? Like, you know, people say Eminem thinks he's black, 
And he's like, in a lot of ways, he is. And they said, let me really drop a bomb on you. You know, like, I don't think, am I really black, right? Like, you know what I mean? And it's like, what I got from that, it's more about, like, your mentality, right? Than, like, the actual skin color, right? Like, it doesn't... Remember remember this rapper, Max Chan? He has this song called Informer. It was, like, a baking in the 90s. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was that Snow? Yeah, Snow, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Snow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like he said the same thing though. It's like, well, like, you know, like uh it's like and he he uh, he was saying like it doesn't matter, like your skin is just like, you know, like like you know, like, like the culture and like he he's right. It like it, it it's okay to like, you know, like like you know, like it's be attached to a type of culture. Like uh and I feel like back then, like you know, like you you could do that and like you know like you you could just em- embrace a culture without ha- having it being like something racist. I mean like we we know the whole agenda behind all of this, right? But like, yeah. Um, but what I, what I was gonna say, I disagree with you. With you, Adrian, like I don't think it's a matter of okay, this now more, more brand people. It's really more the mentality that like what what more what Sink is saying, like oh no no now you have to like reject it. Like it's the the you know like the the moral thing is like oh no you have to reject. You know, like like anything that's that's it doesn't come from from the culture that that's you know like mirrors your skin or whatever. Right, like so. So I mean, just to like kind of come back on my point about the fact that there's more. So I mean, in Toronto, there are areas where like, like especially like Chinatown stuff like that. Like all the signs are in Chinese. I mean, a lot of the people that are there, you know they don't even speak English and they're in the country right now. Of course, maybe their kids, um, they will speak both English and Chinese and like they help them out and they translate. But like you you get a situation where you have like so many people of the same ethnicity, they're speaking their language. They have no interest in learning the language, you know, of the country, like English or French, right? Like, I mean, I, I don't know. To me, that represents a bit of a problem, um, you know. And but that only, can only happen like when you have enough people that come in. Like like it's sort of a numbers thing, right? It sort of allows them to have like this, you know, parallel system, you know, within the country. Like it's like a country within a country, right? So. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't agree with that, right? But I mean, I, I guess my point is, if you go to, you know, Iraq or Iran or India, and you go up to a, a fairly pale, you know, lighter skinned person from there, like I said, it's not going to be as light as an Irishman. But if you go to a lighter skinned person, you ask them, you know, are you white or brown? They're going to tell you they're white, right? Right, right, yeah. And then, of course, they come here, and then their kids, a generation later, right? You know, it's, yeah, the second generation thing where, like, then they want to, like, feel like, oh, well, I don't fit in. And they don't want to try to fit in. So then they identify as the brown kid. Right? Yeah, okay. I, I see what it's you're like, saying. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, That's yeah. what I'm talking about is, it, is it's this rerun line. Before, now, of course, before it was because, you know, they saw, you know, in that culture, they were the white, you know, or whatever. And and now, of course, and, and it's, it's especially because, like I said, I've studied Chinese and Japanese. And the one thing to know about the Chinese, the Japanese, and the Koreans is they're not super fond of each other, right? And so, you know, people who are new immigrants to the United States or Canada, right, who are Chinese, Japanese, Korean, they, they don't identify as Asian, right? They're Chinese, Japanese, or Korean, right? They're yeah, not yeah. Asian. But second, third generation of these kids, right, suddenly they're just, they're Asian. Right now they can tell you which Asian they are, but then they identify as Asian, right? And then, and then they, they go and they hang out with each other, even though, you know, their parents, you know, hate their eth- their their friends ethnicity and all that stuff right because now that's the way they've decided to kind of label themselves as just as asian right they're just asian but, but i mean i thought asian was sort of like the politically correct term that like white people could use so that they don't misidentify you know which type of you know oriental they're referring well, but to that's what right? i'm saying i'm saying that 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 now that that's what they do right so they they join like the asian american association right they're not japanese american right, they're right. they're asian american right whereas if you talk to japanese and you talk to koreans you know they would not identify together right 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 for sure um yeah 
And so it's, it's just, yeah, it's, it's just a sort of made up illusion, I guess. Uh, I just want to go back to the story and like, uh, yeah, again, just really, really like drive that point. I, I'm really like, I'm always mind blown by how, how well, you know, like uh, Vance kind of creates these fantastic ethnologies and like, you know, like every, every little town they have like kind of, you know, like they kind of, they have their own sartorial, you know, like the, the things that marital, you know, like in this one, like, you know, like the, the, the men like marry a certain way. <laughs> That, like in here, like the, the economy is kind of based on the worms, right? The, the architecture is it's weird. They have like all these kind of like like superstitions, you know, like like in the culture. It's just a small town, and like when you go into 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 the dine into Vance's diner, it's like every village has like a lot of this, right? And it's so it, it's like in in twenty pages you get all of this. Like to me, it's such an achievement though in in world building. Like I. I never seen this in any fantasy that I've read, and I, I just find it so well done. Like it's just so admirable that he can pack so much and like so efficiently into into so little and make it funny and make it kind of relevant and, and tie the protagonist to all of that. Like that is just incredible to me. Well, like I said, I mean, yeah, simultaneously he one he's satirizing those cultures where like yeah, like the, this overly aggressive male, and that's why the women have to cover themselves. But then, two, that's what allows wait, wait, is that, this is that sort of, you know, comedy of errors. Isn't that the opposite, but, though? It's like the women are really aggressive in, in, in Laos. Well, that's what I'm saying. He's, he's satirizing, oh, yeah, satirizing that. Yeah, yeah. The, the actual cultures that yeah, we were talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, Especially. Sure. So he's satirizing them, but then because of that satire, that's what allows this comedy of, of, of manners, right, to, that, that happens, right? Because Kugel can then go under undercover with all this stuff, and nobody knows who he is. Which is what we saw. I remember way, way back when the Afghan invasion happened, there was like a lot of these um, Western, um, what do you call it, Western uh, journalists, the way they snuck into Afghanistan during all that stuff was they would put on the burqa, right? And then sneak in, right? And of course, nobody questioned them, right? Why? Because of course, you know, they were with their husband who didn't speak, right? And so they weren't allowed to speak. So you wouldn't even hear their voice. And that's what allowed them to kind of sneak into these countries. So, I mean, what did you guys think of the part when Kugel's uh, scheme of, like, playing them off against each other, you know, it, it, it's finally exposed. And then, like, you know, he hops on the ship and, like, he prepares it and he sails away oh, with, wait, like... No, but, but the, the whole scam <laughs> before, though, that, you know, he, he, he impersonates Fuskill, then he impersonates, like, a Sol, Solnik, right? And, they, and he, he just tricks, like, he kind of cross tricks, you know, like... Like everyone, that's that's so brilliant. Like as a writing thing, like I'm like, oh wow, this is this is really fun. Like, cause he he kind of crosses everyone at the same time, right? Like it's kind of master little master plan uh, in the island. Um, that's really funny, and then get then he, he gets a, a, a Sol Dink like to to go like into this like that the kind of fiercest woman in in in, in the in the on the island, and and he he kind of gets raped in there or something. <laughs> like he walks out of there like. You know, like just walking, walking like all, all, all like crooked and stuff. Like that's pretty funny. Like, like I think she was like an escort, wasn't she? Like, what well, no, if she was just looking for a man, and they would look for a man by putting out this thing the of sign. the food they were cooking or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah putting on the sign, and like, it's it, it's 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 like a, it's like a, it's like cold, right? For whenever they're like, like fertile or whatever, like like fecund, and like they just want a man to go in, but like they don't know, right? They don't know the the customs of the island, so. Google uses it, right? He just tricks uh, uh, Soldink into into thinking he, he can he can eat some of the shrimp or whatever the the, the krill, sorry, the krill that they they catch, and he actually thinks that's true, but he doesn't know it's like it's like a double speak for like okay, no, like you know, I'm 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 willing to you know like I think I think he maybe thought that, but of course he specifically asked Google for who was the most you know comely. Oh, you're right, you're right. So yeah, I, I can't Google forgot. Google sends him to like essentially like a, a she bear. Oh, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I forgot. I forgot. Yeah, no, because he, he, he doesn't want uh he doesn't want anyone to know that that he's going to, you know, like kinda like to, to go to whore around. Yeah, yeah. Uh and, and and he's like, oh yeah, like find me like a really commonly, you know, like a, a very feminine girl. And he's like, yeah, should I get you? And yeah, he 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 sends him to a she bear. Yeah, like they 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 kind of fiercest woman on the island. I think the other satire here, and it's one I often talk about in spaces, is how people are so willing to take the bad faith, right, to assume the worst, right? So, like, you know, when all this stuff happens, they immediately assume it was the other person. And then the moment it starts to break, it's like, well, now that you mention it, like, 
yeah, he was a lot, you know, like he, his voice did sound weird. He was really like, you know, they just they're automatically they're they're more than happy to be offended. Right. It's something I often talk about in spaces. Right. It's like, why are you talking over me or oh, why did you drop me or why did you block me? Right. These people, it's like, you know, it's like, well, it's just the technology. Right. But people immediately come in and use the most you have to assume the most bad faith thing. Right. That I'm purposely talking over you because I'm wanting to be rude. Right. Not that there's something wrong with the technology. Right. The people automatically assume the bad, the, the, the worst case scenario in, in every interaction. Yeah, so, so sort of building on that, um, I mean, in this instance, like, Kugel is, like, I guess, I guess it could be argued he's not really acting in bad faith when he steals the ship and, like, you know, tries to guide it. Back. Oh, no, no, no. What I'm saying, I'm saying that, like, when, when, when they get together and they're all mad at each other, you know, because of all the stuff Kugel did, they're willing to ignore all the evidence of, that this was probably not the guy they were dealing with, right? They immediately assumed that they'd been purposely offended. And then as they start to say, say their things like, well, now that you mention it, I did find it a little strange that this, oh yeah, no, I couldn't imagine why this is like, and they're like, oh, well, I guess it was, you know I mean? Like once they thought about it for five seconds, they were able to realize, oh yeah, they'd been tricked. But the reason they were able to be tricked was because they were so willing to take the fact that they'd been offended, right? That the one guy, it's like, you know, like, oh, fine, I'm going to charge you five thousand dollars for it that way. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. This guy is purposely, <laughs> you know, purposely like, you know, trying to piss them off, and they just take it like as normal that this person would be so offensive to them, right? And so that th- th- their their willingness to believe the worst, right, is is um, what 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 undoes them, right? Rather than thinking about it skeptically for five seconds. I mean, is that really what undoes them, though? Like, I mean, you know, Kugel kind of becomes a lightning rod because w- once they realize that they're deceived, like, every everything, like, you know, it's like, oh, it was Kugel. Well, of course it was Kugel, right? It's like, I mean... I, I mean, well, that's what I'm saying. They wanted to be offended, right? Because they wanted to be offended, they were willing to re- believe that this was this person that they were t- supposed to deal with and not just some rando taking advantage of the situation, right? Their willingness, right? Like, I guess this is what I'm trying to get at, and this is what this story kind of makes me think of, is I know far too many people who are willing to, like, be offended, right? Like, like, well, I mean, once again, what we're seeing these days, but even just in my personal life and even before all this stuff, right? Like, people are over-eager to take something in the worst possible way, right, without thinking about it for five seconds, right? It's it, it, Well, it comes back to my da- damn picture here, right? Everybody's like, oh, what is that? And there are people, some people do it like as a stupid way to get attention. It's like, oh, well, what is that? I don't know what it looks like. But some people actually honestly believe that I have put a picture of a penis in my profile and been able to maintain it for almost a year, right? And it's like, okay. And it's like, well, it might have been. It's like, that's fine. I don't want anybody that stupid following me because it takes five seconds of critical thinking to think, okay, he's got a picture there and he's maintained it there and he's not been reported then uh, how long will that picture last there, right? With 3,000 followers, how long will a picture of a penis last in a profile? Not very long is the answer, but they don't get over that. It's like, oh, well, it's, it looks whatever. It's like, yeah, exactly. It looks like something. That's what makes it funny, right? And so, you know, it's just a damn tree or whatever. Some people think it's a yam or a, a gooey it, duck, it, which is like a I really long sort of I thought it was a termite clam. mound, to be honest with you, so... Yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's all sorts of things, but yeah, it's just a suspicious-looking object, right? But there's some people who, like, they, they just want to take the worst case, and it's like, well, that's so offensive. And it's like, well, he knows what he's doing. He's like, exactly, I know what I'm doing. I'm putting a picture of a tree that looks like a penis, and it's funny. That's what makes it funny, because it's not actually an offensive thing. It's a tree, but but there's some people who, like, that's that's how retarded they are, right? It's that they just take the worst case, and, and they just want to, they immediately want to be offended, right? And I'm perp- perfectly happy offending those people because I want nothing to do with them. They're too stupid and they're not worth they're not worth a fucking cent of time, right? There's there's no coming around with them because there's there, there's something just fundamentally wrong with them, and they're always going to be stupid and they're ne- they're never going to get any better, right? Because they want to be stupid. They actually want to be stupid. So, but then even even normal people, they just seem to like kind of want like, and it's something you see on spaces all the time, right? People wanting to assume the absolute worst thing why wouldn't you let me speak or why didn't you give me a microphone i don't know maybe your phone's a piece of shit and nobody can accept you i don't know 
figure it well, out. I, I was thinking like he just plays with their egos, and that's what what happens when like they actually get into this kind of fist fight, right? And like before they even admit that they were tricked, they were willing to to you know like like get into a fight. So it's just I, I love this part for that though. Like in in the end, he's really like using their egos to you know to trick them and like you know, exactly. Right? Yeah. And it's what you're saying, saying like I, I see this everywhere. Like I mean, especially on social media, where like you know, like let's say the latest example, right? Like some guy like on, on on discord right he he had asked me to read something he wrote and uh, i just told him oh no like like you know i just because he, he knows that i studied uh literature right so he asked me to to read something he he wrote but it's and i told him no it's it's just i, I didn't study this like i can i can you know like i can maybe you know, if it was something else like you know like a different type of like you know like like a, a literature i could i could read it or like give you a technical review whatever and this guy got really offended, like, without even reading what I just said. And he's like, oh, well, fine. Like, you know, it's like, you don't have to be condescending. And I'm like, no, like, did you read what I just said? It's like their ego, like, the, people's ego is like, you know, just coming at you all the time. And like, I feel like that's under the, the kind of front of their brain, the top of their brain, like, constantly, right? Like, where like, no one's taking one one breath, you know, like, before, you know, like, analyzing, info, like, communication information, right? It's like, oh, no, it's like their ego is just jumping out at everything. And it's... I don't know if it's it's the way you know like like technology or like you know like the way we're being manipulated by like you know like everything, but like it's crazy that I'm 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 I find myself less and less kind of interacting with people in 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 you know like kind of deeper levels because like I'm like I I I can't take this you know it's like it's really annoying and like like you said think like oh you know I'm not gonna waste my time like I'm at a point where like you know when something like this happens like yeah you know like I, I i wasted two seconds of my energy like in you like bye you know like you're out of my life so yeah so well it's like they want you to convince them it's like oh no that's not what i meant like yeah no immediately i become like nope you're a fucking idiot go away it's a penis yep and there's nothing you can do about it go so away. so i mean to, to bring it back to the story like i mean Oh, when they when they find out that they're deceived by Kugel, like I mean, what, what what's okay? Like I mean, Kugel is doing things to like, you know, elevate his position and like get what he wants. But but at the same time, it's like, what are they actually upset about? Is it the fact that they've been tricked, or is it the fact that you know they've been tricked by Kugel, somebody that they think is lesser, right? Well, somebody that they were actually trying to screw over, right? They were actually trying to screw over right. Google, right? He was doing the job and everything else, but they're like, "Oh, well, we'll just swap him out here." And yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. The, remember, like they, they were gonna maroon him in the end, and and even right. uh, at right, the, yeah. it's like, "Oh shit!" Like that's that's pretty bad. And, and the cop said, "No, no, no, it's not so bad." You know, like they, they had krill and they have they have some good food here, but like you know, <laughs> he, he trying to convince himself, but like. It's, it, it was always like a really horrible thing like to to leave him even stranded there so yeah i think that too right like it, that too kind of playing with their ego as well right it's like okay this person who like you know it's like at the, at, at the bottom of you know like our, our our you know like priority like he, he's the one like you know like kind of staying on top so i guess yeah the irony of that yeah yeah i i mean so i mean so, so just if we kind of move along in the story, so Kugel steals the boat. He has Soldink's wife and daughters on board, um, and he like he basically thinks that they're capitulating to his demands uh, to keep the like, boat going. I, um, I have to say, I have to say, <laughs> I, I don't like this part a, a because. Uh, you know, I, I feel like I, this, and this is why I, I'm going to argue here with that, with saying that like Kugel and and Liane are definitely the same person. Though I feel like Liane would have grabbed that woman and, and like just just thrown her to to swim with the sharks. Like you know, the, like the second time she she got the light out. Like I get he was kind of like you know like groping like the the, the daughters whatever, and that was all a, a plan to like like keep him busy. But like Liane would would have just completely either like you know like like kick the woman in, in, into the water or like smash her head with like uh, you know like a her his fist or something like Kugel is way too forgiving and I feel like what I said Liane would just Liane would just kill someone in this situation whereas Kugel is like no nah, no nah, like you know well like, here 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 it feels like it's the opposite right Kugel refuses to f- 
believe that they're tricking him and that's his undoing exactly. here, right? Well, yeah, and yeah. that's even what they yeah, point yeah. out. I, I, sure. think, though, I mean, I, I think the implication is he, he's just getting like, you know, he's just, he just, you know, like, like a Frolic King down there in the cabin with the, with the, with the, with the daughters and like, you know, like they keep him busy. He's really into it. So, I mean, I guess to me, it's just more that though. Like, you know, he's thinking with his dick here. Well, well, that's what I mean, but he wants to think that he, you know, he's not being skeptical enough now himself, right? He thinks he's pulled one over on them and that they're doing everything, but he's ignoring the obvious, you know, evidence that the worms are so worn out and everything yeah, else, yeah. right? She keeps changing the direction back to north. He wants to go south. I mean, you know, he he takes, like, the stateroom and, like, you know, th- th- this comes back to my previous comment. You know, Kugel, he wants to live it up when there's luxury around. And I think that's more of his downfall. He's, um, you know, he gets a bit too complacent some of the time. It's like, while he's out there with these three well, women. He can, he can be scrappy when he needs to be, but the moment he doesn't need to be, he gets too arrogant, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Definitely. Like, when his back is against the wall, then, yeah, he can be super yeah. clever. But then the moment he's, he's his, like, if he, if he doesn't fear that immediate feel that immediate threat he always gets like super arrogant and and lazy and whatnot yeah well, he, he gets complacent yeah, to, it just gets consistent to the whole like since the first one though as soon as he gets some like you know like like he, he gets some comfort he gets super complacent well, well it, it's like he wants the finer things in life he believes he deserves the finer things in life he's willing to work and and that's something that we really see in this um, Kugel the Skybreak Spatterlight that we simply don't see in the first one. Uh, what was it called? The first one, it was um, Eyes of the Overworld. Yeah, of the overworld. Um, you know, in, in this one, we see like Kugel is willing to do honest work. Um, you know, I don't know if well, this sort of this segues into argument. the next like, part, I, I, right? I, I, but... I don't think I don't think I don't think Liane would have done honest work. Like I don't think so. Yeah, I, think I, he I would agree just, with like, you, Carlo. Like stop, stop his way to the top. N- not that he doesn't deserve it in this world. Not that he's you know like like Liane can can make it to the top. But I'm just saying, like I do not see Liane in any you know like in any way working honestly, actually honestly, right? Or like let's say you know like like. Well, like I said, that's how that's how he made Kugel more endearing. Because if anything, I would say that Liane, except for getting tricked in a, in a very specific way there, right, his trajectory was much more straight, right? Whereas Kugel's trajectory was much more weaving, right? He is, he can be very, very clever when he really needs to be, but most of the time he's kind of a, a half-wit screw-up, right? Like he's he's just... And so that's, of course, Liane was, of course, you know, on the trajectory, right? He was faking it till he make, made it, right? Like that was sort of the difference with Liane, right? And that's what what makes Kugel more charming is that he is a bit more of a fool, right? Consistently. Because, of course, Liane gets it in the end, but... So, um, are, are, you, are you guys... Um, do, you, do you want to move on to the next part where he abandons ship and, you know, connects with Nesbitt? This is the caravan, right? No, it's no, it's no, the, no, no. The columns. It's the columns. Yeah, the columns. The yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the columns. The columns. For some reason, I always forget about. I think it's and 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 Carla would understand this. For some reason, the columns almost make me think more of um, oh, what is it, Gene Wolfe? The uh, oh my god. Like for some reason, I, I I always think the columns are not Kugel. I think it's it's the um, yeah the, uh, the the Gene Wolfe book the the. What, what, what's the name of them? The the, the the something of the new sun, whatever those books are. Yeah. There's there's something there's something very yeah, now of course it's it's more it's absurd, seven, right? Like. Yeah, yeah, but there's something. Yeah, there's there, there's there's something more. Obviously, because they're more absurd. Obviously, it is Kugel. But I think at the same time, it's 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 much more. Yeah, I don't know. There's something just really dark about this part. I guess you thought this part was dark. I, 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 I didn't. I don't know read if it's it dark. dark. It's I, just I it's it in, it's much more. I, it's much more, I guess, reserved, right? That's the thing is that it's not quite as, it's it's absurd, but it's a much more reser- reserved absurdity, I guess. So, I, so guess. I mean, I I read it as you know the men that sit on the columns all day and like 
the wives are they complain you know if if the one husband has a higher column than the other husband it's sort of like that's that's their social station in life like that's ultimately what vance is trying to say here you know it's like you know the 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 better off like husband will sit on the column will sit on the on a higher perch and then like all of the other wives they they have to like extend that uh the perch higher all day and that's how in tustvold they measure social status right it's like a keeping up with the joneses type of thing yeah. yeah, you know, absolutely. And that's what's brilliant about this. And even more so, obviously, it doesn't exist anymore, but it was for for Vance's generation, right? That classic 50s, 40s, 50s, 60s generation. And then, of course, it still exists to some extent. You'll find this in um, in Asian cultures, right? Like, yeah, so like, you know, the kind of overbearing Asian wife kind of, um, uh, what do you call it, um, cliche there, where they're jockeying for their husband's position, right? Yeah, and it... <laughs> like it's it's the classic thing. Like you'll see it like in the Flintstones, right? Like you know, well, not so much the Flintstones because it's like, but like you know, like where like oh well, like I'm I'm having my boss over for dinner, right? And so the wife is doing everything to like impress the boss, right? Because yeah, she she lives vicariously through you, you know her husband's status, right? Well, that's the thing. I think it's the satire of the fifties there, right? Because the husband just comes home, sits down, and just ignores his family, right? And so for the wife, right, she takes care of all those things. He's almost helpless. But um, the important thing is what he's doing during the day, right? His day job is what elevates yeah. her. And she lives vicariously through that. And it's even, what is it, keeping up with appearances, yeah, right, which was a yeah, British yeah. show. Right, like the husband, I think I, th- I think the husband's like a, a garbage man and not like the sanitation engineer we think of these days, right, who's making a ton of money. But like just like a, something very kind of like blue collar like that. Highest UK, right? Yeah, yeah. Mrs. Yeah, bucket, when it's exactly. bucket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, like, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a, a kind of a satire of that kind of classic suburban housewife, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, this part really was brilliant. Um, again, though, when uh, Kugel connects with Nisbet, um, you know, again, he's he's willing to work with him, you know, to help him out. Um, he's willing to do work, but then Kugel, like, you know, because he's so clever, the way that they devise the way to, you know, lower each of the poles by one and the men don't notice. And then they're stockpiling them, but until they can actually like make more poles to like extend it higher. So they're actually like selling poles that they had already bought back to them. Um. <laughs> well, because of course this is a satire that it's not actually how close the men are to the sun; it's their relative position that they actually exactly, care about, yeah. right? That so long as that he's doing better, and of course this is you know the problem with people, right? It's not that they actually want to excel; they just want to excel more. And of course, this is where you get into communism and and everything else we're seeing now, right? Is that like, it's just that like the jealousy, right? It, it has nothing to do with whether or not they actually need another one. It's just that oh, so and so has another one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it, it, this was a this was a very interesting part. Um, you know, this is the same part where he gets the boots, and he and depending on how hard he kicks an object, it will float into the air. Um, it was the boots, right? It it wasn't the fact. Like, I think Kugel thought like he. he it was the balm. It was the balm on the boots. The balm think, right? on the berries. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah, right. Because right. they because they go and collect the berries. That's right. I I forgot about that part. Yeah. Well, no, so this is what's funny. Like you guys have probably seen me playing it in there. Um, it's a it's a book by a a, guy, a Canadian guy from BC named Wade Davis, and he was one of the first ones to go there to Haiti and try to research what it exactly is that makes zombies, right? And of course, people, you know, like there's this powder, and of course, the conclusion he comes to. More or less. And this is even what I'd heard before I read this book, probably like as a summary of his stuff, because he was the guy did that. Um, that it wasn't just the, the substance they did, but it was because the people believed they were zombies, right? Now, of course, that's slightly different, but right, like where people think it's something, you know, in this case, Kugel initially thinks it's the boots that have this power, but it's actually the balm, right? Where people, 
and this is what you see with traditional medicines. It's like, oh yeah, they do all this stuff, but it turns out they had, you know, willow bark in there, which was actually aspirin. And that's actually what was, was doing all of it. Right. So this is what you see with these sort of like traditional medicine. Right. And of course, this is where like, you know, it's like, oh, well, traditional forms of knowledge have value. It's like, yeah, because through trial and error, they found something that works, but they haven't truly examined what aspect of it is that works. Right. And, and narrowed it down for that repeatability. It's like, oh, well, why did the concoction work this time and not this time? It's like, well, because you forgot the willow bark. Right. But of course, then there is also the um, on the, all those things, just the, the 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 psychological, the placebo effect. But so that's what's interesting to this one is, yeah, just this way that people think one thing is doing all the work when it's actually something else. Right. Um, so, I mean, are, are, Carly, you have anything to add there or? Uh, no, uh, just, just, you know, he actually really wanted to, to, to help, uh, wait, what's his name again? Um, Nisbet? The old yeah, Nisbet. Yeah, Nisbet. Yeah, yeah. He actually wanted to, to, to help him. Like, he didn't want to scream over. Like, uh, that to me is like, you know, like, oh, yeah, like, like, like Google is not it, it's it's not as roguish as I as I you know like thought at the beginning with the first uh, with the eyes of the overworld like he's not 100 percent rogue like to me it's like oh he has, actually has some like redeemable you know like qualities for like he actually he was kind of grateful to his bed and he actually wanted to help him right like I mean we see it in the in in overworld too with like uh uh the old dude from the the, the caravan like he actually he feels like rescue him but it's more like a spur of the moment but like here. He's actually attached to Nisbet, though. Like he, he seems like he, they, he actually they develop like a like a friendship and like. Well, and, that's the, and, and and he kind of screws things up, maybe long, although maybe allows Nisbet to actually properly retire. But um, we this is probably the first time that we see him really selfless, right? Because he gets out of the cart there to 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 allow Nesbitt to escape, right? Yeah, yeah, if yeah. I remember right. Yeah, it was um, yeah, th this part I found interesting. It's like. I feel like why Kugel sort of had a soft spot for Nisbet is that, you know, Nisbet's a loner. He's an old man. You know, he has no, like, progeny. Kugel is probably on the same path as him. So it's like, you know, he sort of sees how he might be as an old man, right? So he, like, he wants to help him out. I, I don't know if you guys got that well i think it's that something he just sees nesbitt working and not taking advantage of his position right it's like you have all this power and you know you you're just kind of enslaved to these ungrateful people you know live it up and enjoy yourself right especially as you're getting older right which is of right, course right. something kugel does too often yeah, exactly, in his case, exactly. right the moment he's got a little bit of wealth right he's he's pretty much instantly retires every time he gets ahead <laughs> right yeah um yeah, this was uh, it was fantastic. This part now, um, I forget how did Kugel leave this area? He just like did he? He kind he of just, like they, just, were, they were just, just, just oh yeah, they're chasing him. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The the women yeah, were just, chasing uh, him, and they gave they kind of give up, and then he's like he's just sort of wandering. He right? has a spell. Where did he get that spell? It's like the spell of like undying. Did he? Is that what he used in this case, or or was that later? I think that's later, isn't it? Yeah. That's later. He just he just runs for it now. Okay, yeah, I think he just runs from the women. Yeah, and then and then he comes across those. Um, they're kind of like wanderers, and they tell him about that other wizard or the other magician's house, and like it was kind of like a ploy to get him in there. Um, uh, what's what's the guy's name? Um, One second, I gotta. I'm going back to the chapter thing. Yeah, yeah. The guy's name is. Um, uh, what's the name of the magicians? I, I just saw it here. One sec. Um, Fokomi. Foselmi Fos or Folsom? How, how, how did he say it in the audio? I think it's Folsom. 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 I think it's it's yeah. It's a Folsom. I don't know. How, I'm not sure, but I think it is. Folsom. I, I want to say it was three. I think he pronounces each. I think it's like Folsom or something like that. Fulsome. Yeah. Fulselm. Fulsome. I want to say Fulsome. For some reason, that sounds more. So, I mean, so this part, Kugel talks to him. He kind of like suspects something is up. Um, you know, he goes to the bedroom, you know, after they eat. Kugel watches what 
fulsome it is. Was this, I, I think right before this, like, was it this where he, like, goes down into, the, like, the pit where, like, there's a whole civilization down in the pit? No, 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 no. Th- this is when, um, he, he, wait, wait. he, he has a, he has a what's meal. The what's the pit? What was the pit? Like, there was, there was, like, a bunch of, like, like creatures. All, like, they were almost like kobolds that lived down in a pit. Do you remember? And then, like, they, they start to attack, like, the house that he's, like, staying in, and then he ends up, like, burning it down or something. Right? You guys know what I'm talking w- about, Wasn't right? that the rat people or something? That was in the first, uh... No. That was in the first one, wasn't no, it? No, this was... This one was like, yeah, like he, he's 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 journeying across like some open field, and a lot of the, the open field has these pits that he has to keep an eye on. Oh, maybe it's after full cement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's after full cement. Yeah, it's after. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, yeah. So like, I think that's where. So yeah, yeah. Never mind. We'll we'll do full cement. So yeah, no, like what, what, he's traveling across the place, and then yeah, he runs into the grifters. There, yeah, and right? they they the tell farmers. him, well, you know, you can take uh, refuge at full cement. Uh, you know, he has a manse and uh, you can go there, right? Like, so Kugel's skeptical, he ends up going. But then there's the, but then they have like a whole grift there, right? Where like, yeah. oh yeah, you cause us to break the wheel. And then later on they're joking like, oh no, like, you know, their cart was going to break anyway, right? And it was already, and so they trick him. And then of course there's like the talking cows or something, right? Yeah, I, I think, I think Kugel like... was going to buy something off them for Terses. Um but he doesn't have enough or something like that, or they like they deceived him. Anyway, he ends up or or, or did they say that like Fulsome would provide him refuge for terses or was it for free? I forget. Well what it was was like he was like passing through different things along the way. And like he gets to like what looks like a little chapel and it's like, oh, cursed be the name of Fulsome and stuff like this. Like so he keeps seeing all these things and hearing all these things along the way, like, oh, Fulsome, you know, is an evildoer who screwed us, right? Like now, now, like before he gets what, there, was it Fulsome who gave him that like lasso? The um, or it was like a whip. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, because right. this is like he keeps getting warned about Fulsome, but when he gets to Fulsome, like he's on guard because like he'd read all this and heard all this stuff about Fulsome because he Fulsome acts like benevolent and stuff like that, right? And so like he's constantly so like from the moment he gets in there, he's trying to. He's on edge, right? He won't drink anything Fulsome gives him, and he won't sleep in the bedroom that Fulsome suggests. Well, he well no, no, he'll drink whatever Fulsome drinks himself, right? So, like, if Fulsome drinks it, then he will drink it, right? Or, like, if Fulsome eats it, you know, he will eat it. But he won't touch anything that Fulsome just offers without taking himself. Well, so right? yeah. Like, yeah, I find so like, as Kugel set off on his way, he noticed a stone tablet with a weathered inscription. Evil deeds were done at this place. May Fulsome know pain until the sun goes out and after. And then later on, he gets to like some, like I said, like some some other plaque with corrosion of some centuries. May the gods of Gien, Nien work beside the, the devils of Nyar to ward us from the fury of Fulsome, right? So he keeps running to all this stuff that says, yeah, that Fulsome is like bad, bad guy, right? Uh, which turns so he, out to be true because, you know, he goes into the room, uh, then he uses that whip, he kicks the bed, and it floats up, and he floats out the window on the bed, but he ties, like, the whip to the um, to the bedpost, and then, like, the gas, like, fills the room. So, like, something actually was going to happen to him if he had stayed in there. Um, that part, I... Found kind of and then the whole time too, Fulsome is trying to get the sky break spatter light. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Uh, and once again, like it comes down to this whole thing, right? It's it's this whole tri- sort of trickster mythology, right? Where and Kugel's trying to avoid. It. It's like, oh, well, I'll let you. And he does this later on, of course, when he's with you, you canoe, right? It's like, oh, well, I'll just do, and I'll just ask for one little thing in return, right? One little thing, right? Yeah, I think yeah. I think Fulsome is kind of like it's it's almost kind of like a precursor to you canoe, right? Yeah, and then um, actually the part that I found funny was, you know, those grifters that were on the street that like, you know, directed him to Fulsome. He flies by on the bed, steals their pot of stew, and then like just keeps flying. <laughs> and, then, and then they start cursing him. So like, it, it's funny, Kugel always gets his own back, right? In his own way. It, it might not be like straight away, but like, you know, he's going to get back at you in some way if the opportunity presents itself, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, no, I'm looking at it like it's like, oh, Kugel, where are you? We wish to return your five terses, right? Uh, Zinc, do, do you do you mean that there's sinkholes when you see the pits? Yeah, maybe oh. it's a, there, there's something where he goes yeah, down a hole yeah, that, and there's like weird little cobalts. Type yeah, of yeah, yeah. That, that is before before falls me. Yeah, like it's it's really quick. It's it's like a page. Where, like, you know, okay, yeah. Is. Well, once again, it's just Kugel like going and like you know just kind of like obviously they had ill intent for him, but yeah, like it's it's this this whole thing that like you know. Kugel just like leaves destruction in his wake, right? Like he goes somewhere and you know accidentally destroys a whole civilization. So I I remember he was like flying on the bed, and then there was one part that said, you know, he he doesn't want to really like depart from the bed, but like he sees like essentially like a a bay or like a, a harbor. Where there are other ships, so like he realizes he has to land the bed and then, um, you know, continue on his way down there. Is is that what happened? Like, I forget. Does he does he get on another boat right now, or like he's gonna steal a boat or something? And like at some point, like he gets. I think this is like I think the next part is something with the pilgrims, right? Another set of pilgrims. This is the pilgrims. Wait, no. Let me see. Um, well, like he, he just wants to, yeah, he wants to get on the boat, but then he gets, he gets cheated by this, by this random old man who like sells him a, a ticket that is just, you know, a ticket he just, you know, like made himself or like just wrote gibberish, and like Kugel is convinced that he actually got a real ticket, so he goes to the captain and he's like, dude, like, what are you giving me here? Like, I don't understand what's on this ticket, and he, and he just, he just gets, you know, gives all his money to the to the old dude. So, out of spite, he just, you know, like plans a way to like just he's like okay well i'm just gonna steal that boat right if i can if i can just travel so uh he uses the yeah, yeah the boots to to get it. it's 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 the same boat that of the one people the people the boat he'd stolen before right yeah i think it's the yeah, same and, boat and, again. and then there, yeah, was yeah, an, yeah. there was another character wait, 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 wait. it's wait you mean the, the galante you mean yeah the galante no, no, not... isn't it their no, boat? The oh okay no it's another boat yeah But doesn't he run into the Galante people again later on? I can't remember. No, I, I, I no, think no, he's no. afraid. He's afraid to run into them. He's just like, oh my god, like my luck, I'm gonna run into them. But like he, it says uh, somewhere in the yeah in the narrative, like he never sees them, fortunately. I I remember there was one part he like he kicks the boat, he hides it in the bushes, but then he connects with Nisifer. Um or wait, wait, no, 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 it wasn't Nisfer. It was um, it, who was the other guy that like they they basically formulate a plan to like get people onto the his boat. Well, that's the thing. So yeah, yeah. he gets the boat and he makes it yeah, float, yeah, yeah. right? Like it's the caravan master. I can't remember yeah, what the yeah. caravan master's name is. And of course, of course, that's another like lengthy part, right? Like so they go through Mr. all this. Sabbath initially, like oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And initially, he's just like, "Oh yeah, I'll I'll take a few people on the boat." But then, the, then Sabbath is always trying to get more people onto the boat, and then it becomes more of a burden for him. And then, of course, people on the boat trick themselves into certain things, so he doesn't get to stay. So he ends up just like sleeping on the foredeck and all that crap. Right? Once the Indians screwed well, out, but he everything. he he puts all these terms out there that he wants, like the captain's chambers, right? But then, like that Nisifer disguises the old woman, just goes in there and just remains in there. And then he's dealing with that, like, Dr. Aventura or something who has the the mimes on board. They were, like, these three women that, like, had just sort of attached themselves to him. Um, Wait, what, what, are those supposed to be actual, actually clones? Like, what the hell are those people? Like, yeah, yeah. They, they, were, they, they were like, they were like, yeah, they were like, they were, uh, they, they were almost like humunculi, right, Carlo? It seems, yeah, like they're gone. They were like, they were like soulless, like. Yeah. people right like they're like golems or something it seems i don't know like the, the, like because like he had just like found them somewhere right and they seem like they're yeah. like ageless and yeah they're like and they don't like quite think yeah you know i i got that like they, they're, they're constructual i'm like wait are they clones like it's but since this 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 book kind of you know like writes a line between a fantasy and sci-fi i was thinking is this like yeah like some some magic creation or they're just 
like so it's it's some like a like a clone you know like a like a cyborg person like yeah, yeah. it was really but of course like this this part of the book especially because like everybody treats treats kugel like like in, like hates him right like so like when everybody's going around <laughs> telling their stories and then he goes to tell their story and they just say make fun of him and he's like the butt of all of their jokes it's like oh well at least i'm not kugel right and then the mimes are constantly mocking him and everything else right like he's like well, the and, most unpopular you know, person yeah and it, you know it, it's kind of like i mean the, the mimes pick up on the, on the fact that he's kind of like like checking him out like he wants to kind of get him you know like like in private and then out of spite they, they, they start kissing that bar and like kind of getting frolicky with that bar like and like kind of looking at him what they're doing i'm like it's it's amazing like yeah what you're saying it's like uh, it, Ivanello he, he, or something isn't it yeah Ivanello, yeah they they the bard whatever and like he, he he like but the mimes are doing it out of spite because they're looking at kugel when like they're kind of kissing this guy and stuff like it, he's the, the yeah well like I, said, I think i think this is the like the main kind of difference between kugel and and um what's his name Liane there right is that like Kugel just like tends to be kind of like unlucky, right? Like in most cases, right? Like in, in, in you know, like that guy's almost kind of more like the Liane, right? Like where he's he's just he's good looking and he's roguish and and you know naturally kind of coasts on that. Whereas Kugel, Kugel, yeah, like kind of like 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 we could even say like yeah, he he tends to be unlucky, like like he's just unfortunate looking and and everything, right? Like nobody takes him seriously. Yeah, and and this is yeah, and of course, like this, especially this part too, right? Because then, of course, yeah, they throw his money overboard, and he gets screwed on that, right? He gets screwed out of like where he gets to do things, and then he ends up having to like baby everybody, and then of course, his job is to like keep an eye out for things, right? It's kind of like almost like an opposite of the uh, you know boy who cried wolf, right? He keeps trying to tell them like, oh no, I saw something, yeah, I saw yeah, something, yeah. and then the one guy gets up there, and like it's like, oh yeah, well, why didn't you warn us, right? Why did you wait until last minute, right? And so of course. He's he's kind of like got the Cassandra, you know, syndrome there, and then of course they still blame him, right? Once again, he tries to do everything, right? He tries, he tries to cut himself a good deal, and he gets screwed, right? He tries to, you know, keep watch, and they don't take him seriously, right? And then they still blame him, and then he still has to walk the whole caravan into town, right? Yeah, in in this part, he just takes insult after insult. Um, yeah, I, I think it was the mimes that threw his pouch on the ground. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. at that point, the doctor's like, "Oh yeah." Well, and well, everybody's like, "Well, it's not my problem. Right, the yeah, yeah. Master, you should talk to the doctor." <laughs> and the doctor's like, "Well, I don't really yeah, control exactly. them, right? They're just, they're just kind of like <laughs> pets, right? They run around, right? They're wild. You should talk to him, you know. So, you know, like, so, like, yeah, he just kind of gets screwed out of all that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this part I actually found interesting. Um, so, yeah, and and then. They, they finally they do get attacked they get back on track um was this when he goes to the one king's spot so was it after this that he goes to the one king's spot who is like you have to show him like like basically a trick or like something really special and like you can like win so many terses and stuff like this um oh no wait because there was like before that Kugel runs into the other drifter and like that's when he uncovers that portal in the rock like it, wait wait yeah, well yeah. i can't remember why cuz at some point here where was the thing i can't remember if it, maybe it was the last book where it's the thing sitting on the throne and then like it's like its hand is talking to him was it that this book or the the previous book that might have been the first book i'm trying to get think I don't see it because I'm looking at the chapter titles here because after the caravan comes the 17 virgins. Wait, what oh, are you, yeah, what are you I, f- I forgot about that. Wait, what are you, talking about? you know what? The, the, this story is just so dense. There's just so many things. That... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's just like it's, it's like <laughs> like I said, what's beautiful about this one is like like I said, this one, I think, has a much tighter plot. But of course, what I like about the Kugels is that it reminds me of that kind of like ancient fiction right where it's like one episode after another episode after another episode there's an overall arc and he's going in a certain direction right but it's like beowulf or the odyssey homer um, like yeah the odyssey or what's 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 the sumerian one Uh, yeah the the epic of gilgamesh or the chinese journey into the west right which is what dragon ball z is largely based off of right so like it has that sort of like 
very sort of like long epic right where it's just like episode after episode after episode right like yeah so like very much the odyssey but a lot of those other ones too and so that's the thing yeah there's just so many like vignettes yeah, that have happen you, have you read the tale of genji it's a, like a japanese kind of version of it i've meant to but it's, that, that it, one's it's massive this too. it's it's a lot of like like actually like this like like uh, yeah like a uh, like google saga like same thing like very episodic and like Sometimes things come back, but uh, mainly it's like, you know, a- every kind of like new chapter is a whole new adventure kind of thing. Uh, yeah, so it, it, this is really remind- reminiscent of that, the OG epics for sure. Um, but, but in this one though, uh, when, uh, what's the name of the, of the woman, the, the vampire woman? Nisifer. Nisifer, yeah, yeah, Nisifer. Like when Nisifer, like when when kind of reveals herself, I'm like, oh wow, like this is it's pretty epic, and like he actually kills her, like and and it's you know like it it kind of changes tone here, like and it's very adventurous, where like he knows kind of more like swashbuckly, like the way he you know like and 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 he actually snips her out, right? And like that's interesting, like and the fact that they have like a you know, an external threat, but also like someone inside, like that, that's pretty clever as well. Uh, yeah, this, this feels, this one especially feels pretty epic, uh, compared to the rest. Well, it's like, it's layered, right? Cause yeah, the whole Nisifer thing is going on the whole time. Then there's the whole thing with the mimes, like this one, I think more than any other kind of has like multiple, right. There's not just like one problem going on. Right? Yeah, there's exactly. Like five. Yeah. Problems. Like, like the conflict it's, it's yeah. Like layered, but I, I, I love that. Like, you know, like like with Nisper, it's like he, he kind of sets it up because it takes time though. He's like, oh wait, someone disappeared, and he's like, oh like they, they found like like this, you know, like and then he he they find it like a pile of bones, you know, with like a cloak like somewhere on the side of the and like oh wow, like it's so has this little kind of you know this this escalation and and it, it's so nifty because it's it's so short. This is like a sub chapter of like chapter four or something, but it's a lot. It's a lot packed here. It's super well done. Now, w- yeah, no, I mean this. This is the part that, uh, other than the, uh, like I said, the uh, the warm the warmager part. Like this is the other part that kind of really stands out. Yeah, it doesn't like you know what, you know what as funny? being sort of like a distinct distinct. Yeah, story. And, but if you, if you look at like fan art of like Google, it's 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 he. A lot of the fan art is just he kind of fighting Nisfer. Like it's it's such a you know kind of prominent image because like you know people like we kind of draw it a lot. Like yeah. He fight in this for like on the on the prow of the uh, the boat, so it is it is definitely very memorable. Well, that's the thing because he's like got it attached to the glove, and it's it's very much sort of yeah, like it, yeah, like swashbuckling and stuff like that. Like, yeah, but also what, what I love is that though, what I mentioned to you guys, like the fact that like uh, there is a motif of the uh, the kind of uh, the skybreaks power light, and that like, we kind of find out with him. Like the, the power of it, right? At the beginning, it's like, okay, well, I'm just gonna keep it. It's like, you know, I'm just gonna use it to like, you know, like, like stick it to you, kind of. But then, like, he's always like, wait, this, you know, like, it has this this power to like, like, suck things, and like, he kind of incorporates it more and more in his in his adventure, but like, kind of gradually, and you go with him, right? Like, you you kind of discover with him what the power is. So, I, I find it's really awesome that, especially compared to the first, uh, like, you can see here how. Bands really like planned it out and like you know like kind of kind of built on on onto one another of the uh, the shorts and I just kind of like have random ideas and put them together. Well, I mean, I I hate to I hate to take it that low, but you can definitely see kind of and of course I mean I'm sure you know Carlo that like the history of the Lord of the Rings, right? So like the ring when he originally writes about it, the Hobbit, it's just a ring, right? But then when he went back, he's like, okay, how do I write a sequel about this? Because Bilbo's adventure is over. And then he focuses on the ring. So this thing that seems very sort of minor at first, right, then becomes sort of this sought after thing, right? This, this you know, all, like super powered, you yeah, know, thing. But, Although this yeah, one actually really has, so, because like the, the, the thing with the ring is that it doesn't really have that much power, right? It's more of a burden. Wait, 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 hold on. You're saying like, like in The Hobbit, like it was a MacGuffin. You were saying that here, like maybe he used it. Well, this idea that like it was a very sort of minor. So like when he wrote The Hobbit, right? Like he wasn't thinking that this no, was no, a yeah. ring of power. It was a MacGuffin. Right? It was just a ring of investment, yeah. right? It was, just, it was just a minor thing he found with this weird creature, yeah. right? But then as he expanded out on it, he assigned more and more. And so this very frivolous sort of artifact, you know, suddenly turns out to be something super important, right? Because of course, 
later on in the story, yeah, we, we see him using it to like actually defeat things. And then later on too, it's also what keeps him immune to Yukonu's power and other things, yeah. right? Like it, any sort of like um, magical spell kind of is, is nullified by this. That's like a right? public talent, yeah. It's like a word uh, against magic, but I just, I just find I, I I just find this amazing that uh, uh, you know, like he he's kind of using it as well, uh, kind of world building, right? And kind of using it as well as as kind of character development, uh, the the scale, um, and like kind of as a motif, you know, like in between like many of the stories. So it's really clever. Um, and and what I said, like. Compared to the first one, like the first one, it feels more kind of erratic, and like the the, the whole so, uh, the, the whole vignette in the first one about the totality and the, the you know the uh, the the archaeology, the, like the um, side they have there, like I can never place it in my head. Like I don't know if, if it's first or, or like you know close to the beginning or end. Like it's so disconnected. Whereas here, there's like a, a definitely more like kind of controlled progression. Yeah. No. Exactly. But uh, yeah, like so. The the, the, the next part. Um, but, uh, I don't know. If on, I was gonna ask, like, especially like since they seems to have like some, you know, like we're saying, like, okay, the the, the line between like magic and, and tech is kind of blurred. Like, what do you guys think of the the, the boots that kind of defy gravity? Was that like kind of suspending your de- de- disbelief too much? No pun intended. I mean, th- this is just pure magic to me, right? I mean, this one. I'm not really seeing much anything that I could like really describe as tech, right? I mean, it, it, in this one, it's it's just magic, right? I mean, he has that like whip or like that extends out, and um, the the boots that can make things float. It's like yeah, exactly. And yeah, if, it's, I, it's, it's, if I have if I have something negative to say, it's that like I feel like. The, the first stories and the first Google, like, it's always that line, like, you're like, oh, is this tech or is this magic? What is this, right? But, like, yeah, here, I was, that was in my head the whole time. I was like, wait, this is, like, well, I, I'm going to have to just, just, you know, like, just chalk this off as ma- as magic, like, you know. And I, yes, no, yes, yeah. yes and no. I mean, like mm-hmm. I said, like, when, when you get into, like I said, like, that whole thing with the zombies and stuff like that, like, sometimes it's like, yeah, like, is it, you know, what is the line between tech and magic right something that's un- misunderstood right like now of course yeah we don't know of any substance that can do that but if i mean the entire premise of the dying earth genre much less this the, his series of it is that you know it, it kind of goes in line with the whole the whole like you know poem from cthulhu right like and with endless time even death may die or whatever it is right with it with enough time even you know science breaks down right and that's always sort of the premise with the dying earth, right? Is that, you know, you, at one point you have a a world that is technological, right? It's kind of like this arc, like maybe magic really did exist at one point. Well, I mean, this is even, like I said, I never read this Cimmerillion, but like when, when, when you read it, right? Um, it's this idea that, you know, the world actually was flat and then something happens, I think, when they transition from the second age to the third age that you actually get a round earth or something like that or something like that, right? So like... It, it, it is a theme that, like, yeah, like, with enough arc of time, you go from a, a magical world to a sort of scientific world, and then with enough more time, you go from a scientific world to a magic world, right? So I, I in both Kugels, like, I don't get the sense that this is anything other than magic, right? I, I got the sense that it could be, you know, a tech that in, in, like, the short stories that we read before Kugel... I definitely got the sense, especially in Ulan Door Ends a Dream, you definitely get the sense that this is high, high tech that resembles magic. And I, I think Jack Vance was like, he used those short stories to sort of work out how he would take these like larger novels or like epics, really. Um, like I haven't read Rialto yet, but... Um, he, he used that as like a testing ground as to like, how is he going to take this? Is it going to be more focused on tech or magic? But like, yeah, for me and Kugel, there really isn't much tech. Like, you know, they have these tomes that have like magic spells in it. It's like, you know, Vance is just going full with the magic in this, right? Fantasy 
magic. It's not really sci-fi in Kugel. I I don't get the sense that there's any like sci-fi tech here, right? So I don't know about you, Carla, but this brings up a bigger thing because like really the line between science fiction and fantasy, right, is much blurrier than some people. So I've, I've tried to distill down what what is the difference between fantasy. And what is the difference between science fiction? And what I've usually come down to is in science fiction, they have to tell you what is possible, right? It's like, oh, yeah, we have jump drives and it works in this. And they, they make up their excuse, but like they have to tell you what's possible. Whereas in fantasy, they have to tell you what's impossible, right? Because, of course, at that point, you're in a limited universe where anything's possible. So then they have to actually constrain it, right? The other one with science fiction, you live in a constrained world that we all know how it works. And now they're telling you, okay given all the constraints that exist in our everyday world, these technologies have now been developed that avoid those constraints, right? Whereas when you're in a truly fantasy world, you, 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 you now it's unlimited. So now you have to say, it's like, oh, well, why doesn't this spell work all the time and all this sort of stuff, right? So, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think like, yeah, in this case, like he, he, he I, I guess what's sort of brilliant about Vance is he's sort of blatant about things, right? He neither... He neither tells you what's impossible nor what is possible. He simply just does something and people accept it, right? Like, he doesn't waste your time, like, trying to, like, oh, yeah, well, this is, you know, like I said, like, in in science fiction, like, the hard science fiction, right, they're sitting there, like, giving you all their pseudo-scientific, you know, explanations of why this works, right? And then in fantasy, they're sitting there giving you all the pseudo-scientific explanations of why this is the constraint. Vance just does it. He gives the most terse, almost flippant ex- explanation and then just says, fuck you, and moves on, right? But, but, but I mean, the way that the air car in, in Ulandor ends a dream and, you know, just the descriptions of what is going on. But is the air car, does the air car work because it's filled with whatever this stuff is, right? I mean, potentially, I I mean, it, it's not expanded on, but he never really explains it. What he relies on the fact is that at that point in the 50, you know, in the 40s, 50s, right. There, right, people are like, oh, yeah, we have cars. So give it another 20, 30 years and everybody will flying an air car. Right. He relies on what people expect as as sort of plausible. Right. Like a flying car. But really, he doesn't give an explanation for his flying car anymore. If anything, he actually gives a better explanation for why the bed can fly than why the car can fly. Right. Yeah, Arguably, yeah. he's much more scientific about the flying bed than about the flying car. Well, I mean, I mean, in a sense, but I mean, it, it's the magic um, boot polish, right? That's doing it. It's like, I mean, which comes from a specific plant. Well, right? that's it's true. A, that's a specific. Well, that's concoction. true. That's true. That's actually, actually, now that you mention it, that's actually a very good point. Um, I, I guess that is, that is true. I. I, I guess what I'm talking about is just the way that it's described in Ulan Dor. Like, I can imagine it being tech, but in Kugel, he, I well, can't. exactly. He relies in Google, on. I can't. It's like, you know, I see it as no. It's this is magic at this point, right? Like, it's so absurd that you can make this giant boat float by like kicking it with the boots. And of course, right? I like, mean. <laughs> the, the thing I'll point at, what I think it's a quote by Asimov, right? With with any sufficiently advanced tech, it looks like magic, right? And vice yeah, versa, yeah. right? It's just that a flying car seemed plausible at the time. And even these days, right? We expect that someday we'll have flying cars. We don't know the mechanism, right? People have shot out mechanisms. And of course, Vance never gives a mechanism there, right? So a flying car, it seems like tech, but it's actually unexplained, right? It's just like, oh, it's a flying car. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, some people will have a flying car at some point, right? Whereas, right. like I said, with the way that we actually know that, like, pharmacology works, right? Like, people still have this illusion that pharmacology just comes out of our butts, right? That people just, but really what it is is they dig up something, right? Some bacteria or something like, forget what ivermectin was synthesized from. But these days, we, we can't fully synthesize something from nothing. It's usually that somebody finds, yeah, willow bark, right? Like, native somewhere, we're using willow bark for a long time. So people like extrapolate down what it was in their concoction. It was the willow bark, and, and specifically, it was what they ca- called the acetic. Oh, I never did say acetic acid, right. right? That's aspirin. 
And then on the other side, you have all the like the people who are like natu- natural and all that stuff. And they're like, oh, well, you know, all these things. It's like, no, 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 no. The only thing that made that that native concoction work was the acetosilic acid. Maybe right, there was right. a few other things in there, but it was the fundamental thing was the acetosilic acid, which thins the blood and then that causes you know, an anti-inflammatory reaction, right? Well, I mean, I, I guess it's 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 the way that it's written in Ulan Dor that uh, yeah. exactly. Well, that, that's what I'm getting at is that that's why it feels science fiction because he he relies on that certain cultural expectation. Whereas I would say, actually, as a more mature writer, he realizes kind of I think how sort of superficial that explanation was, and that there was no explanation. It's just the expectation that we will have flying cars right. one day. And then he, with this one, he actually does give a much more, you know, whatever this substance that he pulls out of these, this, this balm on these boots, right, can somehow make things fly. So you see this as more sci-fi then, or not really? It's like, like I said, it's I, hard I think to pin what, down. Is that what the, you're saying? What, what Vance does, really, and I think even what he plays with more is that um, he, 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 he gives very terse explanations of everything, right? He, whether, whether it's magic or science, right? He just says, this is what it is and this is what it's made out of. And then, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't feel the necess- necessity of convincing us, right? He's given us the explanation. We either accept it or we don't. And he moves on from there, right? Because for some people, no amount of explanation is going to be enough. But, you know, he wants it for, for the purpose of his plot, right? Because in both cases, in both fantasy and in science fiction, the idea is that, you know, there's, there's different pressures on humanity caused by these things that we don't have. So do you think that, that that was a conscious decision that he came to after writing all of the short stories that we covered previously and then, and then writing Kugel? Like, like... Well, so I, I, Carlos back there. So I want to see what Carlos, because of course he's read a lot more of science fiction and fantasy, and I kind of want his input on on what he thinks the fundamental differences are there. And, and of course, yeah, where Vance kind of plays with them. Wait, wait, for, for what? Sorry, I, I disconnected for a bit. What's, uh... Well, like I said, I, I gave my earlier explanation about what is science fiction, what is fantasy. And usually what I've, I've narrowed it down to is in science fiction, they tell you what is possible, right? It's like, okay, this is the world we live in. And this world that I'm describing, these are the additional things that are possible, right? Whereas in fantasy, because anything goes, they usually have to constrain it more, right? It's like magic only works under these circumstances and everything else, right? So with, with, with science fiction, they have to tell you what is possible. And with fantasy, they have to tell you what isn't possible, right? Whereas Vance equally plays with both, right? Yeah, well, I mean, like, most of it, like, the idea, I mean, like, now especially, like, you know, you have a lot of, like, you know, like science fantasy, right? Or like, or like horror magic systems or like, you know, you have, you have the, the author basically, you know, like making a tech out of their magic and like, they make it actually, you know, like, like run with like, with like that kind of a, a pseudo tech, right? And it, it's actually very involved. It's called a hard magic system. So it, it's kind of complicated, right? Like the basic concept is like, well, science fiction is whatever, you know, it, it's to our knowledge could be possible, right? Like, what's plausible or possible, or like, you know, even like speculating could happen. And like fantasy is just like, you know, completely, you know, just unless you break, you know, like all the, all the established laws could happen. Or like, if you break some laws, right. Or like, you know, like it doesn't have to have like a, a mechanism, right. It can just be like, okay, that's like straight up, you know, like, well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, so usually what they have to tell you is what is exactly like in fantasy, with, right? with my, with magic though, it's like, you have to restrain it and like that's that's uh basically like a magic system in a book it's like well like wh- what's wh- what's the cutoff of the power like right? what's the cap right and that's how they write it but what i'm telling you though like lately though like you know th- there is this kind of new genre fusion where like you have what they call science fantasy where like you know you have you have tech and it's, it's very like or tech but like and they stretch it you know and what i think is actually not possible so the line is, is really blurred nowadays. Uh, or like what I said, uh, you have hard magic systems where you have like, you know, like let's say a magic system where like, oh, you can control certain things. And like, you know, like it's based on like, on like, you know, like laws of physics and all this, right? But it's it's actually a magic system. Like it's a fantasy story. So it that's complicated. Um, but in essence, it, it is what you said though. We're like uh, um, with sci-fi, it's like, you know, like they do tell you how the mechanism is and fantasy for the most part is that like, Okay, how how this power is restraining? How 
how like how does it affect like your users right like how does it tax like their user that's a lot that happens with magic like what's the negative effect like with tech you can just have like a, a i don't know like a you know like a, a tool or like a one whatever we take and like you know like a gun right it doesn't affect like the user but with with magic generally like the magic affects the user right we're like it's taxing the user in in, in some sort of way right we're like you know like you know like uh, uh cannibalizing their energy or like you know like like using their, their life force or whatever like that's that's a lot that in place with magic like it's always always has an effect on the on the users you know like uh, life force or whatever right whereas so, tech yeah. sci-fi usually like it's external like you don't have the user can have like you said what i said a gun or like you know like a contraption and like that doesn't affect affect their their you know like their, their body or like their their psyche waves or whatever so so i mean don't we see well, like this with the sky break spatter light itself like I mean, Kugel, there was one part where he touches it and, like, he kind of gets, like, a, like a stinging yeah, like a, sensation like a on yeah. his... So, I mean, well, it's, it's like, more if, magic, if, if he, right? He's very I mean... sci- but he's very scientific about it. He doesn't understand the mechanism, but he studies it, right? He, he gets the sensation. He knows it's a more powerful one, right? And it's through trial and error, that is to say, science, that he kind of figures out what it's doing, right? He doesn't know the mechanism of it very well, but he understands... But his, his way of sort of figuring out its its properties is very scientific through the course of the book. No, I, what I was saying, though, like, I feel like the rest of the book, like, I mean, I, I never, you know, like, kind of, like, uh, landed my point here. But I was going to say, like, besides the, the floating, like, the, the whole gravity boots, right? Like, everything else was going to say, like, oh, my God, like, it feels, it feels very, like, like techy, you know, like, like the, 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 uh, the scales, how they work, you know, uh, they're like conduits. Anyway, um even like Adrian, you said the the rope, but that to me is like okay, that's just like kind of uh, programmable matter, like programmable cells. The rope, like you know, like some kind of like you know, like uh, na- uh, nanocarbon cells or whatever. Like I, I was every time I read this stuff, though, I'm always like, okay, what's what's the tech equivalent of this kind of you know, like like seeming seemingly magic, you know, like like power here? But I was just saying that like the only thing that I can't really like kind of you know like rationalize to, to any tech is, is there yeah the gravity boots yeah i agree yeah I, maybe i'm thinking of the boots more than anything else because like i mean zinc has made some pretty astute observations there about the fact that with the sky break spatter light it's like he knows that water kind of you know he's able to touch it when it's wet but when it's not wet it gives him that like you know like a tingling or like sort of like a uh i don't know like a coarse sensation so yeah i guess he is figuring it out through science like trial and error yeah well it's, it's, it's even kind with of the boots right at it's first he thinks it's the boots but yeah. then he realizes it's the ball right and yeah the kicking the thing right like i said you right. could come up with like whatever the substance is like maybe it changes the vibration right that's why he has to twice kick the shit right this is this is right, like i right, said i'm, right, I'm way into yeah. the ancient aliens thing and the whole premise of the ancient aliens thing is like all these sort of situations described in the Bible, you know, could it have been an, an, a sufficiently advanced tech, right? If you prevent, present sufficiently advanced tech to primitive peoples, you can't really explain, you know, the, 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 the mechanism of it and stuff like that. And there's even lots of things where they can't even really explain. They just know that something works, but they don't really know the mechanism until much later on or they suspect it and, and all this stuff, right? Or they make it up and so on and so forth. I mean, really what it goes back to, like I said, if you dig into these things and you kind of study the history of science and magic, there was, right, like, so something people bring up these days with the whole kind of anti-pharmaceutical, right, Pharm- pharmacopoeia, right, from, from the Greek is, is, is the word they used for magic, but also for science. There was no differentiation, right? That is to say that um, the ancient Egyptians were considered some of the best doctors in in, in their time and place there. But of course, a lot of it is kind of a mixture between like, you know, solid quality, like surgical procedures, but also kind of this, this kind of like what they call sympathetic magic, right? Like how do you heal like a, a, a wound in the skull, right? You put some eggshells on it and, and a paste because those are both white, right? So it's, it's simultaneously this sort of mixture of, um, you know, and, and even the history, right? So, like, if you go back to kind of the start of modern science, it comes out of alchemy, right? Which, you know, had this kind of, you know, you know, um, you know, unobtainium type thing, right? That's what the philosopher's stone is, right? This, this, like, it's like, okay, 
you know, we, we, we want to turn lead into gold. All we need is this magic substance that turns it into that, right? And so that was that search there, right? But a lot of what we know about chemistry and physics, right? I mean, even, even um, you know, oh, I can always forget his name. Isaac Newton was an alchemist, right? He practiced alchemy, right? And the mystical aspect of alchemy while also doing all this stuff, right? So it's, it's a very, very thin line between the two. You, you know, that's that's very interesting. I, w- I was thinking about, um, like earlier today, I was thinking about, you know how they've, they've sort of cracked the problem of nuclear fusion where they have like 192 lasers that focus on like, this like battery like cylinder and they're able to like when the lasers hit hydrogen inside there it will actually like get as hot as the sun and it will fuse it into helium and they actually get like 3x power out from that by putting 1x in so like it's essentially they're recreating the sun well, I, on a oh really, my God. really small scale I, I, saw, I saw that this week saw you that? know what did, did you, yeah, yeah. I still, you, know, you know what I thought of? Have you watched uh, Spider-Man 2 like, with, with Toy Maguire and Nefer Molina when, when, when Dr. Ock, it's like, you know, like holding the sun and it's kind of like, like yeah, it's going to, yeah, yeah. New York is imploding it. I was like, oh my God, I got that mental image. <laughs> like, this is pretty, this is pretty intense. Like, this is really like serious power here. Where like, I just sort of like, the, like this sun kind of, you know, like the, the whole fusion experiment creating like a, a whole like 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 you know like microgravity around and like just pushing in like like our planet. <laughs> but yeah, I saw I saw this week though, amazing. But but I was I was thinking about that like how does that scale for power for us to actually like use it for it to be useful, right? Like I mean, th- this is in a small cylinder. Okay, they need 192 lasers. It focuses on the hydrogen inside of that it gets as hot as the sun they get 3x out like how do you scale that for grid level power and um and and also i mean it's not the first time that they've done this they've been doing this since like the late 70s like and through the 80s it's just like this is the first time that it's stable that they're actually able to get out more power than they've put in and I, i was thinking about it like you know, yeah, like, yeah, how does that scale? And it's almost like um, it sort of breaks the rules of physics. Like, I guess it doesn't because the sun observes the rules of physics and like it powers itself. But, you know, it's like. Well, you, I mean, you, that's the thing. Cold fusion has been theoretically possible for decades. Right. right? It's just it's just trying to get that to kick off without. Yeah, like using all the world's energy to do it right. right? And without, yeah. Creating a new sun on earth. Right. And like all that stuff. But like, right? I mean, I mean, ge- so, I mean, yeah, they're definitely getting closer to that. Generally, if you're getting three times power out of like one, one X that you put in, I mean, generally in physics, everything balances, right. It's like you, you generally don't get something for nothing. Right. It's like, um, you have to give something up in order to get something, but it's like, it's never, you give like a lesser amount up and get more in return. Does, does that make sense? Well, I, I mean, mean, I guess it, I guess it comes down. I mean, it's just like n- nuclear fission, right? Like is, you know, that the bonds that are, br- that you're breaking have, you know, the, the bonds that are holding all that. So together, right. Is, is, is much more energy than, than whatever right so like i guess it's somehow the same with fusion right that the release of those things you know generates more i'm not not sure yeah like i mean information loss and all that stuff i'm not sure yeah i I mean i I was thinking about that like so so i mean you would need a power source to be able to like power those lasers first to get that out so then let's say you you recapture like the one X back into the system to keep it going. And you use the other like bit of power, the other one X of power to like power, whatever you want. Um, I guess it could eventually become a self-sustaining system. Like, I mean, if this is actually true, it could like, after you've initially powered it, you could have a system that, 
just sustain just sustains itself. Yeah, right? like, like, you said, like if, if the out, if the output is uh, is in like like three x, you could use one x to power the lasers, right? Yeah, and then yeah. one x, you know, as the uh, the energy like a uh, uh, a method, right? Like a uh, as the energy source. So yeah. So I mean, go well, ahead, Zinc. Sorry. Well, that's the thing. I don't know what the byproduct because we know what the byproduct of fission is and, uh, and of course yeah the, the byproduct of fusion it's, it's you know, fiery it's, it's death some... that's it but what, what was that carlo <laughs> it's fiery death that's fiery the byproduct. De- but well this is it like i mean like i mean they're able to do this in this small like cylinder that's like the size of like a, a, a d battery right like i mean i think it's a bit bigger than that but like i mean how do you scale this for like grid level? Like it's it's that I, I think that's a well, question. Like a right? lot of the energy comes down to the containment, right? So I know with nuclear fission, the, 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 it's 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 about cooling it, right? So with this one, I guess it's about containing it, right? So it doesn't burn up the, the right. You contain it. So so I get I, I guess they would have to replace that like cylinder multiple times because if it's getting as hot as the sun each time. Like, eventually, like the the yeah, you're right. Like exactly what you're saying, containment. It would be like that container would become useless because it's gonna warp and like, you know, it's like how do you can yeah. It's, is, it's, is there it's another way to? Is there another way to contain heat though? Like maybe with it's a, like gravity or something. Like how do you how do you contain? I mean, because it's, it's yeah, it's it's a fusion happening, right? It's like how do you contain a star, right? Like. In a container, interesting. But and and this is it, right? It's like it's like how does that scale up, like, um, to be useful? Well, I mean, I mean, gravity contains the star, right? Like, it's it's yeah. constantly fighting gravity. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's just when we're talking about like the whole, like, sci science, like versus magic. I mean, it, my mind went to this because I was thinking about it earlier today and sort of like, you know, it kind of is magic. The fact that they can get three X out of a one X input. Like, I mean, it, it, things in physics, it just doesn't happen that way. Right. It's like you almost well, always have to give something you, up to get you know, something you, in return. Said, right. What you said, like some of our, our physics is going to break sound, like, you know, like, black holes and when it gets to the quantum level like it's so bizarre like things just not you know like it they, they don't doesn't function like a like a logical base right or like a like, like a like an equal base right like it's it's nuts when you when you go into into you know like black hole physics uh, or like yeah even like some of the uh, the neutron starts on this like wait this doesn't balance out at the end right so i mean that's well that's thing once you get like subatomic and yeah it, it gets crazy the newtonian yeah, the Newtonian physics just break apart, like just break down. So, I mean, if if they, if they can hack that, I'm 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 sure they could. But I just what I what I told you, Adrian, like I got, I got like a lot of like you know like kind of negative like scenarios in my head, like playing with that amount of energy. But I mean, like if I I I'm aware they've been doing it for a while, so I guess it, it's a progression. But yeah. Anyway, um, well, everything's already happened, right? I mean, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, back back to the story, though. I really liked yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> I really liked the next one, though. The yeah, the Seventeen Virgins. Like it's, it, it's pretty awesome. Uh, um, well, well, I mean, we we missed the entire part where, um, Kugel, he like, he gets um, he meets that other drifter. Uh, I forget no, his name. Exactly. And, huh? No, no, that, that comes after. That's that comes after. before the yeah. singing fish. Yeah, oh, that's is that like after right the versions? The I thought. I thought the versions. Yeah. He's like, um, he's on the carriage. And no. no, no, because the main thing is is that by the time he meets that drifter, and we'll t- dive into it more. For the most part, he's mostly benevolent after that. Yeah. Right? So this. So the seventeen versions is kind yeah. of the last, the last kind of truly roguish. Roguish, roguish Kugel, we get there. Yeah, right? the, the scound Kugel, the scoundrel, pretty much, right? Like, <laughs> no, 
No, I can't remember exactly. Like, yeah, that whole part. I, like, I just love how uh, Kugel, like, again, like he he plays on it. Was the guy's name Haruska, right? Like, he's supposed he's the one who's supposed to go on the uh, on the caravan with the virgins, right? But like, he he plays with his ego again to like like you know trick him into going to like he, he gets him drunk. You guys remember this? He gets him drunk because like he he's having like this this kind of like like you know kind of goodbye party and like. You know, he gets a lot of attention and like Kugel just buys some drinks and gets him kind of drunk and then and then gets him to the, you know, like to the back of the, uh, the, the inn right here. It, yeah, it gets him to the docks. Yeah. And like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just, just like totally, you know, like, like, uh, uh, tricks him into, into, yeah, like. But when I I thought he like like knocked him out or something and like just threw him in the boat and like but once again he yeah, plays yeah. he plays them off each other like he he gets like he steals his room and he gets him stuck into the the shed out there and then he makes you know gets him mad at the uh, the the the, the uh, what do you call it the pup the the, the, the the innkeeper and then the innkeeper has issues I, I with him I think that was in the first no, um, that, that was, was in the first, first story, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 that uh, that was like the, said, like, the overworld yeah. No, this, this is the, he he gets Haruska drunk, then he gets him to the to the docks, and then he uses a, 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 like a fishing net to trap him and kicks him into a boat and like you know yeah. like like a moors the boat and like you know like lets him drift, um, yeah, down the river. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that that was, uh, and, and and like I think he meets up with him later on too. It's like, um, well, that, after the, after yeah. something, but I mean, I mean like uh, yeah, at, at the end of the vignette, he. He, he like Haruska like accidentally like you know like uh, the boat like gets him where Kugel just it's running away from. But this story is crazy though. Like this story makes you think of the uh, 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 like the uh, a thousand and one nights. You know, kind of like it, it has that vibe of like you know like a kind of a like what was the name of the the dude a uh, uh, Panfun? Like he's like a genie. Like that's such a cool story though. I mean the whole. The whole progression of this, and like, wait, um, and like, Kugel get gets it on with how many virgins? Four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think all of them. No, no, I think all of them. All no, no, except no. four. <laughs> yeah, ex- except four. Yeah, and then and Dude. then uh, Sh- Shimilko is like, um, he's like, well, that can't be, you know, like, you Not know, the anything. only one that was with them was Kugel, and like, you know, he's a stand-up guy, and like. No, but 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 Zink, you you were saying that like oh, Kugel is like generally unlucky. I'm like, you know, I, I was waiting for this moment to be. Excuse me, <laughs> he got like. Well, no, like years. I said, it's it's almost a satire on these things. Like he he he, like in the what like it's almost kind of like a parallelism throughout a lot of this, right? Like that's why I get parts of it confused because certain things kind of mimic other things that happen, but then with a slight twist to it, right? So in this case, yeah, because he's the only guy around, right? And these are. 17 sex star virgins right like only port in the storm type thing right suddenly his his collateral there is you know sky high right when, when, when he's got no competition right and, and these girls don't know anything better right suddenly he's he's casanova yeah but anyways i would say he he gets some luck sometimes because i mean like he 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 uh he's not getting busted it's it's a you know a huge you know like like now, in, in this story, too, is the whole thing about how, like, they think that the, the way that they're positioning this, this because I, I, I couldn't remember last time. And I was trying to remember, like, if it happened in this one or the last one, because we were talking about, like, why the sun, like, maybe why people think the sun's dying and all this. But like this, this sort of like superstition that, like, somehow the the, su- the, the mirrors are what keep the sun alive. Right. And it's like the soulful thing. thing. It's like, oh, well, if we don't point the mirrors at it, then it's, it's not going to stay up. Right. Like they're the ones rejuvenating the sun. Or something. I can't remember what else. Like why I wanted to bring that up last time, because we were touching on some conversation. I think it was something along the lines of like, yeah, like how people perceive the sun is dying and all that stuff. But, or maybe just the superstition of how people think that they can somehow, you know, that's what's holding the sun up, right? Like, is these mirrors. So, yeah, I can't remember why I'd wanted to bring that up last time, but yeah. Is there anything else we want to touch on with that one? Or? This story? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, I mean, like, uh, 
what do you guys think of like a um when he when he gets to the um oh my god what's the place again um it's like it's called uh they they call the college of like you know like what the virgin's supposed to go they it's called chat chat chatale chaladet i forgot uh, and like um anyways the, like the whole thing where like he's like oh you know like he tells he chatale tells kugel it's like oh don't worry about it we're, we're like a really chill you know like sect like you know like you you don't have to worry about about you know like like whatever you did like you know you can just you can just repent or whatever like you know we're not going to kill you but they are going to kill him right like when they send him that to pamphoon it's like to to get eaten right like well that's the thing is because he's like asking him all the questions it's like oh you guys aren't going to get like irritated if i do this like oh no those people are uptight about all that stuff right because that's what happens in other ones right like either like in in Ul uh no it wasn't ulan door it was the uh to the guy, the one after Ulandor, right? Where like they purposely try to entrap him because he's expecting all these sort of weird yeah, superstitions. Yeah, yeah. But then with this one, it's like, oh no, we're super relaxed. But yeah, then he goes and he does the one thing that he shouldn't do, right? Because for them, it's obvious that he shouldn't do that, and maybe it's even obvious to him, but he can't help himself, right? Yeah, I mean, he's just not. I, I have the notes here. He's like, Charlie tells him, "Oh, you will be allowed redemption." I place this uh, person in your custody. That story is. See that he has queerniff. Is that it? Queerniff. Sorry, what? Queerniff. That's where they're headed to. Is queerniff? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, well, uh, what the, the the city where the the, the demon is, uh, uh, Pamphoon. And what, what do you guys make of that? Like you know, like uh, Pamphoon is this big demon, but there is this uh, what's his name? Um, he like his tongue is like a different entity. Uh, wait, what's his name again? Uh, Pulsifer, Pul 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 right? It's like, it's like, oh no, like they know me as the demon Pamphoon, but like also as Pulsifer, but it seems to be like he's kind of boasting, like, but he's like, he's like a different entity and like he, he's blind to Kugel, and and then that's how Kugel gets on top, right? Because he he plays cards with Pulsifer. And then, yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. like tricks him in, 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 into losing. And then he's like, Well, you beat me. And like, and he's supposed to be like, Well, take your money back and we can start again. He's like, No, 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 that's not how it's done. There's no sport in that. We have to go get my money. And that's how he gets out of that. I just found that like a really clever way to to trick him. But like, I, I, I wasn't clear on the, the, the kind of like, was it like a symbiote? Like, what the hell was that? Like the Pulsifer and the Pamphoon thing. Like, but, remember that? Wait, but, but, but Pam, Pamphoon, he doesn't really leave or like, or, or it's like I think it's Fam Poon. Um, he doesn't really yeah. leave that Poon, like yeah. his lair, right? So like then when he does leave, doesn't he destroy the entire yeah. like town or city? Dude, that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but <laughs> Kugel just like walks away. He's like, ah, oh, yeah. It's like, ooh, uh, it was me, you know. Oops. <laughs> Oh, let's see. He's he's like a subroutine of Panfoon or whatever his name is there. Yeah, yeah for sure. What, what, like Pulsifer, it's like a subroutine. Like, I, I just I just I didn't get that clear though. Like, uh, and I read, I read it many times, and I was like, wait, what? What is it? Like, because it's his tongue, right? And like, he he's a he's a homunculus growing on the tip of of Panfoon's tongue. Is it, he's like a growth on on his tongue. Yeah, so like a symbiote. I don't know. Uh, anyway, not a big deal. Let's keep going then. Yeah, it's it's kind of like um, you know what was it, Curzon Dax on Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and it was like there was that symbiote that lived inside of her, but like that was actually an old man, and like Benjamin Sisko knew the old man before, ah. and like when he talks to her, it's like he it can like switch off it's like no i need to talk to the old man now but it's actually like this that, that, that's such a good idea. nice nice looking girl like yeah, and, yeah. you know like it, actually it's coming back a lot in like like stuff that i read like now they have like even it can be a physical symbiote like that or like you know like let's say in the in the kind of current sci-fi people have like usually they have like some kind of like you know like neural link neural computer in their heads and they have someone hitching there and it's like I've just been noticing, like, in a little book lately. That... Well, because he makes it clear, he's like, I am him and he's me, but I like to refer to myself. It's like I said, he's like a 
he's like a subroutine or a projection of him, right? That's because, like, I know, like, like whales, right? Like when whales sleep, like half their brain is asleep yeah. at a time. It's almost like that, right? Where like while while his mass is sleeping, like he's got this very kind of like superficial basic routine running, right? Like I can only think about it like in, in terms of like computers there, right? But he is he is Fampoon, but he's not, right? Like it's almost kind of like a, a like a, a like he's a, like a, a demon basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like a demon, like, right? A demon. It's like, yeah, it's like the eye is so advanced though. Like I'm like, oh my God. Like when 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 I think about it, right? Like I'm like what I said, like this idea of the symbiote, right? I mean, we see it in the later on in the, uh, like I think the first one is, that, I, that I remember seeing this is Total Recall, where you have like Puaro <laughs> inside, like the dude. Um, but yeah, like Quay. <laughs> 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 but like, it, it's crazy how advanced all sort of this is. Like, I'm, I'm mind blown. He's a genius, though, uh, advanced. Um, yeah. Anyway. Um, and this is the point is even at the end, what is what you said, Adrian? Like uh, Haruska happens to land as as he's throwing away in the city is burning the on his back, and Haruska's like, "What the fuck?" Um, and I think Kugel just tricks him and kicks him back into the river or something. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, I I think so. Yeah, it's, it's like he like one one offs him again. Um, so so wait, did does Kugel just I think he just walks away from there, right? After uh, Fam Poon mm-hmm. starts destroying things, yeah, yeah, he just like runs away run, basically. Yeah, he right? just runs away to, to the docks to get a boat. And what I said that that's like Haruska happened. Oh yeah. He yeah. Just land in there like to to be, you know, uh, and he, he he tricks Haruska again and like steals the boat again, like his boat and leaves, but he 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 loses the gold though because he he gets all the gold from Pampoon that loses it. So the uh, the one step back again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, that's like, in in a sense, the story is kind of frustrating. It's like he gets ahead, but then he's knocked back down. But what what um, it's, it's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of formula of this. Like I, I'm okay with it. It's, it, it you know, like I feel like any, any other author would wouldn't pull this off, but like. The fact that this is so entertaining and like the, the language is so it's so flowery all that like it just it just you know it works uh, for some reason and like you just you just kind of used to it, but I mean but after this though it, it definitely switches gear um, after this story when he meets um, what's his face. Um, I think it is Erwig. Well, so he gets screwed by the, another innkeeper here, right? With like the whole thing, like, oh yeah, the the, the horse is oh, unbelievably God, loyal so or whatever, right? <laughs> and of course, the, the the horse bucks him and then wanders yeah, like, back. Yeah, oh, right? this whole this horse is like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, I forgot about that part. It's like I, 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 I'm, I'm, you know I'm scrolling yeah, it as I see like, it. That's the only reason um, I remember. I mean, I mean, there's just it, it, there's just so many things that happen. Like, you know what? Like Zink, you had said before that you thought that this is like one of the great epics. The other two are Dune and Dragon Ball Z. But like this definitely is epic, right? Like um there's just so many things that go on in this story. And like I I'm just curious like how many pages are the are the novels of these like the actual paper book? Do do, do either of you know like cuz like with with, with the with the ebook, like I can't really tell, right? Like I just I want to say they're about four hundred pages each or something like that. Uh, I have. I mean, that's, that's three, quite... three, three to four hundred pages. I want to say that's quite economical if you think about it. How I, I much said, content I said is actually packed in there? I said right? this before, that like, compared because you know I used to read a lot of fantasy, and those books are like gigantic, like they're like monolithic. All of those fantasy series and this guy, and this guy happened, you know, like what I said before, like the, when we talk about the, we talk about the first school, I'm like, it's a troll banger. And like, uh, he already, he has taken over a kingdom by the first, like, like, you know, like, like uh, 30 pages or something. Like, you know, he, he, he like, you know, he, he's like, uh, they have like summon demons, like, you know, like he's, he's taken over a kingdom, then lost it. And it's all like by 30 pages. I'm like, holy shit. Like these guys, he, he goes at it, man. Doesn't waste any any of your time 
Well, that's the thing. He, he explains enough and then moves the plot. Like, there's so much But that, that's an art, okay, to, like, ex explain enough. Like, that's crazy. Uh, you know, like, I, I just, I, I read, you know, like, short stories or things. You're like, uh, what? Like, you know, it's it's very murky. But, like, here, like, it's just so. And what, what I went to before with the the ethnologies and, like, you know, like, kind of every village having, like, their own culture. Like, it's it's so it's so tangible you know like and in, in, in such a small like like space like i'm i'm, I'm really off by this uh, yeah they, they well i can't remember if there was a quote by him or something but you can tell that he must have been i think i, I could have sworn there was a quote where like he was talking about like self-editing right just like really like writing something and then just slashing at it right like you can tell that he is an aggressive self-editor right uh, by the way, this one is only 334 pages, which is crazy. It's below average for, for a novel. Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah. It, it's, yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. And I mean, you know, like the pictures that you imagine in your head, it's like, it's, it's, it's like you're right there with like a minimal amount of description you're right it's like just enough yeah and i said the other world um, it's only 189 pages so that is insane and that's like a that's like kind of a let's uh length and it feels like a whole epic yeah the first one so pretty insane yeah i'm trying to find it like i think like he was very like like i think there was like a quote by him talking about like yeah just like you know, just like cutting out like the crap, right? Just because you've written it doesn't mean it needs to stay. Right? Well, th that's what the whole uh, "kill your darlings" means. Like people mistake that for like, oh, it was just like a a character that I wrote, like I like a lot. Like you know, like I don't want to kill them. No, actually, "kill your darlings" means that shit. Like you know, like when you're editing, just be ruthless and like whatever. You know, it, it it's it's slightly superfluous. Even like an extra other like cut that shit out. You know, like. A good writing professor would, would like really ingrain that into you. So so are are we are we at the part where he connects with um Erwig like this you know hospitable um he's like a native of some Santisca or something and like he lives with his wife and like you know he basically gives cool well, like it, a place it, to stay for the night you're skipping ahead though um am i skipping ahead uh, yeah, yeah yeah sorry i'm uh, um, there is something huge that happens um i mean after he uh he he leaves the college um like this like a, like a big catalyst uh to what happens later uh wait what's his name B bolo no what's his name uh Yolo. Yolo, yeah, Yolo. Is that is that a guy like he helps him? He's being attacked by the Paragon. Yeah, yeah he's being attacked. Yeah, he's, that's what happens. He's, he's the dream. He's the dream collector. Yeah, right? he gets stuck with the Paragons, and then Yolo helps him. But then he wants to trick him out because like one of the Paragons has like this, this kind of like a, a magic stone or whatever. And then uh, Yolo wants to trick him out of that, right? And like, well, that's the thing. In this case, we see like kugel trying to be benevolent right but then yeah meeting somebody who's you know even more craven right and trying to screw him out with you know for no after you know kugel saved him and everything right wait what happens before this though is, is the is the the guy that uh that screws him over with the horse Oh, no, no, no. I think so. After the horse thing, then that's Airwig. So I'm trying to see here. Yeah. So then oh, he, like, wait, 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 um, no, it's, I forgot that. Yeah. yeah Airwig comes in. Oh, yeah, no, no. Airwig's yeah, kind of funny because, like, yeah, yeah. he just, like, walks his family forgot. out. And it's, like, he's very dismissive, right? It's, like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, I, I said Airwig. Yeah, sorry, my bad. No, I, yeah, Adrian, I, 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 I misled the whole conversation. Yeah, no, you're right. He, he goes to, to Airwig, yeah. Um, yeah. But it's it's just sort of by chance, right? That he like, he just kind of rolls up and like, or or no, was it like, wasn't there a part where he was gonna steal another boat and then like, you know, they're gonna like 
he's with somebody they're gonna steal a boat and then like these natives come by and like they look really aggressive and stuff like that and they're like okay that's it they're gonna get us but they're actually like really hospitable people that that is airwig right well he's weirdly hospitable right he like kicks like it's it's once again it's another satire of like the way some people are right like in the in wanting to impress a stranger he pretty much leaves his wife and children out right and the wife's like oh the beast is among us right and he's like what do you want now woman right like it's it's kind of this like weird sort of satire right because he's trying to inc- impress kugel right but i i, I, I don't people. remember what happened right. i don't remember what happens so they, they're just gonna hang out and like eat and drink yeah. yeah. So yeah, what it is, because I'm just going through it, yeah, right? Yeah. It, this is where he shows Kugel, like, and Kugel's trying to be subtle about it. He's like, well, of course, you know, you 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 follow the right religion and you know how to make the right sign. And he's like, oh yes, but show me the most correct version of that sign, right? And and so so, so he shows him right once again. He's like tricking him, like into thinking that he's he's a devout believer, right? And of course, when when and that's making that sign is how he's supposed to keep the things that the flying things the peregrines or something, I can't remember what they're called, right? At bay. And then uh, of so course, they, what Google does owls? is the first time. He... What? So they five owls? Well, it's the plane of standing stones, right? Because each one he's supposed to pick up a stuff. At the first opportunity, take up a pebble the size of your fist and make the trigrammatic sign upon it. If you're attacked, hold high the pebble and cry out, stand aside, I carry a sacred object. So much is clear, said Kugel, but perhaps you should show me the most powerful version of the sign and thus refresh my memory. Erwig scratched a mark in the dirt. Simple, precise, correct. The folk of Kurnif omit this loop and scrawl in every which direction. Slackness, once again, said Kugel. So then Kugel, farewell, right? So, like, you know, he's trying to pretend, like, oh, yeah, like, like it's the pretensions, right? Like, in the... And so, but, of course, like, the first time that, like, Kugel does it, he, he, he half-asses the sign and then almost gets attacked. And then the next time, he's very diligent about drawing the sign, right? The Assam, the Assam. So yeah, like that's what it is. I command this tension to the attention of Wiolo. I requested it protect me across this dismal, pl- right? This, let's see. He scratched upon it a sign somewhat similar to that drawn for him by Erwerg and intoned, I command this pebble to the pretension of Wiolo. I requested it protect me from this dismal plain. And then he goes out and he traveled more, no more than a hundred yards when he felt a presence and whirling above and discovered an assum of eight fangs almost on his heel. Kugel held high the pebble and cried out, Way with you! I carry a sacred object and do not care to be molested. The assum spoke in a soft, blurred voice. Wrong! You carry an ordinary pebble. I watched, and you skimped, scamped on the right. Flee if you wish. I need the exercise. The assum advanced. Kugel threw the stone with all his force. It struck the black forehead between the bristling antennae, and the assum fell flat. Before it could rise, Kugel had severed its head. He started to proceed, then turned back and took up the stone. Who knows who guided the throw so accurately? Wiulo deserves the benefit of the doubt. At the first sarsen, he exchanged toads as Erwerk had recommended, and this time he made the trigrammatic shrine sign with care and precision. And then, of course, he starts to, to cross from Saracen to Saracen. And then, yeah, like along the way, I think this is when, like, um... Iolo. Yeah, then this is where he comes. And then, like, then he kills him, and then he's like, "Quick, you know, just chop off its." And he's like, and "Like, yeah." So it's more oh yeah, of yeah. Us. oh yeah. He he was gonna save the bird. He's like, "No, no, this is worth money." And like, Yolo. But then, I forget what happens. Like, well, that's the thing. He's here. like, "Oh I, no!" Like, he's like, "I saved your life, so now you owe yeah. me." Like, Yolo's like, "No, no, you just came just as I was about to do it anyway, right?" Like, so he's yeah, trying to make up yeah, excuses yeah, yeah, for why yeah. he doesn't need to help him, right? And then, of course. Then they open the whole that 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 void, yeah. you know, and everything. Yeah. And so then, of course, they go and then yeah, it's the whole thing with the Duke, right? Where like they're they're, they're showing. But, 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 off. No, 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 no. With the void, though, remember, Iolo Kugel, like he's his like leg is trapped, and he's like, "Come on, like help me!" And he's like, "No, no, I don't think I will." And like he sits down, he makes a fire, and like eats, and he just kind of leaves Kugel well, there. But, like... But then Kugel, Kugel it, steals his stuff though before he leaves, right? Remember? Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, he he steals like his dreams, yeah, the dreams. That, which he's been collecting, which he's gonna show the Duke of Orbel of Ombalik, who like you show him like a wonder and like there's a prize of like five hundred terses to get it. Um, but then Kugel steals all of his stuff in the nighttime, but like 
I forget somehow that guy doesn't notice. No, doesn't I, for, notice. I forget how because he's, he's sleeping like... though. He's just napping. And yeah, he exactly. ties he ties yeah, Google, yeah. and Google. I mean, he thinks he's tied up, but Google manages to like free himself. And then he he you know like pretends he's been tied all night, and he just leaves thinking you know like okay like he's gonna you know get sucked by the tentacle here whatever, and and then when he when Yolo comes back, he's like oh. It was, it was some some bandit that just left like right in you know east or whatever, and and you're like, oh, oh yeah yeah, yeah that's right. was like oh shit I'm, I'm gonna go after him he just goes after after the uh, supposed bandit and well after after he yanks the cord because I'm looking at it now he yanks the cord and then it causes the thing to fall into the hole completely right because he had it dangling from a string there the things yeah. that he stole from Yolo yeah yeah that's right that's right oh, no yeah no but the uh, back falls into the hole though that's it right like. He he doesn't keep it like the, is it back in the hole in the uh, kind of other dimension? Well, that's the thing. He falls into the hole, and that's why later on the Duke orders him into the hole to collect the yeah. the, the stone. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But at that point, they're covered in the crap from the the, 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 the monster in there, and then of course they're poisoned. Yeah, I mean, like the the the, yeah. the 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 king like gets one to like to the dream whatever, and he he goes into this this fit of like freaking apoplexy whatever. He gets like a like a seizure. Well, well, it was it was like the first like exhibit to the Duke was the parade of cockroaches from uh, Zara Flam, and then um, we'll he's like, the, to the, like to the... the Duke is like impressed, right? Yeah. So like, but then it comes to Iolo, and he doesn't have his dreams with him. Then Kugel he brings like the stone that has the void. And, like, the king's like, okay, well, like, how do I know what this is? You know, you got to go in there and, like, prove it. And then Kugel does. And doesn't he meet, like, these entities that are in yeah, there? Yeah, I, like... I was just thinking of that. Remember, yeah. like, he, they, 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 I mean, it's like, it's like a whole dimension there. And they have, like, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. a whole hierarchy structure. And there is just, like, the, the, the most evil of the entities who's, like, a, you know, like a, a, a world destroyer. And they, 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 they kind of, you know, like, the uh well this is advanced because it's almost like a unary dimension right like it's it's all part of the same life form right like if you guys ever yeah, watched yeah, yeah. um yeah a futurama right there was the one that the beast with a thousand backs or whatever right like that tentacle universe right where it was a single tentacle monster and he was like the only life form in his universe right but but here but so i'm just that? i'm just looking over my notes like i i wrote like departure so I mean, to me, th this part year is like quite quite a departure from, you know, where we. But were I wanted before. to go. It's so a, it's almost like so pasted in, right? The like, execution method of the Duke, right, with those giant cylinders that he would just drop people into. And the idea is that it's just a, like a pit, and you're just laying on top of each other, right? And whichever pit's the fullest one, right? That you just pretty much are getting crushed by other people. And starving just in a pit of people, right? Like that was the execution method, right? <laughs> and anytime, like, like Kugel's about to, like, well, I don't really want to do it, and then the do, the, the Duke starts to kind of he just like haphazardly wander, and then ask to say, oh, which of the three tubes is the least full? You know, you know, wh whoever his sidekick is, and it's like, oh, I think the third one, sire, right? And of course, he's always just hinting that he's going to drop people, and, and and it's just like it's it's a very sort of like subtle, but like you know horrific sort of way to get executed right because just get dropped into a pit on top of other people right yeah I mean... pretty much just like in a dumpster of, of humans <laughs> right I just, like i, I just like forget God. i forget how like that that different dimension with the uh, yeah with the how does that tie to to the rest does it even tie at the end or it, it does well, he, not he, he, that, he that was sent... my point it's like it's like a departure but, from it. And then he's not believed it, by the Duke it, it, when he comes it's out. It's the implication. It's the implication that that, that being that, you know, like kind of uh, world destroyer, like kind of uh, takes possession of the, of, the, of the Duke or whatever. Like, it, it, is he the one that, you know, ends up killing the Duke? Like, I just... No, no, I think he poisons him. What it is is that the bag of dreams is soaked in its, like, it's, it's goo. And so when he comes out with the bag of dreams, right? And then, then of course, you know... He just kind of wipes it off, and then when 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 Yolo administers the dream to the Duke, it's tainted, right? And that's what causes the the Duke to yeah, go. Yeah, but into it's, that it's, a, it's a tainted with the entity, or it's just tainted and like it gives him a seizure. Like that's I just 
It's tainted with like the goo from the end. Okay, okay. Because I mean, I, I was just try trying to rationalize that like, there's gotta be a purpose to, to have that whole scene with the with the entity and like the kind of lesser, you know, like like you know, like uh, consciousness of the entity warning Kugel about that. Like that was very. Like really. well, that's what it was like. There's like, oh well, maybe you should search the the the, the hole for the bag of dreams. And it's like, oh well, well, it's not mine. It's 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 whatever he wants to do it. And for several minutes, an animated argument took place until Duke Orville intervened. Both parties have raised persuasive points. I feel, however, that I must rule against Kugel. I therefore decree that he must search his premises for the missing dreams and recover them if possible. Kugel disputed the decision with such vigor that the Duke or Bao turned to glance among the skyline, whereupon Kugel moderated his position. The judgment of your grace, of course, must prevail, right? So that's why he was sent in there to search for them, right? And yeah, like this entity yeah. can like produce these things, but then like, yeah, like it wants to like cross it, over. It, it just kind of talks to Kugel. Like it doesn't really do anything to him, right? Like, I mean... Well, I think it's tri Utha, right? Like, they're, they're all... Once again, it's kind of that same thing where, like, they're all part of Utha, right? The things that he's talking to are, like, part of Utha, right? Like, it's... Yeah, well, I, I got like... it. I got it was just, like, this... This kind of, you know, like, a, a bunch of... Uh, you know, like, like, a, like a kind of, like, spores in this hive mind thing going on. But you have, like, lesser hierarchies, right? And And... Those were the lesser ones. Like, anyways, yeah, to me, to me, it was like a kind of like a, like a fungus, like a conscious like fungus colony, like talking to one another, like like you know, yeah, like 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 my my Syria, like just talking to one another or something. Yeah. Yeah, but that that was very Lovecrafty and weird. Uh, So then, um, are you, are we done with this part? I mean, I think the next part is. So the one thing I was never sure on, right. right, is that the um, what is it? The guy with the singing fish, right? Who later on, um, Bazard. Yeah, Bazard. Like, cause yeah, like some, like he's like, oh, it looks like somebody drained the thing and all the fish died, and it never hints at it, but I'm always suspicious that it's Kugel who drained the water, right, to win. And I think they leave it to your imagination, <laughs> right? Because I think at this point he's trying to redeem Kugel. So maybe it was more blatant, but it's like, oh yeah, just all the water disappeared out of this tank, right? And that's what screws Bazard over there. And you sort of, and so I was always suspicious if it wasn't, you know, it seems, it seems a very Kugel or maybe it was YOLO or maybe it was just somebody else, right? But you always sort of wonder. I, I thought it was YOLO just to, to kind of get even because he didn't have his stones, like, yeah, sorry, I, his dreams. Uh, that, that's what I thought when I read it. But, like, you're right, though. It could be Kugel, for all we know. Well, like I said, I think what we get with YOLO is a very Kugel, right? We, 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 kind of, we kind of get somebody who's worse than Kugel, right? I'd agree with that. But only slightly. So that's what we see with this is that, yeah, like, you know, that, that, that Kugel might seem kind of craven, but, like, the, he always kind of, like, like I said, like, is he completely malicious about things or whatever else? But like, whereas YOLO is about much more kind of craven, you know. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, um, no, but what I said, like uh, before, like uh, Kugel trying to, to save Nisbet, like Kugel's not a, a, a complete, a complete, you know, like, like, cold-blooded sociopath to me like he has some small redeeming value yeah i mean definitely not too much though like if 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 his skin it's on the line like he you know he, he would put himself first but but he can actually like have emotional attachments with people which which i wouldn't see you know like uh, liane or maybe yolo having right like it's just really uh, all out. Well, like I said, that's that's the brilliance of Kugel because, like, I think with Liane, when he writes that character, right, he does write an unredeeming character. But then going back, when he writes Kugel, I think he tries to think of like you know trying to make a more sympathetic Li Liane, right? And that's what what he does. Absolutely. With Kugel. And Absolutely. of course, that's why he presents us with Yolo to show you know like you know that you can be worse, right? Kugel isn't great, but like I, like I was arguing with Liane, like given the circumstances of this time, right? You, you do have to, you do have to be a little bit, you know, 
selfish. No, Otherwise, you're dead you, within the first like, five seconds. And, the, and, the, and you guys, I'll, I'll say my ground, like, on that ship. Like, I feel like we needed Alien there to, like, I mean, obviously, like, it would break the story. Like, the story would stop there. Google would, like, you know, sail into the sunset. But, like, it would take Alien to, to take, you know, like, like uh, kick that, that bitch into the water who <laughs> kept, kept, kept putting on the light. Like, I mean, Lian would have just, you know, cold blooded, like, you know, just dispatched to her, you know, like, but like Kugel, Kugel's not that cold blooded. So that's my argument there. I, I think I said this previously, like, Kugel is the amalgamation of Lian the Wayfarer and Ulan Dor. No, but Ulan Dor is so good. And there is like a knight. He's so, he has so much like, 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 you know, like, um, he, he's like, he's like, a, he's like a case noble. Like he's like a noble. Well, like I said, the, 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 like the, the, there, there's like a three way there, right? What's the name of the guy at the very, the, the, the sixth story? Guile. Guile, right? So Guile is kind of like, you know, kind of the separate of them, right? Yeah. So Liane is just completely, you know, selfish and just trying to get ahead, right? Arguably because he has to sort of in this world. Whereas yeah, guy, you know, like, Ulan Dor, right? He was sort of born into that situation, right? And so, like, you know, but, 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 if anything, uh, Ulan Dor never really lives up to his full potential, right? He's too yeah. loyal to 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 the prince, his uncle, whom he actually sort of obviously kind of disdains, right? Because he's the loyal knight, but then, so of course, you know, he he's never really able to ride off into the sunset with the girl, right? He's too 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 affixed to it, right? Like you you kind of get like these different things, right? So yeah, like. You know, that's the Ulan Dor's kind of sin is that he's too much of a retainer, right? And then, you know, kind of kind of the ones who do out well in the end overall, it's um it's it's the reverse, right? So the guy that um Saiz is or Sain, right? Whichever which one's the bad one? Uh Saiz. Tur Turgin. Turg no 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 no. The the bad like where she meets him and his face is all corrupted, right? Because he fell in love with the evil witch, right? They ride off into the sunset, right? He gets his redemption, right? He was kind of the typical, like, you know, spoiled uh, prince, uh, and then he uh, kind uh, of uh, fell. Atar, right? Atar, yeah. So Atar, yeah. right? Atar gets his redemption, right? He was the spoiled prince, right? And then, of course, goes through this kind of soul-searching, right? Being forced as the monster. And then, of course, the same with, um, what is, which, which one's the naughty one? Sain or Saiz? The one that's born corrupted. Saiz. Saiz, right? So him and her... They get the redemption well, arc, right? They, and then they write off. They earn it, though. Like they go to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like they go to an arc, right, into a little pain to 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 earn it. Yeah, and and, and then to a certain extent, like, and then that's what we get with um, what's the last guy's name? Uh, Guile. Guile, right? So Guile, right, is born sort of naive, you know, naively possible, you know, in that he doesn't want to fit in and that he wants to sort of break outside of things, and so you you kind of get all these different sorts of you know paths for people, right? And they're kind of all contrastive to each other, right? So I think I think what you get with right. with Kugel though is you get somebody who, you know, is ignoble, right? Is a peasant, right? Isn't you know like the redeemed prince or anything like that, or you know the naive, naive right? He's kind of like I said, I but, think it's but, what but you he but he he kind of thinks himself to be like a knight errant, right? Well, like, like I, I mean, said, like this is the this is but, the thing. Like, like the other guys are born with a silver <laughs> spoon in their mouth, and they either have to lose it and regain it or whatever right whereas with with kugel he, he's much like liane right he's you essentially get the sense that he's born with nothing which is what you get with liane right because it's all it's all facade with liane right but um but with kugel right but of course liane's easy to hate whereas kugel he tries to balance that it's like okay yes kugel kugel is sort of you know you know takes what he can in life but of course that's necessary to his survival right like ulan dor can be all noble and high-minded about this crap because he's essentially born into you know rather you know kind circumstances right whereas if you have somebody like kugel it takes a little bit of kind of being a grifter to kind of survive right not that but i mean he... i mean i mean kugel thinks himself to be high-minded a lot of well, the time he, he, right like i mean he, he has you know... He he plays on it right like it's that whole fake it till you make it type thing. He fakes it, and he puts on the pretenses of it. But you you get underneath those pretenses that insecurity right. Like anytime it's like, am I not Kugel the clever right? Like whenever he's he's been shown up and he's he's about to feel guilt about like he's like no 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 like like 
it's like I said, he has to sort of <laughs> stay positive about it. Like he knows what yeah, he yeah. is, but of course, what what allows him to sort of excel and still thrive, you know, is that he's he's always sort of blindly. I, I don't know if I want to say it's even optimism, right? Like, but like he 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 always kind of like. It's it's an illusion that he keeps buying into to keep himself going, right? Yeah, for sure. Because for sure. he has to, right? Whereas, like, yeah, somebody like Ulan Dor, it's easy for him to sort of, you know, be high minded or e- even guile, right? Which, of course, he he's he's right. a little bit butt hurt because you know he he he's kind of against the grain of things, so he gets kicked out of the town. But like, he has to sort of suffer to to kind of break his naivete there, right? Whereas Kugel isn't even born with naivete, right? He's you, you can tell he's born, like, you know, into harsh circumstances and, you know, just kind of continues to get by. Yeah, I mean, so when we started this, Kugel was pretty much a merchant, right? Like, no. He was um, a grifter, right? Like I, like it says, like he found like a, a grifter, coffin, yeah. a white coffin. He melts down somebody's coffin. <laughs> And then makes a bunch of fake talismans to like sell. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. So right, I mean, right. he, he's 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 yeah, he's just a hustler. Yeah, right? he's just, in the middle he's of doing, a rift. Like, yeah, when we, when we made it the first time, he's in the middle of a rift. Like he's not, he's not like he 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 goes rogue after. Like yeah, he's he's just hustling as we meet in the first time. And like that, I think thing said it. Like we just get this idea. Like okay, this is just like just the the, the next hustle, right? Like he's this is like a, he's just he just rolled off another one, right? That's what I got when I read it. And then, of course, he tries to do the hustle against Yukonu there, and then, of course, he gets trapped into something. And, of course, like, we, we always see this, like, he'll never admit his own flaws, right? Oh, Yukonu did this to me, curse you. And, of course, Yukonu's a bad guy, but, of course, he got screwed on it because he tried, right? He he didn't have to go try and screw Yukonu, right? Like, like, that's always the thing, right? He's a bad guy screwing worse guys, right? Yeah. Um, back to the story. Uh, something that I, I, you know, like what I said before, like oh, like you know, like like these these vignettes, like they, they kind of tie things, they kind of set up things. But like, I, I, I don't like a bit how like, uh, you know, the whole thing, how he how he meets the the four wizards and like how he he kind of stumbles upon Basford on his on his way out of town. Like it, it's kind of very spontaneous you know it's kind of a lot, what you said think like oh well this guy doesn't have luck or like things are always kind of hard for him like i feel like this kind of lands on his lap here where like he just meets basra on the way out of town and it's like oh well let's go meet my let's go meet my four dads and it's so convenient that well like i said it's it's the way that he meets basra that makes me really suspicious that he was the one who screwed Bazard, right like and of course like that's kind of the thing right he screwed Bazard, and then he kind of like, to me, it kind of falls in line, right? That, of course, then, of course, he, you know, Bazard helps him. So, in the end, he, of course, he does help Bazard and his, his, his father is there, right? But, yeah. um, no, but I'm, that's why what, I'm, what I'm saying, I'm always suspicious. Regardless, though, it's like, um, what I said, like, I, I wish this was set up even a little bit before where, like, you know, like something ties it to the rest. Cause this is just like, it, it happens, you know, it's kind of like, oh, well, like, you know, kind of a bit Dio Six Machina, like, okay, you have like, the answer to everything, like he's just, you know, in one one instant, and especially with seeing like this guy doesn't have too much luck. So to me, that was like incongruent with the rest. We're like, okay, like he gets really lucky that like this one guy in the whole world who has the key he has the, you know, like he, he's for that <laughs> have the key to you know kind of free Google from the to to you know like help him achieve his his revenge, you know, like arc. They have the answer, and like this one guy, he meets him like you know, like, just on the road, like, you know, oh, hey, like, you know, where are you going? I'm going there, give me a ride. Like, anyway, you just, I mean, it, 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 it's, obviously it's fun, but I'm just, I'm just thinking of, like, how, like, everything else is set up and the, 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 the scales and all that and, like, how everything works, like, progressively. This, to me, felt, like, a bit tacked on, but I guess you have to wrap it up. But, yeah, that's the feeling I got. Sort of, like I said, I think that's why I assume that it's Kugel who screwed Bazard, right? By screwing Bazard, he screwed him and, of course, did something ignoble. But in the long run, that's what caused him to meet up with Bazard and help him save his fathers and so on and so forth. So it's kind of the mixed bag that is Kugel, right? Yeah, you're, he, you're right, though. That, that, that will tie it up a bit more to to the story for sure. Like he, he being kind of a catalyst of, of, of that encounter. After. Well, and of course, because he's coming, he's like, oh, yeah, no, I'm so sorry what happened to you. That's completely unfair, right? Like, no, like... It, 
with that to the back of your mind, it's like, but it was probably you who did it, right? So, um, j- just coming back to what we were talking about with like Kugel on like he was basically a hustler, like a grifter when we first meet him. Um, have either of you seen the movie Nightcrawler with Jake Gyllenhaal? Yeah, I have. Of course, amazing movie. One of my favorite movies, bro. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Zinc, have you seen it? Because like I know you hate spoilers, so I don't think so. It's it's, uh, it's, it's like Nightcrawler. You, you have to watch this movie. It's like the. I mean, the acting, this guy, the, the way the acting, yeah. the way he plays the kind of person he's playing, like, it, it's extremely convincing. He's a lot like Kugel. He's right? a lot like Kugel. Like, um, yeah, and, like, the, 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 same, yeah. the same, now what you're saying, and Adrian, like... Yeah. Well, it says it's neo-noir. I mean, and the thing is about noir film, which is a big topic in film, um, once again, it, noir films, like, anytime you find this, like, you always find that there's, like, a certain genre in every art discipline that people are way into because theoretically it's cool. Like for music, it's jazz, right? Every musician you meet loves jazz because it's this sort of free willing, you know, session and blah, blah, blah. Noir is the same way where it's this, it's this, this genre that isn't really all that interesting except to filmmakers. So I am familiar with the concept of the noir film and the, the entire concept of the noir film is this kind of this anti-hero, right? That's, so I, I kind of get the gist. I'll try and watch it one of these days. I'm not a big fan of Jake Gyllenhaal. No, 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 me neither, though. Yeah, me neither, it, but like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't well. matter. He plays it really well. And like what Adrian is getting, what Adrian was getting at, though, like the, more the psychology of this character, like kind of being like, like having like this internal narrative. They're like, no, 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 I'm right. And like, you know, I'm, I'm going for it, right? Like I'm going to hustle this. And like, yeah, I'm yeah. on the right. I'm on the right. Like that internal, internal dialogue, like it's kind of like Kugels. Like he... That, that being, you know, like, like kind of filtered through the character that Jane Holt plays, like, it's it's really awesome. Like, it's it's worth watching. And I'm going to say, too, I'm not a fan of this guy either, or Robert Pattinson, but, like, sometimes they surprise me. And I'm like, oh, yeah, they actually, you know, like, play, you know, like, play, play that real well. So, worth watching, Zink, if you ever have a chance. Yeah, no, I, I get the idea, though. Like, I'm, I'm sure, because, like, like I said, that's the theme of noir um, which actually would have been the, the the era that Jack Vance was coming out of, right? Like yeah. The 50s oh, there was kind of the high yeah. day Big of wave. noir. Yeah, of course. Uh, huge wave. Of- and that's always what it is. It's, it's very much this sort of mixed character, right? This sort of, fa- like, you know, selfish hero, right? Who's kind of, you know, whatever. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I now that I'm thinking back on the movie, um, the Jake Gyllenhaal's character, this Louis Bloom, I guess he's he's in a lot of ways he's more he's like Kugel but at the same time maybe he's more like, like um Lee in the Wayfarer for sure definitely yeah anyway um so the, this part with the four wizards what do you guys think well this is obviously kind of just yeah. a wrap up to it right like kind of how he kind of overcomes them and he helps the four wizards and they help him and they come up with a scheme that kind of goes off, but then he has to play it by ear and luckily has that Kugel, the clever, right? But of course, once again, it's the whole thing, right? Like when he meets, you know, Yukonu along the way there, you know, and Yukonu is like always trying to come up with another way. It's like, oh, but I don't want to be indebted to you. I don't want to be indebted to you. It's like, okay, I can write in your thing, but there's not, you're not going to ask me for one little thing or yeah, whatever. But, but, but remember, and then he tricks him to remember get Remember the, the wizards warn him about this? They tell him, like don't be in you kind of death, death no matter what right like he it's something that the, the wizards tell him too so he, he's made aware by them. well this gets like, like i said this gets back into the whole classical mythology right there's always the trickster yeah. right rumpelstiltskin they're one of these things right you do not want to be in their debt because they're always going to find that one thing and they're going to have an oak right it's or the devil the, it's the deal with the devil type thing right the crossroads there to go back to blues right and voodoo and whatnot like it's always this thing like whatever you know you don't want to be in their debt because they're going to find you know they're always more clever than you are so i I mean this part i found kind of um you know interesting or like actually i don't know if it's interesting it's like in a sense it's kind of corny it's like he he just gets to almary and you canoe is just there like by chance, he just like kind of no, runs into it's him. It's established. You know, on it's the established. Street. He has spies. Remember when he's with the four wizards? Like one of you kind of spies is like a, this this kind of like 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 vapor cloud thing, 
and they have to change it. Oh, right, right, right. They have to like, like you know, like, like derail the conversation. But but I thought they had, I I I thought they had countermeasures to like, um, you know, it was like it tells him when he's in there. But I think right, like, but I I think earlier on in the journey, even it's kind of hinted that like, like I think when he's dealing with, with um, uh, what's what's what, what the. Twango, right? I think it's 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 strongly indicated that Twango probably told you Canoe, or whatever his code name was, right? So like it, it's kind of no like you Canoe kind of suspects that you know, um, Kugel has the spatter light, right? Yeah, he sees it there yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. He's, well, he's strongly he, he suspicious knows, of it. He knows the whole thing, right? Like it's missing. He knows he uh, Chong got it stolen, right? Like he, he knows the whole the whole thing, like uh, for sure, and like and like you know like. Twango probably told him, oh, I have this, this vagabond guy here, like, looks like this, like this. Maybe he, he could be suspicious for sure, right? And plus the spies, right? Because it, 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 it's implied in this vignette with the four wizards, like, the spy are kind of all around. And kind of, like, like, like they, they've been watching. They watch a lot, right? So it's like they even know where Kugel is going, like, when he's going back to uh, – um, when he's going back to, uh, uh, what is it, like, by the rivers and whatever, like, he's being watched like it's so it's implied like kind of in retrospect that he's he's at some point he you know he was watched uh where he was going right but when he was coming into almory and he, but like I, it, yeah and like i feel like the closer to almory like the the, the heavier with spies is uh, with the yukanus uh but i, I mean like right. this idea like you know yukanus kind of, kind of surveys like the, the land around like that that to me was was kind of established there with the four wizards. Like, okay, yeah, no, this guy has this guy has like active spies all around. Uh, but like, I mean, we, we, Kugel wasn't aware of it before, but like, with the four wizards make him aware, and it makes sense that they, at least you kind of kind of knows like he's he's kind of vague, you know, like location, right? Well, even when he first meets B- B- Razard there on the road, he's like, oh, I would never say anything bad about you, Canoe. Yeah. Right, like he knows, he knows he's he knows that he's now within Yukonu's yeah, kind of territory realm. Yeah, exactly. Territory. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, but I said like I get definitely get that vibe of the spies and reinforced later with the four wizards who explicitly say, "Oh yeah, no, like his spies look like this, like this. We have some around." Like, um, but yeah, I that didn't surprise me that like you kind of would know um, most of it and like. And I mean, we, we, we find out later, right? Like, it's kind of you kind of was like, you know, like, like passion project. Like, he's, it's kind of life goal to, to, to gather the scales. Like, he actually has this armature and that. Like, I mean, he's been working on this, it's like his main thing. So it would make sense. He would keep like close tabs on that. Well, so again, I, it's, it's his deal with the devil, right? That he's going to think that he's going to become Sadlark, right? Yeah. But, so I mean, do, doesn't he become sad, sad Lark? So like, so like I said, does, once again, right? This like, I mean, this is the kind of one-upmanship, right? He has the Ambroid, right? But you know, then of course he tricks him because of course he his power is nullified by. It. But then this is where like once again, and once again, this is almost kind of like like I said, it kind of comes back to that. Like I said, where in some ways, um, Kugel's a natural scientist, right? That is to say, he's kind of figured out the way that the um, the sky break spatter light works right there. Um, yeah. And, and of course, when Sadlock says, well, it's going to protect me as much as it will you. And then it kind of like tingles in his hand and he's like, oh, okay, no, this is going to be, so he, he removes the diambroid. And of course now he's playing it by ear, but then he does this whole kind of thing where he's like, oh, well first let me recharge my essence with it. Right. Knowing full well, that that's, you know, he's using the fake one in his hand. Right. Cause of course now he's using the old rogue sleight of hand here. Right. So he touches it to his forehead, and of course he gets you can do all. He's like, no, it's all for me. I want to touch it to my brow, right, and all this stuff, right? Because of course he knows what happens. Because the thing is that you can do kind of vaguely knows what the spatter light's supposed to do, but he doesn't actually know how it works, right? Quite like you that um, Kugel does, and so he tricks you can do into putting it to his forehead, and then it, it, you know, and then he walks out, right? And it, of course it sucks him up. But yeah, so like I'm trying to re- review it here. So like yeah, so it's it's clear that Yukino applied the scale to his brow, and then Kuku goes out to the fountain and listens, silent. You know, in in this position, he listens gravely to the awful noises arousing from Yukino's throat. 
So he's given him, yeah, the, the real spatter light and killed him. But of course, that means that the spatter light's been reunited with Sadlark. So it's Sadlark who comes wandering out and it's like, Kugel, where is Kugel? I've consumed Eel, you know, each of the four, including Eel and Wizard, requests that Kugel, you know, rejoin with them, right? So it doesn't go exactly to plan, but then he uses the fact what he's known about Sadlark, right? That Sadlark can't deal with light, right? Because he was born in the darkness. And of course, his weakness to water, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Kugel found that out that like he could handle the spatter light and the other scales. Um, he could handle them when they were wet, right? So it's like it stands to reason that that like water, um, you know takes their power away basically but but w weren't the other wasn't uh, wasn't there other scales that like combined with the spatter light that you well, so that's had thing. already so collected well, so that's like... he created but essentially the spatter light is is sad larks like essentially it's his heart or his soul right it's right i mean this is once again this ancient idea right like that's why like in the bible it talks about the heart right and my heart left right Ancient Jews believed that the heart was where the soul resided, right? Ancient Greeks believed it was the liver, right? And these days, of course, we think it's the brain, right? Like, where does the soul reside, right? So in the case of Sadlark, it res resides in the sky, uh, in the pectoral yeah, I, I, I thought of, I thought of it like kind of like the ring of, you know, from, from, from Sauron, Lord of the Rings. Like, it's like, well, all the power is concentrated on this, you know, like, like particular, you know, like, like, um, uh, component right and it's uh it's like um it's like a horcrux from harry potter well that's the thing so he needs to re rejoin the spatter light with the other scales to recreate so sad lark right and of course that's what happens right when you can puts it to his forehead it sucks him into it but of course then the spatter light is reunited with the rest of sad lark scales albeit he's smaller now um and that's when he wanders out there, right? Because Yukonu vaguely understood that that's what he needed to, re re to, to um, bring back Sadlark, but he didn't understand these other properties of it. Yeah, and like what I said, what I said before, though, I, I love this. That it's 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 been set up since very early. I feel like you know, like this being kind of the resolution that like what you said, saying like Google uses like kind of the science of ha having like you know like the scientific me scientific method. How to use it this power light but like it's set up super early okay like water you know like nullifies that and like nullifies it the effect of it and like to to have that you know like just being at the end like the the, the, the main you know, like like a redeeming factor is like oh that's so cool because it's it's a solid show so early like i this is why i i just find structurally like this was so much better than the first one uh and like the, the payoff just feels bigger because of that Wait, didn't we miss a part though? Wasn't the guy that originally sent Kugel to rob Yukonu? Doesn't doesn't he like run into him again at um, at Yukonu's palace? Isn't that la Briefly? isn't that I could be in, in the first book? Yes, yeah, it's, it's the, the first book. book. Yeah, oh, yeah. is that the first book? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, that's the thing. Right. He tries to cast the spell on, on both. both of them. Yeah, but then casts it on himself because he's sloppy about it. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Uh, I'm just gonna warn you guys. I, I'm leaving 30 minutes. I, I have, yeah. I have to get ready for so, tomorrow. So yeah, and of course I love the like, once again, like I said, like the way that you that 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 Kugel kind of takes over there again at the end, right? Like, like I said, like you could very much see, foresee it, like, and and this is not unusual, right? Maybe he changes his name, and he's one of the other wizards that we see again, right? And he's just changed his name from Kugel to something else after you know millennia of stuff, right? Maybe he finally does stop making silly mistakes at this point he learns from it but i guess what's sort of interesting to me about all these books right is how much time kind of passes between like what age jack vance was when he re wrote each of these right so when he writes the dying earth right i think he's in his 30s right when he writes kugel Co the, the the first kugel he's sort of middle-aged and then when he writes this one he's much older right and Sort of like like the focus of each of those, right? The the first one's much kind of more adventurous and much more kind of, you know, 
very much about kind of, you know, a young guy. And in each case, it's about a young guy trying to find love and, and, and so on and so forth out of more, you know, and, and sort of takes on that. Whereas with Kugel, with the first Kugel, it's much more like it, especially the way that he kind of like what ups him there and leaves him just rotting there on the, the shore of it. Right. It's kind of that, like, I guess you could say it's almost kind of that um, pessimism of middle age. And then with this one, there is more of a redemption arc, right? Kind of as, as you get older. And in some ways he almost moves through the seat, right? Like in some, in, in, a, in a weird sort of way, I would say the dying earth is sort of modernist, right? It's, it's people just trying to find love and happiness in, the, in, in, in this bad world, right? Whereas in, um, in, in the first Kugel, it's, it's much more postmodern, right? It's very sarcastic and sort of ironic. Everything's ironic. Whereas with this one, um, and, and, and maybe you know what I'm talking about here, Carlo, right? This kind of, post postmodernism or sometimes people call it the new sincerity or something like this where it has that irony but at the same time it almost kind of has that that humanism again right where it's it's a it's a sort of absurd ironic world but at the same time it's 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 kind of returned to like like i said this this new sort of sincerity right i don't know what your thoughts are on that carlo or it's kind of like you see him pass through all three of those sort of fiction right and even though it's fantasy even though it's the same character and and or or pseudo character maybe in the first one but like yeah the way he kind of goes from like you know that that sort of modernism postmodernism post postmodernism across these three books are you there carlo or I hear you. Your mic's open. Yeah, Carlo, can you can you hear Zinc or? Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, did did you hear what I said or? No, I I I, well, I was listening to you, but the last part, uh, yeah, I I don't know. I... So I like, guess so. Like I don't know what you got me. Like kind of like in the first one, it's more modernist, right? It's it's kind of just like you know about a guy trying to get the girl right and the second one is postmodernist right it's all it's uh, it's irony everywhere which one is a guy trying to get the girl which one? like in the in the dying earth in the dying earth right the six stories right like for the most part it's about the guy getting the girl right like it's very modernist in that sort of way right it's it's it's, it's very sort of humanistic yeah. and, and 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 guile well but even um oh, whatever his name is with Saïs there right and, and or even Turgeon and whatever right like it's about a guy right like finding you know finding the girl right like i'd say six out of the four right well actually all of like leanne's kind of a weird take on it but each or and like the second and third one right like it's 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 very sort of modernist in that way right sorry you you guys you keep cutting out i don't know is it neat you guys hear me clear or, or like uh yeah I, I can hear both of you just fine um uh, like can, can you hear zinc, Carlo? No, or? it cuts out. Like, it just, you know, it kind of robots out for a bit, and then I lose him. But, like, yeah, um, that's weird. Can, can you hear me now? Or Yeah, I hear you. Okay, so I, I guess my point was, and you, like, when you talk about modernism, right, it's sincere, right? Postmodernism, it's this insincerity, this irony everywhere, right? Yeah. The irony. And then, and, and then... There, there's, this, there's, this, there's this new concept of post-postmodernism where it has irony in it, but it's 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 almost like an arc again where it's like people call it the new sincerity right so yeah yeah in it's, the dying it's, it's, earth, a, it's a whole i mean it's a, it's even in music and like you know and like it's a whole like philosophical yeah. current right yeah, yeah or like uh, so the, so the, that's so that's almost what i see with this like in in the 15 20 years between these books right you almost see that fans move through those right so in the first one it's it's you know the guy trying to get the girl and trying to make his way whereas the second one it's all irony right like Kugel gets screwed at the beginning and then it ends like with him ironically screwed at the end. Whereas in this one, he kind of still has a lot of that irony in there, but with more kind of sincerity and redemption. Right. No, no, ab absolutely. I mean, it, it, there is, I mean, it, it is, it is like, like the, the, the step after the, uh, the uh, kind of postmodern, like, like, yeah, like, um, irony and like more like they, they kind of, you know, like, more like a, a nihilistic, like you know, like like view of like of like existence. Uh, 
whereas this one there is like a there is the, the redemption of the uh, the new sin story thing um it, it's like a whole arc like for, for vans to go to go to cycle through those so uh d- definitely and like i said any and you can see because like i said i think he was in his 30s when he wrote the first one he was in middle age when he wrote the second one and then when he wrote this one right of course he's now older right like so it's it's kind of like a reformed pessimism, right? The first one, there's a lot of optimism. The second one, there's a lot of pessimism. And this one, it's kind of like he he sees the optimism in pessimism, uh, right? Like you, he sees that, you know, life has hard knocks, but you can, I guess, take something out of it, I guess. Well, I, I mean, how much does that have to do with the Kugel character having to do his journey all over again, right? Like, I mean, you know... Well, he gave it he, to he him, right? Have, like I said... He, he would have to gain a bit more sincerity if he is Kugel the Clever and he's somewhat learning from his mistakes, right? So, like... Well, but like I said, like, when you look at the end of the last... of the of the, of the first Kugel novel, like, it's almost like he does it, like, as a joke. It's like, oh, yeah, he does... He goes through all this and he's back at square one, right? Like, he sees... Yeah, see, yeah, it's only pessimistic, right? Whereas with this one, he sees redemption, right? In in that pessimism, right? He sees, of course, that the world is ironic and dark and stuff like that, but that you can still take something out of it at the end, right? It's not just a straight path always, but, you know. So, so I mean, do, do you think that Vance, are, are you saying that because there was such a gap between when Vance wrote Eyes of the Overworld and then uh, Kugel the Sky Breaks Spatterlight, are, are you saying that, like, Vance sort of matured as a man? And, well, like, I'd say that's... both were, both were, right? So, like, the first right. one, it's very sort of naive in, in a lot of ways and, 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 and a little bit more stark, right? Whereas once he's getting there in the middle age, everything's a bit more sort of vague and negative and dark and just sort of flippant, right? And then right. once once he gets kind of to early, early, you know, like I think he was in his 60s, probably, right? Once he's getting into that point, right? He's kind of, it's it's it's, it's much more reflective, right? Like he, he's, he, he's not completely, you know, gone back to like the optimism of youth, but it's the optimism of an old man, I suppose. Yeah, well, it's kind of that, that like that past, past the irony when, when you, when you've seen like, you know, like, like the world for Reed Darklands, but then you realize like, you know, like, that, that it's it's not all like you know like like just just you know it's not all negative like you know like despite everything like you know uh, uh, life has has you know like like it's been it's been worth living that's that's what I, I I see there in his in what he's saying right like I mean um, there is like a you know like there are things that are positive uh, it's like a glimmer of it and like but uh, by the way I mean I just wanted to, to to I mean tie this to the end like what do you guys think of the end the way it ends with like Kugel just kind of like doing what, what he, what he likes to do best, right. Just having like some, some like vintage wine and like, you know, like having like a, a, a big dinner all that, like had also tied to, to that uh, new sincerity uh, post postmodernist idea. Well, that's the thing. Like what you're hoping in this one is that Kugel is more mature than the last time he kind of settled into you stuff, right. That of course he's, he's still who he is. And he still wants the finer things and that he wants to, you know, put on these pretensions and stuff like that. But maybe now he can finally be that way, right? It's like, oh, do you just want to wander off into the, and just live in a small cabin? He's like, no, 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 I want to do this stuff. So you can hope that maybe, like I said, that he'll he'll be a noble wizard. Doesn't he discuss that with the, um, with the other wizards or something like like I, f- I feel like there was a discussion about that like well that's that's how it his ends. retirement like, oh right are now. you going to come home with us or are you going to go live because originally that's what he was telling you can do it's like oh no i just want to retire to a nice cabin by the woods you know there and of course like i said like you can see the arc here kugel is essentially now a wizard right that is to say what makes somebody a wizard is simply possessing these tools and this knowledge and and sort of a working understanding of what they are right it's it's it's, it's quite haphazard what makes a wizard, right? And that's what undoes Yukonu, right? He's not all powerful. He makes certain mistakes. And that's what we see with the other wizards, even in the dying earth, and even more so in 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 the um whatever the what 
uh, whatever the Magnificent is called. Uh, Rialto the Magnificent. Or the Marvelous. I always want to say Magnificent. Yeah. But, like, that's what you get where it's kind of a bit, like, yeah, like, a bit of luck. But, it, like, so essentially now Google is a wizard, right? Is he, though? Or is he just going to, like, spend his life, like, like drinking vintage wine? And, and, and Well, I mean, I mean, but that's what a wizard does, right? Well, yeah. But he's taken over, right? Like, it talks about how he's taking over Yukonu's affairs. And yeah, running his uh, palace and possessing he, his he's things, diligent right? uh, with it, yeah, with all the uh, all the uh, relics and all that. But I, I, I was thinking too that, like you know, like the whole like like a uh, uh, new sincerity like idea uh, philosophy is that you know like a, a let's say for Google, right, like a, a, a positive change, right? Uh, it's kind of like 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 a like a matter of like you know more like personal like like execution, like personal you know like like taste, right? Like I mean. He, he he doesn't have to he doesn't have to you know like uh, like what you're saying like he's discussing at the end right? it's like oh what are you gonna do are you gonna go live in a cabin and like you know like ponder everything he's like no no I'm just gonna have, you know like like be chill with like you know like like my things and like be be glamorous and all this so I feel like um, there's a, a a lot of that that's like a kind of the idea of uh, uh, yeah like changing possibly it's more like a personal thing it doesn't have to be you know like a, what what everyone is expecting anyway sorry to interrupt you go ahead what, what, what i mean kugel has always been a sucker for luxury right like wh whenever there's a chance for him to have luxuries he fully takes advantage of it every single yeah, time but, right but, in in fact that's almost his weakness yeah, but, but, right what, what i like, get it's it's like it's kind of like 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 I kind of, um, and you said things like, "Oh, at the beginning it was just innocence, right?" But I, I feel like here is it's like the whole. I mean, that, that there is kind of some some sense of innocence at, at the at the at the far end of the experience too, right? That like the irony. Well, I mean, we can look at it here. Like Bazard ventured a suggestion: there are far parts of the world to be seen. The floating city of Jihaz is said to be splendid. There is also the land of the pale ladies, which you might care to explore, or will you pass your days in Almery? The future is blurred as if in a fog. I'm guessing it's Kugel talking. The same is true for all of us, declared Pelasius. Pelias, Pelias. Why make plans? The sun might well go out tomorrow. Kugel performed an extravagant gesture. That thought must be banished from our minds. Tonight we sit here drinking purple wine. Let us tonight last forever. This is my own sentiment, said Archimbast. Now is now. There is never more to experience than the single now, which recurs at an interval exactly one like, second in length. Bazard knit his brows. What a... The first now and the last now, are these to be regarded as the same entity? Archimbos spoke somewhat severely. Bazard, your questions are too profound for the occasion. The songs of your musical fish would be more appropriate. Their progress is slow, said Bazard. I have appointed a cantor and a contralto choir, but the harmony is not yet steady. No matter, said Kugel. Tonight we will do without. You can do wherever you are, in underworld, overworld, or no world, whatever. We drink to your memory in your own wine. This is your the final joke. And feeble though it may be, it is at your expense, and hence enjoyed by the company. Sylphs make play with the de decanters. Once again to the goblets. Bazard, have you tried this excellent cheese? Vasker, another anchovy. Let the feast proceed, right? It, you know, it's funny. We didn't really talk about it. So when... Um when Yukonu becomes Sadlark and then Kugel defeats him with the water. After that point, Kugel, like, he kind of does a look around, like, um, Yukonu's palace just to, like, make sure that he has not, you know, kind of, you know, like, escaped or, like, is playing another trick, right? So, like, I, I almost thought that Yukonu would let, was, like, going to pop up one last time but like like right at the end here but like well what's it, it good? does I think, actually just end right i so. think that's supposed to because of course we're like oh is this just going to be going a cycle is he going to make another stupid mistake like the last book so i think we're supposed to get the sense here that 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 kugel has matured right he's much more sort of careful and conscientious after all of this right and right. maybe now he will properly kind of fulfill the role of the sort of magician right and of course, I mean, he's, he's not perfect. He's not like completely benevolent. I mean, he still likes the finer things, but now he's kind of growing into that, right? And th this is the thing you'll find a lot, right? Like, like the fake it till you make it sort of mentality, right? I mean, this is how you become a, you know, uh, a, a, um, you know, a, a wine, you know, expert or one of these things, right? You fake it till you make it. You kind of 
you act the part and you take on that sort of persona, right? So, I mean, I guess yeah. that's kind of what we're seeing here, right? Is that, is that he's, he's, he's careful and, that, and of course he's, he's, he's living it up and he's not overly ambitious. But I mean, he hasn't become like totally like, you know, you know, like benevolent, I guess in the sense, right? He's not like wanting to just pass his days quietly or to be, you know, go back and discuss philosophy with the, the wizards and all this stuff, right? He's kind of, you know, settling in as, like I said, a wizard. I mean, essentially he will become a wizard and hopefully he'll be a mature wizard, right? And 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 not not not. I mean, you know, once you have that kind of power, right? You're not like out there, kind of like as a martyr, you know, sacrificing everything for everybody. But you know, you're kind of indulging a little bit, and hopefully not too much. I mean, it, it's interesting you say it's like the fake it till you make it, like you know, being interested in wine. You know, like actually, I I remember like I was in school this is probably like 18 years ago i would say and i was on the go train and like there were these two guys and they were talking about like wine and like like dining and stuff like this and different food but it it was like basically like these guys lived for that stuff it's like it's almost, it's it's not like they're really like faking it till they make it it's like the end goal is not to get anywhere or for like appearances. Like well, they actually like... just enjoyed like dining and wine and like talking about it and discussing like the texture of the food. Well, that's like, the, it's, it's, know, the, it's, like, it's the difference yeah. between like false pretenses and I guess honest pretenses, right? Like if you're into right. wine, you're going to talk like that. Right. But are you talking like that because you're trying, because that's, who you're you think you're expected to be or is because that's what you really want to be right like right, if you want right, to right. be into wine right but are you into wine because you actually want to enjoy it and want to act you know partake of it because you do think it's a fine thing or are you just doing it because that's what fancy people do right 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 yeah so it's, it's, it's kind of both things right you will act pretentious when you're really into something but is it, I guess, once again, that new sincerity, are you actually, gen right, is there a genuineness to sort of the absurdity of how into something you are, right? And well, that's, it, that's kind of the arc. And, and it's, it's kind of being like, you know, it, it's kind of being uh, uh, honest with, with your own dishonesty, right? It's okay, I'm doing it because I'm, you know, I'm being dishonest. I'm honest, I'm being dishonest because I'm really into this, right? It's like my way into it, so... I feel like that's part of it too, where like he's kind of believing in himself, even if he's he's he has been you know like faking it for so long, right? It's like, and we see at the end, right? Like how he plays, you kind of how he plays. So the whole thing is like, he's kind of like like really like like you know like, and, and he's being actually clever instead of just telling people he's being clever, like the the last vignette basically how he he uses all he he's learned so far, right? To to overcome what what you know he, he he couldn't for like the past uh you know like the whole well i think that's the important thing about kugel so, if, uh... if he does have one good trait it's that he can learn right he makes a lot of mistakes and he's not always Absolutely. benevolent but he can learn um at least in this story but maybe more like even in the other story right that's the important thing right is that he can learn but I mean, at, at, at the so, beginning, he, get, yeah. he gets he gets like bitter and like you know like for most of the story he gets bitter, but like being tricked and all that. I'm like, but at, in the end, he, you know, like the the whole irony, right? Like the, especially in the first in Eyes of the Other World, like you know, like it's kind of like he he has become kind of playful with the irony. He's not fighting and he's not being bitter or like caustic about it. He you know even at, like you kind of is kind of you know like like taunting him on the road and he's like ah. Eh, whatever like he's like sure you know he, he he's not being like like yeah he i mean he, let's say he, like in past google had he met you can on the road he'd be like oh fuck this you know you can he was like god the worst luck whatever but now he's kind of rolling with it so i feel like that that new sincerity where like he 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 lets the irony that you know that that governs his life kind of just you know like be a part of it and, and be playful uh be a playful thing right um so, yeah. Well, I think that's another, like, as, as much as I love these stories just purely on a plot level, I think what we see here, like I said, and of course, you know, I'm still relatively young, but um, 
this arc, right? This arc that we see in Jack Vance. And like I said, normally I never want to, but I'm very tempted to read his autobiography, right? Normally I don't care about these guys' autobiographies, but given, given his ability to write and the way he would write and the stuff he writes about, right? Like I actually am mildly interested in reading Jack Vance's, you know, like, and even just the title of it, right? It's me, Jack Vance, right? Like he's, he's very flippant about it, right? Like, it's like, if somebody wants to read this, then read it. If not, right? Like he's, he's very sort of unpretentious, right? He's pretentious in the sense that he's writing about himself and he knows that, but he's also flippant about it, right? He's not like giving it like a, you know, a, a, the, the, you know, a life of an author or something like pretentious like that. It's like, it's like, no, this is, this is me writing about me. I know I'm writing about me. And so if you want to read this, I, 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 I think, I think he's me. being just flippant. Like he, th that's not pretentious. I mean, pretentious is what you just said. Like, well, no, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's unpretentious. Like he's not, he's not like, you know, the, the, the memoirs of an author, right? Or, you know, the, the life of a writer or a scribe <laughs> or something. It's like, no, okay. You know, you're writing a, 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 a you, you know you're reading an autobiography about me and that's what it's about it's about me jack vance so like you you get that sense from him and and very much like and it brings up this like sort of deeper thing right yeah with the new sincerity and it's something i bring up in these rooms all the time right that like for the most part i describe myself as a nihilist and people are like oh well that's so negative it's like no 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 it's freeing right this idea that when you realize that the world is sort of like negative like that but that you you can kind of say like but i'm going to carve my piece out of it right out of this flippancy right that's so that's i think the win so you're kind of bringing me to something that i was thinking about because like i mean what i was trying to like separate myself from when i was reading this was like you know guys like us would like this kind of story right so like i was trying to put myself in the shoes of somebody else like do you think that there are people out there that would not like this story Wait, wait. Can, can can you can you repeat that? What do you mean, a guy like us like this story? Like, like I mean, like I mean, we're definitely more like, you know, sort of like we want to carve our own path kind of thing. Like, you know, we, we're, we're sort of like we want freedom and stuff like that. Let me like, tell you. I, like I find Kugel to be very like he, he's almost like if Kugel were to pick like a political party, it would be like libertarian or like well listen, he's you know, not a moralist PPC, at all, right? right like i mean and i guess that's the thing yeah is that some people won't like i suppose the moral ambiguity of this character right because he, he, he never claims morality right like he's he's just trying to get right. by right he never exactly. goes malicious right but when when it's his, his back is against the wall he does what he has to to survive right well, and, and I, I don't know what like, your like take to, is. Carl. To me, to me, something big. It's something that that Singh just said. Like, let's say you know, like when I was younger, like it, it would it would really trouble me that like okay, like I really want you know, like I, I hope I can change the world, right? Or like or like you know, I have this idealized view of the world. It's like okay, no, no, no like like in order to 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 do things right, I have to like you know, like like just follow like you know, like the 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 most like you know, like like the highest moral code or whatever. But now that I understand, like, what Singh said, this, this world is kind of half shit, right? I'm like, whatever. I'm just going to cut my piece and, like, you know, like, like, I'll, I'll definitely, I won't try to, I won't try to, like, sing people on purpose. But, like, it's not like I have to save the world because, you know, it's not worth saving. You know, I'm just, I'm just getting ahead on my own. If I can help here and there, you know, like, make things better, I will. But, like, I'm not going to, you know, like, like, completely, you know, like, like, try to devote myself to, to, to you know, like change the world into something that's it's romantic, right? So, in in this in this here in this story, where like Google has this like, yeah, he he's just you know like he survival first, and I think like that's that's a really huge lesson. And like for you to like kind of suffer in, in your existence because you can't have control over everything, like that. This when we think of that, right? Like it's like, well, no, I mean like you you start with you first, and like once you know like your survival is guaranteed, then maybe you can you can change things, but like. It's not the other way around. Like so, this this why I like it. This kind of story so much. And and also, what I was getting at with like when I said like it makes sense that guys like us would like this kind of story. It's like Kugel is like fiercely independent, right? Like, and and like I don't think I'm going out on a limb by saying that's like pretty much all three of us, right? It's like it's like no, no, like you know, we can do it, right? And it's like, 
sort of this belief in yourself that like you can be independent yeah. and do things uh, also because i think a lot of people like they feel they need a partner or like yep you know somebody to do something with or like they won't go to a movie by themselves you know it's like Absolutely. it's like well i don't want to go by myself it's like like i remember one time i wanted to see this it was actually that like scarlett johansson the ghost in the shell re- remake and i was like i asked my friend like do you want to go and he's like well, if it's 3D, I don't want to go and this or that. I was like, are you sure? Come on, you said that you'd be interested. And he was like, no, no, no. He he, he doesn't want to go. He'll go if it's not 3D. I'm like, well, they don't have it in not 3D. So, like, one last time, do you want to come? Or I'm going by myself. And, like, you know, yeah, I, I just went by myself because, you know, I wanted to see it, right? So it's like, but there are a lot of people that, like, they won't do that like they won't go and see something if they have to see it solo even if they really want to see it right so it's like yeah that's what i was getting at like just kugel's fierce independence and like belief in himself right like um yeah like i like i think that we're all pretty much like that right so we have like also this, he, this... he's never he's never counting on any on anyone else right to help them or like you know like like to get ahead. I mean, he, it's always like, I mean, if, if I can get on top of the situation, fine, right? But he's never, not a single time in his story, like, like counting on anyone else, you know, like, like benevolence or like, you know, like, like help or like, like any kind of teamwork, right? He's like, whatever, you know, <laughs> I, I'll just, I'll just Google declare it. And like, if that works, fine, if not, I'll find another way. But he's never, he's never, I mean, he, he, he works with people and like, you know, like he tries to, to, uh, um, like so, sometimes we see he has some redemption. He has he attaches himself emotionally, but like it, when it, if he, if he has to cut ties with with them, okay, like next, you know, like next town, whatever. So I I relate to that a lot, right? That uh, obviously I'm 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 not like a social, but whatever. Like I I you know like I I connect with people, but like I'm not dependent on on people in that way, like emotionally or like you know like in any other way, right? Like I mean, if I have to go my way, you know, and like. That means, you know, like, let's say displacing someone or like, you know, like not fitting in. I'll, I'll do it. I, 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 that's never going to stop me. So I really have a lot to that. Yeah. Like, I, like, I don't think Kugel is really a sociopath, right? He's like, um... well, like I said, it's the circumstances. What does he do with his circumstances, right? And it's when you, you know, does he martyr himself? No, but does he like, you know, purposely like, is he like, you know, you can do the laughing musician. Is he enjoying other people's misery? Right? Like, no. Right. He's well, doing. Well, he, he does in that one part when like, he's getting revenge on you and like, you in like that comatose state and he enters him in like, like this circus of like freaks and stuff like that. And he was making money off him, <laughs> but then it's like, is he making money off? It's like, it's part of the humiliation. Well, that's where he, like, revenge, he gets, he gets right? so, so caught up on the revenge the that he line, makes his mistake, right? right? Yeah. Right, right, right. So it's like, I guess maybe he is sort of a sociopath, but not not no. really. Like, and that, it's a weird... But, the, but that's yeah, the point. Yeah, yeah. Do you have it, to be it, it's the line, sort of right? a sociopath to make it? Right? Like, that brings up the other question, right? If you're not a little bit of a sociopath, then you just get trampled on, right? Yeah. I mean, that is true. Or is that why, like, a lot of people, you know, like, they they feel that there's power in, like, you know, having, like, a network of friends, right, that, like, that they, they don't want to do anything without them and stuff like that, right? So, like, um, that that's why I'm saying, like, would, would those kind of people not enjoy this story? Because, like, I mean, Kugel is... He can be a team player, but he actually is not really that much of a team player. It's like the Worminger when he's saying, you know, Kugel does the right things for the wrong reasons, but like somehow he gets results. It's like the guy can't accept the fact that like he is getting results, right? And that's like, that's not good enough for him because he's not a team player. He's kind of a team player, but not really. Oh, uh, no, like, you're right. They can all tell he's he's, he's on his own, he's like, not. He has his, path, his right? methods. He's not adhering to, like, you know, like, in the ethos of what, you know, like, it's supposed to be happening, or, like, you know, like, he's not adhering to the ethos of, like, the, the people he's with. 
So I don't think he's a team player. I mean, he can adjust and like, kind of, you know, like, like, uh, like coexist with people, but like he, he's never following, like, you know, like anyone really, like you, you see there, he's never, yeah, he's never, what, what I said before, he's never counting on anyone or following anyone. He's out for himself. And like, I, I always been like that too in my life that I, it, I told you guys, I, I learned to read on my own, you know, like most of the things that I know, I, I didn't, I didn't learn in school. Like I just went from some, something with interest me and okay, I'm going to go to a library or like, you know, I'm, I'm going to go here and like find out my own way. Right. Like I, I never wanted things to like, like, you know, like filtered down through like someone else's point of view. That's something I've always done. So I feel like cool has that right. Like he's, he, he's never, you know, trying to fit in. He's just, you know, his own, um, his way. So I agree with everything that you said there, Carlo. Like I am very much the same way. And, th- and that's why it comes like, that's why I say like, you know, I was trying to think to myself, like, you know, we, we, we all are pretty much on the same wavelength, you know, and I was trying to separate that while I was reading this, uh, you know, like, and to think like, would other people interpret this differently? Like, they just see Kugel as this terrible scoundrel only. And oh like, my God. They see nothing and redeeming about him. I'll go like, check reviews on Goodreads. Like 60% is that. It's people just saying like, this guy is horrible. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people like it, right? Well, like I said, yeah, thanks. The, my, my curiosity, because Kugel is definitely a very masculine character, right? And if, as we've talked about, Carlo, Goodreads is pretty much dominated by, by women who think, yeah. um, you know, the... The, uh, the, oh, what's the stupid, like, um, the Hunger Games, right? Like, the Hunger Games is the top rated series on there, yeah. right? So you can immediately see the kind of people who were writing reviews on Goodreads, and yeah, like, they would not like this sort of, like, stoic, you know, individualism that K- Kugel. And, 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 like I said, this, 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 this nihilistic world. And this is what I try to explain to people. When you accept that the world is, you know, kind of, you know, a flippant place, right? Then you, you, you start, you stop trying to think that, you know, justice will find its own way and all this stuff, right? And that you, it's, it's up to you to make your world the best you can make it, right? Exactly, Whatever but, your but, position in that world exactly, is. Exactly, but especially though, like the way, and I used to think this, like, okay, no, for, for me to find my place, like the world has to be like a, this, this, you know, like kind of, you know, like just for a place, you know, like balance. I'm like, no, that's never going to happen. Like you just, you, you carve your own way, you know, you know the, the, the world is half a shed hole and like despite of you, you do it, right? Like you don't wait for the world to change. You change, right? Like that's. that's well, that's like you can't make the demands of the world. You make demands of yourself. hundred percent. Yeah. But I mean, like we're, we're all kind of, you know, like our education, like the, the, the whole, like the culture is that way. Like, no, no, you, you have to make the world a better place. Like, you know, like you, you don't start with you. You you save the world and then then you then you 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 do you and like that's the complete opposite way. So yeah, and and, and like people obviously who would read something like this, if that goes against that philosophy, so they don't want to read that. So I'm I'm gonna touch back on what Zinc was saying about he's interested in reading Jack Vance's autobiography. I mean, do do we have any clues that? Jack Vance, you know, shares this type of like ethos. Well, I mean, so, as so we this do, is a, and like, his, I mean, so like, he, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Jack Vance lived to be actually quite old, right? So he was a senior citizen by all means when he wrote this Kugel, right? But then I think he writes his his autobiography another twenty years later, even then, right? Right. Um, and it, and it's sort of an interesting thing that you see in these authors as they're writing this stuff, right? So it was even the same same thing. Now Tolstoy, I don't think had as much self-reflection maybe as Jack Vance because of course he he was born a count and he died a count but um but you do start to see that sort of self-examination in some of his later stories that you don't see in his earlier stories um and so like so but but, but I mean is Jack Vance a fierce individualist and like all of the traits that we were just discussing about I think we are I think think, because like I mean if he isn't well then he's a master writer because like if he is like the type of person that puts other people first, then worries about himself. If he's I've like that in his hints real of it. life, so, I mean, like in hints of I it, mean, I can't. I think during World War II, right? So he comes out of the World War II generation, which 
I'm going to be quite honest, was not individualist enough, right? They, they talk a lot, but they don't, right? But he was, so I think, I can't remember if he was in the Merchant Marine or if he was actually in the Navy, right? But like, you get this sense that he very much didn't like that, right? Of course, you know, you see the things of him sailing his boat there later on, right? Um, he lived, he essentially like lived like in Mexico for a while there with Frank Herbert even and stuff like that. Um, and, and both of their wives, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure if they're swingers or if they were just living down there, but, uh, you do very much get this sense that like he sort of did things the way he wanted to. You do get that sense that he was not, he was not for his generation. He was very much, you know, against the grain, right? He didn't just, you know, settle in and, you know, have, have the, you know, the suburban lifestyle. So you, you do get the sense that he was sort of an, an anomaly for his generation. Right. And at the same time, wasn't pretentious, right? Like that's, what's great about his stories is that he writes, science fiction and fantasy and you know like like we talked about right like some people kind of ignore him because it's it's they 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 see it just as tacky right they don't get you know but he, he kind of just does it the way he wants to do it right he's never beholden to anybody exactly right but at the same time he doesn't argue with them right like he wanted titles for his books but the publishers had other titles and he just sort of goes along with it because he's just going to get it published right it's like does that really matter you know because that that's sort of the thing right like are you being a real individualist by not conforming with everything? Right. So like this, this is the problem. Like when, when I've been telling people about my right. job, like that, that I had to go into work. It's like, Oh, well, well, didn't you like working from home? And it's like, eh, it was okay. Right. But like I said, like I don't feel squelched by being in a room with other people. Right. Like I, I like if you're a real individualist, right. You can, you, you don't, you're, you're not so, so fragile that you're afraid of, of being overcome. Right adaptability yeah i mean well it's just it's just the circumstances right like it's like so i mean right. like i said like you yeah. do get the sense that he he was he was as, as they like to say a maverick right kind of somebody who's willing to go it on his own right like i said like this is the thing right like it's not not like a loner totally right it's like like it's not like I can't function in social settings and all that stuff or whatever, right? That's what we see with Kugel, right? right, right you know, right, they're right. at the end having a dinner with a bunch of other guys and, and playing host and everything. But at the same time, he has no problem, you know, traveling on his own. Yeah, well, I want to ask you guys, do, do you identify with this? Like, you know, I'm, you know, when, when people meet me, let's say at a party or something or like out and like, you know, like, and, and, and let's say, oh, they're like, oh, give me your Facebook, whatever, right? And then they talk to me. And I tell them that I'm a huge reader, or whatever that I, you know, like that, that I meditate, you know, that I, that I fast for like super long. And like, wait, you spend a lot of time alone? And they're like, you, you're, aren't you like a party person? I'm like, no. They, I get this impression, <laughs> like that, like I'm like super social when I'm not. And like, it, I always find this weird, right? Like, I mean, I always, I it, actually people think they invite they invite me to like places I would never go, right? To like like clubbing and stuff. And I'm like, no, I'm not into that. They're like, wait, you're not into that? Like, do you guys get this too, or, or like, I feel like. It, 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 I feel like so many people that are very introvert or like at least very independent, like they have this weird confidence that even extroverts, like, you know, like a mistake for, for like extroversion. No. Um, I, I would say for me, um, I mean, I can take it or leave it. Right. It's like, um, like I can go to these parties and stuff like that. Um, or I can be on my own. Like, um, I don't know. It's an interesting question. Like, I, I guess in a lot of ways, like, I kind of am not perturbed by being alone. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it's 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 somewhat different for me. Like, when people first meet, like, because like when I first am in a situation, right? Like, I just observe. And so people think I'm quiet. And then, of course, I go out drinking and I, I drink a lot and I order a lot. And so people – I actually am one of those people that people like more when I drink, I suppose, in some way, weird, weird ways, right? Because, like, I, I am much more gregarious than I probably come across as, like, under normal circumstances. Like, people are like, oh, yeah, you're just a quiet guy and, and whatnot. But, of course, it's just because, like, I'm, I'm – somewhat observing but yeah like would you say spaces though makes you more gregarious like well i mean that's 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 what's weird about it right is that like spaces spaces you can just jump in right like it's it's not necessary to like go through all the 
whatever you just jump in and you say your piece and you jump yeah, out it, right it, like it it's cuts just like out, right. it cuts out the ritual and all the body language bullshit right like all the ritual when it, it comes to communicate like you know all the micro movements that you do when, when you know when you speak with someone like you know like you have to kind of you know like raise your eyebrows to, to kind of make sure you they know uh, you're listening right or like you know if they if they're saying something specific like you kind of squint a bit like so they know you're focusing like I don't know if you guys have experiences with this though, but like if you give the wrong, you know, like kind of, yeah, like, like micro, micro cues to people, they would be like, wait, what's wrong? Like, you know, it's like, or like they would try to get your attention. It's weird though. So I feel like spaces are like, you know, like they phone like that, like, uh, or like, yeah, like on, on disc or whatever, like you skip all of the, the super rituals, right? Or like, you know, having to like, like circumvent about a conversation to get to a point on, on special on spaces, you can just like, you know, like stab into the point and like, you know, like pull out really quick. So, so Carlo, have you been spending more time on Discord? Like, it's it sound you've mentioned it twice tonight. So, oh, I did. Uh, I, I I've been always on Discord. Like, I don't know. Yeah, maybe a little bit. But like, I have a book club there that I, you know, like we we read a book once a month. So, uh, yeah, I'm always there. Um, and like, I don't know, maybe. Um, yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm taking a break from from Twitter. I mean, a lot of like. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, I, I never like Twitter, to be honest, like a lot of negative energy and drama, but uh, especially with the with the combo and all that, like I got into it. But uh, like normally I, I, I'm more Discord for sure. Like, uh, yeah. Um, and I have to have Discord like friends for a long time with like book clubs and like, you know, watch movies there. So, yeah, I think I'm just kind of falling back into my, my normal rhythms. Uh, I, I, I've been bitching for like three years like on Twitter, so and it's, it's not doing anything. So, yeah, just kind of falling back into my patterns, I think. Yeah, do, do you think it's more because of like the book club you're on Twitter took a break? Is that yeah. like part of it? Big. Like, like that, that was a big magnet for me to Twitter too, right? To like the book club and like, let's say I would have a, a, a like a phone space with you guys. And I would get momentum to like go into another space. I'm like, oh, I have fun on this space. Like I want to, I want to, you know, like keep talking or something. Right. Uh, yeah. So I think that too, for sure. Like th the main pull for me was this book club space, um, especially after the, yeah, after the whole drama, the 2022. So yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe that's a big thing. Probably if we, if we do spaces regularly again, I'll be more on Twitter, but, but no, also to like what I said, like I'm kind of falling back into my, my patterns of like, uh, yeah, of, uh, working out. Like, you know, I, I don't know if I talk to you guys a lot, but I, I fast a lot. Like sometimes I go like 48 hours fasting and like what I do, I meditate, like I do all these things. And like that takes a lot of my time. So uh, yeah, I'm getting back into that because I stopped that for a while. So yeah, I think it's just kind of getting back into, into normal rhythm. Yeah, cause cause I've I've noticed you haven't been on your all that much, like even tweeting and stuff like that. Like, I I would say for me, since we've like kind of stopped doing the book club so regularly, um, because of Zinc's move and like, you know, I had other stuff going on too at the time. So it's like, um, uh, but like I I've, I've just like my whole thing is tweeting, right? So I've like I've really got back into like just tweeting things and obviously it's like mostly political these days just because like i just can't stay away from it right like like i i everything is just so messed up that like i feel i must say something right like i i, I don't know if you get that that like sense yourself right? well i i i mean i've been doing it for so long on twitter that I've in it's not doing anything. So I'm just going to, I'm consciously using my energy on, on like, you know, like things that make me better and like, you know, like, like help me, you know, like, like personally more than just bitching. Cause I mean, the need is there, but like now when I feel like, like, you know, like frustrated about shit, I just work out instead, right. Instead of like sitting with my phone, you know, like on my dinner table, tweeting, tweeting angrily, like I just go work out instead. Right. So I'm just trading because I, I feel it's been, it's not being constructive for me to be on Twitter all the time like I've been for the past three years. So, yeah, I'm making a conscious effort to not be on it and on social media, like in general. Like I've been, I've been this kind of keyboard warrior for the past three years. I'm like, that's you know, this is just not doing anything. So, well, I mean, it's the same for me. I mean, yeah, when 
and I started on Twitter. I was barely using it, but yeah, like being home all the time and just with how retarded everything was. That's when I started tweeting, and then, and then I was on Spaces relatively early when they would pop up. And yeah, I mean, of course, yeah, it was good because it helped get through 2021, 2022 there. But now, I mean, of course, especially with my move, not to rub it in, but yeah, I'm now I'm now in a less retarded place. Yeah, um, totally. I mean, you're you're actually very lucky. Like, you know what I mean? Like. It, it's it's pretty awesome. Like I celebrate you. Yeah, like, totally. I was, I was like, so happy for you. I mean, like, yeah, we have, solid man. We, like having had a... <laughs> Well, th- this 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 is why I think I associate myself so much with Google because I'm never perfectly lucky, but I'm lucky enough always, right? So yeah, I got laid off there, and because of some weird circumstances, I wasn't like at first I wasn't too worried, but like I said, I didn't flick the right box on my LinkedIn, and then it was already into December, and I just wasn't getting offers, and my savings was starting to run low. I started getting worried, right? And of course, I was kind of like, well, I want out of Montreal. And like, funny enough, like a bunch of jobs that I had kind of applied for that I wasn't really interested in, just kind of like, yeah, weren't, didn't go through. But amazingly, yeah, like I put Boise down. I got a con, I contacted by this, this recruiter out of Boise. And it was, you know, exactly the, the exact tech stack I wanted to work in. And they were willing to let me ramp into. And it was a big company, lots of benefits. And it was based in Boise and everything else. So like, strangely, like, yeah, like, minimal effort i got exactly what i wanted although kind of running down to the wire there and a little bit of stress of having to you know move so quickly so like it's it's kind of like like i said it's that kugel level of fortune right where it's 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 not an easy road but i sort of got what i wanted yeah you yeah. know with, with so like yeah like but it, yeah it was it was a bit frantic there right and and even worrisome like i said strangely enough with this company they actually had the questionnaire like oh did you did you take, did you take your, 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 your vax? And I told her, right. It's like, no. And it's like, well, will you? And I'm like, no. And it's like, if so, what is your exception? I didn't need it. And obviously they didn't care at this point. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a strange kind of like good enough luck type thing. But, um, but, but, but I mean, then unlucky it, it in some other bit, ways. It, it, it seems a bit better than good enough. Right. Like, I mean, you know, it does Boise doesn't sound as retarded as Montreal or like heaven forbid Toronto, right? Like, yeah, I mean... yeah. <laughs> well, no, but like I said, there are some other things that I won't dive into that were also fairly unlucky to some extent too. I, right, we'll, right. We'll just say I made some bad investments. Um, right. Okay. But um, <laughs> so yeah, it's it's weird, kind of how my luck pans out to some extent. So, yeah, I mean, investments like so, I mean, that's primarily what I'm doing these days. I I really do need to get back into the like programming and stuff like that. But like, like for me, like I'm no activist investment. Like I will invest in anything that can make me money. Like I simply don't care. Like I will invest in cigarettes or booze companies, you know what I mean? Or like defense and like you know raytheon or like you know anything that will make me money like i mean i've also said that like i was a pfizer shareholder and i mean you know i I don't know if i went into this but like uncle nestor had a poll it's like oh you know is it immoral for somebody to hold pfizer stock or something like this and like 98 percent of the people were saying yes and i'm like i was like one of one of the people that's like no No, no, i think it's not the same i think i said no too but like like i said it wasn't those it was just dumb i was new to it and i did some dumb things but like it wasn't yeah like right right so Um, yeah no it's but 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 i mean it's like 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 i said so like yeah my look like like i said like my looks kind of in and out like that right right because arguably Uh had i gotten a job offer earlier would i've had this opportunity probably not and actually like i said this is actually a good time to start on in a company because they're shifting everything for the beginning of the new year so it's a lot more laid back and and so on and so forth but uh you know i'm always curious like oh will my will my bad luck come up and everything because then i I do have strangely bad luck like given my luck right things are going to turn around and well like i said when i moved to canada in 2013 the dollars weren't parity right yeah Um, yeah and then what happened was, so in 2021, I, I, I got laid off at one job, and then I got a job with another company. Um, well, I was looking at a Canadian company, and then I was looking at an American company. And technically, the American company, I would have made more so long as the uh, 
exchange rate held, right? And at the time that I started, the exchange rate was about 130 there early in one in 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 um, 2021. But then it just pl- like kept going down, and at one point it was like kind of touching around 122 and was actually screaming. And then it stayed around like 125, 127 throughout most of the time that I was on that job until I got laid off from that one. But funny enough, the last couple of weeks, right? So this was fall of 2022 there. Like, I think the last paycheck I got was right as the dollar was now then peaking above 130 again, right? Um, to the to the Canadian dollar. So I got one paycheck at that. And then all the time that I was laid off, it was like peaking up even to like 137, 138, 140 even, right? Just all that time. Now that I'm back down here, just as I get this job, now it's kind of, it's, it's floating around 134, 135 again. And, and yeah. hopefully it holds there. But like I said, just like, yeah, just giving my luck. It's like, oh yeah, all the months that I was unemployed and not making that US dollar, you know, suddenly it's, 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 it's floating higher above the Canadian dollar, right? And, and right now certain things, are, are, where it is right now is fine, but yeah, if it starts to go down again, then it's kind of irritating with some of the, the obligate, you know, some some of the stuff I still have to pay off back in in Canada, right? That'll get irritating again. So like like I said, it's 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 very much that sort of like mixed luck. Well, I I, I wouldn't worry about that. I mean, the Canadian dollar will lose purchasing power, you know, versus U.S. dollar. Like I mean, it's just the facts, right? Like I mean. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm predicting by like, you know, mid March, it's at about like seventy two, seventy three cents. I'm still holding that to that prediction. I mean, um, I mean, I could be wrong. It could stay where it is right now, um, which is like seventy four, seventy five cents to the U.S. dollar. Um, but I don't think so, right? Like, I think you're actually going to benefit, like when you tie up whatever affairs you have to do in it's Montreal, it's the lease like, i still have there so i still have a lease there right and I, so of I course think you I, will win right like overall i mean if you're making us dollar like yeah it's, it's worth much more right so you are going to do well like um, yeah well that, that's what i'm hoping on and, and i'm hoping that like yeah i guess things in boise have kind of been you know the, the cost of you know the market here and everything else has kind of been a little bit around, but I'm, I'm guessing it's, yeah, it's, it's going to be better off than other places. But like I said, it's just, yeah, I'm, I'm always suspicious. Right. Cause like, yeah, like it's always a mixed bag of good luck and bad. Like I said, it's, it's that Kugel luck that I have, <laughs> which I think is why I, why I identify so much with him. It's, it's always, you know, good enough luck. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, it's, it's the, the the cool character. Like I said, you know, like independently minded guys like us, like we we're just going to like the character and the story because, like, if you guys remember, like, we, you guys had read it and like it wasn't part of the book club, and I was like, is it worth reading? And you guys are like, yeah, yeah, it's great, it's great. And I was like skeptical. I was like, you know, is it really going to be that great? Um, but no, it really is. Um, it really is really good. Um, I mean, it, there's just so many things about it that like, you know, mirror the world that we live in. It's like, it's like the husbands that sit on the poles. Right. And it's like, you know, they have to like move higher up and stuff like that. It's like, um, just like a metaphor for like, you know, that, that keeping up with the Joneses yeah, and, and like, all, all this, one upmanship. Are the rituals and... to communicate things, right? Like in the story, like in every town, like they have this stupid little, you know, like, like, like little rituals, like, you know, the, the, the little customs that you kind of have to tiptoe around. Like I, I relate that so much. It's like, people are so stupid. They always, always just, you know, like, like super traditions or like, you know, like ways of communicating that are just like, fully cumbersome in the end like they're not efficient that i'm like oh my god and this is here too like i see i see it too on this book that like you you can you can basically you know like like uh, upset someone but like just just acting in like you know against the the unspoken rules basically that like i just find like it's a lot of theater that like it it just kind of holds you down when it comes communication yeah it's it's kind of like a like um like Kugel is kind of like a, a long, you know, Seinfeld, like sci-fi in a sense, right? In a lot of ways, like, like what, with what you're talking about there, like, 
the customs that everybody adopts. It's like something that just sprung to mind. It's like that one episode when like everybody is eating a chocolate bar with a knife and fork and it's like it's become this new weird custom and like they notice it and stuff like that. It's like what's going on with people like you know there's a lot of that in like Kugel as well right? Well no, this was the argument the other night in a room it was it was late night in Wogpog's room and 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 I, I can't remember even how we got on it, but I pretty much pointed out that, oh, yeah, no, I love self-checkout, right? Like, just the ability to, you know, like, run D- my own Do stuff. you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, well, of course, it's like, this is always the thing, like, oh, the AIs, the robots are going to take over. My point has always been, it's like, no, 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 the AI is just another tool, right, that frees up humans from not having to do another mediocre task, right? And it's, it's just, it's just, it can now handle more complex tasks. It's not going to take over. An AI still has to be operated. That's the main thing to understand. An AI is just like a chainsaw, right? It used to be that you had to have two guys on a chainsaw. Now you can have, you know, one guy with a, I mean, two guys on a saw. Now you have one guy on a chainsaw, right? It used to be that you had to have like a hundred guys in a field picking, picking the corn. Now you can run a combine through it with one farmer, right? That's all that this AI is. It's just, it's just a tool. And if anything, one, it raises the bar on what can be done, right, by one person well, and then allows more ever, people to do Have you ever talked to a cashier? They're like miserable people. They hate their job. I don't, I don't know. I don't ever know a single cashier that, that you know, likes their job, right? Because it's... Well, no, no, no. These people, these people are under the impression that cashiers love their uh-huh. job. That was the problem when we were talking about this. And I was just talking about, it's like, you know, like, I can just check, right? Like, I, could, I can check out my own stuff and I don't have to, like you know, have this, this, this false conversation, right? Oh, how are you going? Good. Thanks. Pla- paper, plastic, it, it, you know, it, like, it, like this whole vacuous so, conversation. So, so for me, I'm, I'm actually, I, I never use self-checkout and I'll tell you why. So for me, it represents like a loss in service, right? And I don't get anything back for that loss in service. So it's like, if they were to give me like 2% discount on my entire bill, I would do self checkout because essentially they're asking me to do some of the work to check myself out. But the thing is like the pricing that you pay on the store shelves, like it, it includes like the person to like wrap your stuff up, take your payment and like, so here, here's the reality. You know when, what I mean? Like when self checkout started, when I first saw it in grocery stores and we're talking to you, 15 years ago or so right yeah you yeah. would see you would see people lined up and at this time right this is like i've talked about many times i would be at the grocery store at 2 a.m there right so you're there at 2 a.m they have one register right all the people are lined up for the one register i could go to the self-checkout and get my shit done and out the store right instead of lining up right, right? yeah yeah. That's... so that was when i started doing the self-checkout right just the fact that otherwise yeah you're having to wait on this one person right because grocery stores only had so many registers and how do you decide which register and then you're standing in line then you're trying to, de- to, to decide like oh sh- is this line going to move quicker is this line and then you get stuck behind that one person who now you know they, they, they bought everything with the red tag right they have to do a price check on everything now and so it was just this whole sort of nonsense of having to you know get stuck behind that person right so i could go to the self-checkout and i could get it done now this winco grocery store that's super cheap that i keep talking about it's like one of these places like it's like oh it's 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 employee owned right so they so like when it first showed up in in salt lake they got one location there in, in the salt lake valley early on i went to it once and of course everything was cheap but the weird thing about it was you would go to the checkout line the, they, they had a cashier but then they had this extra long runway after the cashier because essentially if they wouldn't bag it you would have to bag your own thing it's like wait 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 I can run my stuff over a barcode. That's the easy part, right? The harder part is putting it into a bag strategically and all that stuff, right? So if, I, if, if I'm already having to bag my own crap, um, then, then I, can put, I, I can scan a barcode, right? That's the easy part, right? Because the reason right. you ha- used to have a cashier, right? Because, of course, the, the, the machines, you know, you had to be trained on them, right? The new, these new machines, you don't have to be trained on, right? You scan it. You press the button. It's all very, very intuitive and stuff for the most part, right? right? So, I mean, it, it just comes down to that. And the other thing, too, is, yeah, like, it's like, but the, the, the argument we were getting in over there is it's like, oh, well, you just don't want to have any conversations with people. It's like, no, no, no. I don't want to have vacuous conversations, right? I don't want to have to, like, like, like Carla was talking about, right? Like, go up and kind of, you know, form my face into, like, you know, like a, a pleasing expression, right? Like, you know, kind of like a, a smile and a smile. So, How's it going and all that stuff, right? And, you I, know. I, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I get, I get what you're saying, but I'm saying, if if that's the case right like 
the fact that you have that person there and they're being paid to do this, it's like that is included in the pricing that you're paying for the goods that you're buying, right? So, I mean, if it's going to go all self-checkout, well, the price has to come down, but it doesn't, right? So, like, your, your incentive for using self-checkout, it's not just the vacuous conversations that you don't want to have. It's actually me, it was the fact that you time. can get out of there it's faster. Time, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But exactly. now that I have so, that, so that's the incentive. I, but so, the, but so that's the thing is, I tell people that, and it's like, oh, but you're getting rid of somebody's job. It's like, well, no, they've already don't have enough cash registers there, and I don't want to have to stand in line for five, ten minutes, right, to 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 wait for that one person to check everybody out, right? Because that used to be the case, right? You you went before they had self checkout at one of these grocery stores at two a.m. and you got stuck behind a retard. Yeah. You you were waiting there until that retard was done, right? Whereas with these checkout lanes, right, they always had like four of them right even back in the day right and so you could pop over there do your thing and get out right because of course usually at 2 a.m i wasn't doing like a heavy check at right like you know small amount right 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 and you could run it but but the argument these people are making is like oh but you're losing that personal touch right it's like what personal touch it's not a meaningful conversation it's well, not like my, my whole thing is price right like if, if you're gonna do that and you're gonna eliminate those jobs like the company is saving money by having self checkout that should be reflected in the price right like i yes need to be incentivized no, cause, cause I, I need to be incentivized to do some of the fucking work cuz earlier you know, what you would see if you went there at 2 a.m. instead of having that one register what they would do is they would have that one person watch the four registers right yeah so the, the idea yeah, was yeah. that they would allow four registers and this is this is what automation this is what you know you know, better technology allows, it allows one person to be much more efficient, right? So that if one person's there running a, ba a, a, a pack of gum, well, they, they can run that pack of gum, pay their money and be out, right? Whereas when that old lady comes up with all the red stickers, then that person can wander over and help that red lady, you know, the lady with all the red stickers or pink stickers or whatever color they are. Right, 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 right. For the markdown and, and do that, right? So they, they allowed more register, right? Because they still observe them, right? But that is to say that one person can now observe six registers versus so i mean yeah would it be more you know like yeah like are they making you do more work at least the way it initially came out it was like i said there 2 a.m or even at at, at the because when they first came out people were very like once again people were old right i mean even when they came out you know i was young and so it's like oh yeah it's a computer i know how to deal with computers i walk up i do my work my thing and i'd be out right instead of having to stand in line there and you know wait behind somebody else and and, and figure out like, oh, well, no, that register is open more. Oh, that right. like, like nobody was going to the self-checkout because it was spooky to them. Right. And so I just got used to going to the self-checkout, but then it was just nice. But then their argument is like, well, that's somebody's job. It's like, no, no, no. If it's, it, somebody can still, you know, somebody still has to operate it, but instead of operating one checkout, they're operating four or five. Right. Like, so I mean, right. it's, it's just that increased efficiency. I, I mean, no, I, I, I get it from point. I, I, Adrian, Adrian is saying like, well, you know, we should, like, I don't think Adrian cares too much about the, the shallow conversations. Well, I, do, I don't. It's, it's and, we, we and should, like, it should, will we mean. Should, we should pay, we yeah. shouldn't pay for a service we don't, we don't, we're not getting, but I, I'd be happy to pay, you know, for, for expediency and, and get the hell out of there, right? And, and not having to fake a conversation. I wouldn't mind keeping the price. But I mean, like, being fair, it makes sense what you're saying. Like, it's, it sucks. But well, like, I mean, yeah, it depends I, on how they rolled it out. And like I said, from what I could tell at the time, they rolled it out because that way they could increase the capacity, right? So they didn't charge me more for it. They just it, it allowed them to increase capacity, right? Because um, like I mean, the, the 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 prices didn't go up in the stores that introduced this, right? If anything, it allowed them to increase the capacity without having to increase more people. Well, I'm saying the price should come down of the goods. Because that's, like yeah, I mean that, that you know I mean really that happens though like no but but like I mean that ultimately like if you so I mean a lot of the cost is employee cost right if you're eliminating these jobs and I mean it's not just their hourly wage it's like insurance while they're on the job like the company is responsible for that um, you know there's like training they have to pay them for that like. If, I mean, you so, can, I mean, if you can eliminate those jobs, like your overhead decreases like substantially, right? So I mean, 
if, if your overhead decreases, I mean, but I mean the you, cost you, of the you goods know as well should as I, that the decrease. Only thing that lowers that is if somebody then offers it. So somebody else. So the first place they brought this in, it's probably just because they wanted to increase capacity. Because of course you run the, the risk of lost sales, right? When you have that one person in there at two a.m. just there to buy a stick of gum and they're waiting ten minutes, they're like, "Fuck it," and then they just put the shit back on the shelf and go home, right? So that was where they probably had noticed they were having a loss, and so that way you can, you know, cut that kind of lost opportunity there, right? And then naturally, if it if it does lower costs of everything else, then somebody will cut the price of it. So like I said, this Winco they resisted that for a while. Back when I did it, right, they other people had the self checkout when they first got there in Utah, but they insisted, like, oh no, 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 we still have an employee, but you're bagging your own crap. It's like, well, I'm not going to go there. I can go to another store that allows that if I go to a person, they're going to bag my crap for me, or if I don't go to the person, I can bag my own crap for me, right? Like, because for me, it's it's yeah, it's so. I mean, so, so, I mean, a, another point that I'll make is like, just there used to actually be better service. And service is rolled into the cost of everything that you buy at the store. And, I mean, we see a dramatic reduction in service across North America, right? So, I mean... Well, I mean, people make this argument all the time, right? The self-serve gas stations, right? Which only really came out in the 70s there, right? With the the gas prices and everything else, right? And, of course, yeah, you used to have somebody come and service your, your car for you and everything else. But, of course... Like, yeah, are they getting you to do more work? But in some ways, is it just better? Because then at that point, right, you it's like, are you obligated to tip the guy, right? Were you obligated to do this? And, you know. I mean, I mean, generally, no, right? I mean, the, 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 the price of the gas was like more expensive on the full serve side where the guy would sit there and like he'd come out and he'd like pump your gas and check your oil and say, oh, the levels are Well, that's the thing, right? So, like, yeah, you don't have that anymore, but, yeah, you'd get the cut in price. So, I mean, I I promise you, you are getting probably a reduction in price over time with these these self-service, but, of course, you don't notice it. Like, it's just that they don't have to – because one reduction in price is that they don't have to increase price over time, right? That their margin is still safe. Exactly, yeah. So I would argue that the the self-service checkouts probably has reduced the price. It wasn't immediate. Because, of course, some people wouldn't check out on them for a long time. But now that people are more comfortable with it, it's probably reduced the number of of price hikes they've had to experience. But like I said, the argument in this room was whether or not we were losing our humanity because I didn't say I didn't chit chat with the register on the way out. Right. Which which is, of course, a cultural thing. Some some countries you don't do that. Right. Eastern Europe, you go in, you buy a stick of gum, you don't say hello, you don't smile, you don't do anything. Right. They're just there to help you check it out. Right. I mean. And then I tried to explain to him, right, it used to be, you know, vending machines wiped out vendors, right? It used to be a guy with a little cart there selling your, your, your sodas on the side of the street, right? Now it's a vending machine. And a vending machine, right, like instead of having to have 100 vendors, you now have 100 vending machines being operated by one mechanic, right? I mean, I mean, you still get street vendors, right? I mean, well, and people brought this up, but it's a novelty. It's not required, right? If, if, I, if I want a soda at 2 a.m. on the side of the road, Right. Like at a rest stop. Right. You know, in the middle of nowhere, I can get a soda at 2 a.m. on the side of the road from a rest yeah. stop. Hey, hey, uh, hey, guys, sorry, I have to go. But like, uh, uh, thank you for this space. I've seen congrats on your movement. And uh, um, I'm really proud of you indirectly. And I'm happy you, you know, you, you sat there and like far away from this hellhole. So congrats. And like, yeah, I can't wait for the next uh, the next book. Oh, by the way, yeah. I read I read all the books up to Embassy Town. <laughs> like I'm, I'm caught up with even potential books that we're going to read here. So I'm ready, ready to go. I'm going to uh, say Gateway for next weekend. Okay, yeah, I've read it. Uh, uh, Adrian, I'm, I'm going to have to read it. I have not, I Adrian, have not gone to, through it. Adrian, always fun to talk to you. Uh, yeah, definitely, uh, Carlo. You again. Uh, yeah, I missed you guys. So, yeah, uh, can't wait for the next one. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk soon. Because, yeah, Gateway was actually always yeah. supposed to be the first novel. So it's about to, I, right. I can't remember what order I originally said, but, yeah, we'll do Gateway. Uh, yeah, great, great talking to you too, Carlo, as always. Um, yeah, I can't wait to talk to you again. Uh, you know, have a good week. I uh, uh, hope everything uh, And so goes Saturday well or for Sunday, you. which one works better for you guys? Um, I I, I'll, I'll, I'll update you during the week. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, uh, perfect. So I'll let you know, yeah, probably Wednesday or Thursday, I'll let you know. Okay, perfect. Right, take care, guys. Take All it right, easy. Take care, one. Carlo. See you later. Good night. But yeah, just to finish there, like, so like I said, yeah, the argument was just that like somehow 
it's like not, not be not chit chatting for two seconds with with a cash register was a loss to society. That was the argument these people were making. Well, I mean, I I don't agree there, right? Like, I mean that. <laughs> and of course, it was also this make work. It's like, well, that's somebody's job. It's like, well, then they need to find. It. But what if they like that job? It's like, well, yeah, but if nobody wants, if 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 it's not a needed job anymore, right? Like, this is always the thing right, that comes yeah. up is that like some people just think it's like, well, if somebody wants to do right, like this make work mentality. Um, it's like, if you're going to give somebody a handout, give them a handout and let them, you know, waste their time however they please. Right. But this idea of like, Oh, but it gives them meaning. It's like, yeah, it doesn't really give them meaning if it's not a needed job. Right. Just because yeah. they think it gives them meaning. If it's not actually necessary, then it's, it's little more than, than make work. Right. It's like, yeah, it's, 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 it's a mentality that I've, I, obviously I've, well, it's very communistic. I mean, that's, that's just the yeah, only way to put yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my, like, whole, my whole thing is the price and, like, the reduction in service to the customer and the fact that it's not it's not um, reflected in the price, really, right? Yeah. Like, that's, my, that's my whole thing. But I thing, would argue, right? I would argue the reason they're looking at it is because they're looking at the costs and they're like, well, we can increase costs either by buying me these machines or by buying people. So I would argue yeah. that long term – what it is, especially, and this is the argument, right? Funny enough is that, you know, this is the problem with minimum wage, right? If they keep raising the minimum wage, well, that's how you get robots. Yeah, for sure. And, and I mean, that that's 100% accurate. Like, I mean, you do not deserve 18 bucks an hour to roll up a croissant, right? Like, I mean, you know, it's just, it's not, it's, it's not needed. Like it's, it's, it's not a skilled, um, position right so i mean yeah the you're you're you're, you hit it there right that that is the path to much more automation but i i think we really are on that path right like have you seen those uh those videos where they have like fully automated warehouses and stuff like that and like the robots will actually go up the rack you know scan whatever part take it out and like you know, move down the rack, get the next. Well, one, like I said, and this like, is the question of fully automated. Yeah. Nothing, and this is why, like, I keep peeping. The only risk with AI is in people trusting the AI too much, right? You need somebody to, just like you needed the vending machine repairman, right? The vending yeah, machines yeah. break down. You need somebody monitoring those robots, and when they make a mistake, that person intervenes, right? But the difference is, is instead of needing a hundred people to be running through the warehouse, you have one person, you know, checking, you know, spot checking that and keeping an yeah. eye on it. And making that human decision. So, like, but I mean, that's like, skilled labor, right? So, I mean, well, exactly. Know, that... but, it, but how much more skilled labor, right? Like, so, I mean, it, it's always about making each person more efficient, right? You don't need, you know, two guys, yeah. you know, sawing, you know, or you don't, you know, it, one guy can saw down 100 trees in the time it used to take, you know, 40 guys to saw down 100 trees, right? Right, 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 right. Or, yeah, 100 guys in a field picking corn versus one guy in a combine picking corn, right? Yeah. And so it, it's all just a part of the same progress, right? And then that frees up more people to do more interesting work, right? But it's like, oh, but now I have to be retrained. Like, that's just the thing that people sort of have to expect. It's like, and how do you know if you will until it happens to your job? And it's like, well, it does happen to me, right? That's why for a long time I didn't go into tech, but then eventually I accepted it. You just have to keep on top of it, right? You have to be, it's like, anytime you, you can't feel be lazy. Well, that's the yeah. anytime you feel like, oh, yeah, I can do my job without thinking about it. It's like, mm, sounds like that can be automated, right? Like, yeah, you, you exactly. always have to be at the edge of things. You know, if, if you feel like your job's getting too easy for you, then you have to keep at the edge of it, right? Because if it's too easy for you, then somebody else can do it for part of the price or a machine can do it, right? That's why you always have to keep ahead of everything. Right. And I mean, and I mean, this this is the whole thing. It's like, like, I mean, I really don't agree with UBI, but, like, the argument is that because of automation, like, you know, there won't be these jobs that don't require skilled labor. Like, you won't be able to do them. So, in order to keep the economy going, you have to just pay people to exist. But, I like, I mean, you know, that's going to make them even lazier than they are right now. Um it, it's just not going to work, right? I mean, you have to do something. You, you've got to figure something out, right? So, I mean, I, it seems like 
like I I don't know if the people are lazy. It's it's like it's more that like they don't want to challenge themselves to do something else. Well, right? some of that's also the disillusion, right? When you put all these woke policies in place and all this rigmarole and all these regulations, right? You make it easier. You make UBI and a lack of ambition more appealing, right? You incentivize people to not want to have ambition, right? So when all these people come yeah. out, it's like, oh, young people don't want to work. To some extent, right? Yeah, you do have the leftist young people who are who are wearing it as a bag of, badge of honor. But then, like I said, you have the silent majority of these young people where they're just terrified, right? Everything is bad and nothing is good. They can't get ahead. They're going to get like, yeah, like abused by the so-called you know, human, you know, because they didn't use somebody's proper pronouns and everything. So then they just kind of fold in on themselves and then offering them UBI and then they escape into their video games. That becomes appealing because they yeah. just don't see any way to get ahead or any or any reason to try. Right. That's the thing is they de-incentivized effort. Absolutely. Absolutely. One hundred percent. That's exactly right. And I mean, that's even on the CPC side. Like, I mean, yeah, there's absolutely. that video of, of Melissa Lanceman, like advocating for basic income and stuff like this, like in that one interview. I mean, this is Pierre's like, you know, deputy uh, to to Pierre, right? Like, I mean, and I mean, there was a time where CPC would never, never go into that. And like, you know, I was arguing with this one chick on Twitter, like just through tweets and like she she was saying like oh you, you know you don't get it on ppc obviously she's cpc she's like the the cpc has governance right and like you know and i'm like so basically that's more rules regulations policies procedures well this and is what bureaucracy like said, right? that's only and she's like up. i'd take she's like from governance you you actually get more freedom i'm like what are you talking about i'm like we are not the same at all like the PPC and the CPC, like that is the key thing right there. Like we are not well, like the I said, same. I don't know if I was the first one, but like that's because the last few months, me and several other people have been pounding them. It's like, okay, well, we want the same things. It's like, really? Here's my platform. Where's yours? And then they point you to the government's documents. It's like, that's not policy. That's governance. That's just bureaucracy. Exactly. Yeah, but yeah. now they're overbearing on it. It's like, well, they don't put out a platform, right? They don't know what they want in three years. It's like, well, no, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to know what kind of world you want to live in. You know, the kind of world I want to live in is the same kind of world I've always wanted to live in, right? Nothing's changed. The world doesn't change that much, right? Like, you don't need policies about what to do, in the, right? You can make a very broad policy regardless of what the, the, the events in the world are, right? Like, you, you can focus. And it's, it's just, and of course, this is where they are, the cult, right? Because they've just chosen Team Blue. And then it's like, well, we don't know what we believe yet. We'll wait until the next election. Then we'll know what we believe because the, the goalposts will have been moved, right? So, like, yeah, like, they're, they're, they're having to admit that it's not about policy. And, and then, then they defend it. It's like, oh, well, well, that's just how things have always been done in Canada. It's like, really? So, and, and we know that Canada has been on a downward trajectory for a long time here. It's like, oh, no, things were great. No, no, no. Things were better in the 90s. But, yeah, things were always better, and especially when you were younger, right? Like, so, like, it's like, oh, no, I want – it's like, well, guess what? Things were better in the 90s under Chrétien, right, than they were under Harper in the 2000s, right? Things are always better in the past because it's been a long path towards shitty. It's like, oh, oh, you think things were better under Chrétien? It's like they were objectively were, right? But it wasn't Absolutely, because of Chrétien's yeah. policies. It's just that, you know, they, they hadn't brutalized us so much, right? And then Harper brutalized things more. And, you know, it was under Harper that, you know, the Canadian forces went completely sideways. Um, and then, of course, Justin Trudeau just you know buried them right so i mean yeah it just yeah it's, it's, so I, I like i i was actually stunned when she said to me that like more governance equals more freedom like yeah i freedom I, I, is slavery i am absolutely stunned by that statement right like i mean i want no no i, I think I, I saw the exchange i think i saw the exchange <laughs> But like, like, I think it's because like, yeah, we've been pushing on this idea that they don't have a platform. Oh, well, but governance, governance is like, who cares? Yeah, exactly. 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 I like, I want less rules, less policies and procedures. The, the, the fact that we have so many rules, regulations, policies and procedures, you know, bureaucracy, governance is what the CPC well, I can't, I can't are saying. Was, like, I, I think mean, it. Maybe it was oh. earlier when you were in here, right? And I was talking about how, like, a lot of states 
you know, they only run their legislature for one or two months and then it's a part time position, right? Oh, Whereas oh, like no, I, all yeah, the provinces, that. it's a full time job, right? Even yeah. if Saskatchewan has like less than half the number of people that Idaho does and they have full time MPs, right? Whereas, you know, you know, in Idaho, yeah, like, and, and well, I know in Utah it was only like two, three months of the year. And I'm guessing it's the same probably in Idaho. I think even maybe Texas, even relatively large states, right? Like they, they, they just do that historically, right? Because this idea that you need people in their passing rules full time, right? It's like, no, 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 no. If things are going good, then then let it be, right? Like you, you, exactly. you don't, don't fix what ain't broke, but like that's their policy. It's like, oh, oh, we're not voting on something, right? So like we got we to gotta pass some sort of legislation. Well, 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 then when then the CPCers are like, it's about accountability and like, you know, the CPC has been the only party to hold their people to account. And like they're actually using that as an excuse for why yeah. they lost <laughs> three times yeah. in a row to, to somebody as unpopular as Trudeau. It's like, well, you know, when, when the new leader comes in of the CPC and like he loses or like doesn't perform like we were ruthless. They kicked it. They kicked O'Toole out. It's like. No, you didn't initially kick O'Toole out. You you kicked him out when he became such a fucking hurt and sack, you know, like of just like complete loser. Like, I mean, he was saying absolutely nothing about the convoy. He was just he was just saying and doing nothing. He he was barely in the House of Commons firing back at Trudeau at all. Like he was doing no exchanges with him. He wasn't even doing the bare minimum which is what Pierre is doing right now. Like, I mean, he wasn't even doing that. And like, it got to a point See, where but like, I wouldn't even say that's a bare minimum. Get... That's just performance art, right? Like yeah, that's well, the biggest I problem. Mean, it's like, oh, that's what oh, I'm saying, oh, right? Oh, it's, he's, it's... he's, he's holding Trudeau's <laughs> feet to the fire. And Oh, once we elect him, once we elect him, then we can hold his feet to the fire. It's like, but no, you've elected him. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's the man like, oh, yeah. now, right? Like, Right. I mean, just like the liberal, I mean, the leftists complain all the time. Yeah. Trudeau still hasn't done, you know, election reform. It's like, oh, yeah, like you, you don't you don't give him an IOU. Right. Or you 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 owe me. Right. Or whatever it's going to be. Right. It's like, well, no, they're already in there. He's already prime minister. Yeah. And he doesn't give a fuck now. Right. Like, I mean, he just said that. And like, oh, well, I didn't do it. You know, it wasn't. And he'll come with some bullshit excuse why he didn't well, do no, the it. Excuse, and, but, I mean, and, and, of course, their excuses is like, well, at least it's not conservatives, right? Yeah, he's not perfect, but at least we don't have conservatives in there. And then once, you know, Pierre gets in there, it's like, oh, well, he hasn't done everything. But, uh, but, but, but we can't get Trudeau, you know, we can't get the liberals back in again. Remember, right? It's always, it's always the worst thing, right? It's like, oh. I, I mean, this is, this is why I'm tweeting so much about this stuff. It's like. This red team, blue team fucking bullshit. It's just not working. It is not working. And it's like, th that's what makes the CPCers so pathetic. It's like, deep down, I think they know it's not working. But, like, they're too chicken shit to actually take a chance well, on something. Well, that's why they're mad about it. Where there's why they less so governance, right? Like, where there's less bureaucracy. Like, you know, where they have a chance at actual freedom. And, like, you know, I know Wogpog repeats it all the time. He'll say people actually don't want freedom. They want order. And that pretty much is the CPC to a T and the Liberal Party, too. I mean, they want more rules. They want more regulations. They think that that order is like, I don't know, going to give them free. Like, they, they, there is no way that all of these rules and bureaucracy gives us more freedom. I mean, it's just absolutely the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. I mean, there is too many rules and regulations right now. And, and that's not saying that, like, I'm saying we, it's, it's not realistic to think that we can have zero rules and regulations. Obviously there needs to be some right for like things to actually, this function. is the bare minimum. Yeah. Like yeah. It's not it's, unnecessary yeah. ones. Exactly. It's, it's, it's negative, right? Like you're trying to solve a problem, not you're trying to like, you know, like, solve a problem that isn't there right like yeah exactly exactly and and that's all they're doing it's like you know something happens and it's like the government overreacts and like well we need rules to make sure that this never happens again i mean it will probably still happen again you know even if you have that rule in place it's like there's no guarantee right i mean 
Uh, I I just don't know. It's actually it's very very discouraging um, that the people have these mentalities. I I really don't know. Um, and like you, you can see, like people on our side are, you know, getting quite frustrated about this. Like, um, yeah, I don't I don't know. I mean, I'm not gonna go down that uh, rabbit hole, but like y- y- you can tell, right? Like just on spaces like people are getting more and more frustrated like like i mean i try and expose that like sort of loser mentality that you know a lot of canadians have but like i i don't know i I think people are just like resistant to it like they're probably not going to change so i mean not i don't know but yeah yeah i don't know it's hard to say but i guess we'll wrap this one up and maybe we'll go find another room Okay, yeah, for sure, Zink. Um, so, well, thanks uh, again, yeah, Gateway. Yeah, yeah, Gateway, that's that, like, Frederick Pohl, is it? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to re-listen to it. I can't remember how long it was on audiobook. I think it was, oh, I want to say it was 12, 14 hours. I, I think it was under 500 pages. I think it was, like, in that three, 400-page range. So probably about the same as this one, I think. I think. All right, perfect. Um, Not a so, long one. So I'll, uh, I'll dive into that and... Um... Yeah, Yo, and I, I, I think I'll gonna schedule be sat- it for sun- Sunday. I think I'll lean toward. Okay, Sunday, perfect. We'll see. Like uh, it'll, it'll be, f- it'll be fluid. But yeah, Saturday or Sunday. But well, for now, I think I'll set it on Sunday and just see kind of where things fall. Because I I know that Carlos said his schedule may change. So who knows? Maybe we'll do it Monday evening instead. But we'll we'll just see where things fall. And then at some point, yeah, maybe once once I'm more settled in, maybe then we'll do like the midweek short stories again or something again. All right, cool. Sounds good. Um, Perfect. So, yeah, we'll, we'll talk to you in other spaces and, um, you know, just uh, on next book club. Perfect. See you around. All right, take care, Zink. See you